Art I Medieval 500-1400, with Rick Steves, YouTube, HTM 20141220. HTTPS, slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch, V equal WHU5 Epalka. Art I, Medieval 500-1400, with Rick Steves. 182-856. 20141220 Rick Steves Travel Talks Subscribe at httpgoogl slash L6QJUS for more new travel lectures. AD 500, Rome shatters into a thousand kingdoms. See how Europe pieces itself back together, the castles of the Dark Ages, the grandeur of Romanesque churches, the soaring arches and stained glass of the Gothic style, and the rise of cities and trade that would bring the classical world's rebirth in the Renaissance. Download the PDF handout for this talk, https, slash slash gu, gl slash clu 5 tr. Shop Rick's art book, https, slash slash store, ricksteves, com slash shop slash p slash t. Rick Steves' 100 Favorite European Works of Art, Illustrated with Vivid, Full-Color Photos Planning a Trip to Europe? You'll find lots of free travel information at https slash slash www.ricksteves.com slash Europe slash This talk was filmed during the Rick Steves European Travel Festival on November 1, 2015 any special promotions mentioned are no longer valid. 0007. So this is three one hour classes, basically. 0010. This first class is going from 0014. It's gonna go from the medieval period. 0019. From 500. That's the fall of Rome, until 1400. 0, 0, 22. There's another class that is. 0, 0, 23. Renaissance and Baroque, going from 1400 to 1800. 0, 0, 27. And then the final class takes us. 0, 0, 28. From the age of revolution right up to our crazy time. 0031. I do want to stress that there. 0033. Are going to be no tests, okay, this is fun. 0037. I'm gonna comp, I'm gonna compromise a little bit on completeness. 0040. And accuracy, just to make it really simple. 0043. So you can get your brains around it. 0044. We're not scholars here, we're Eurocentric, and we're talking about what? 0048. Really matters to your sightseeing. And we're gonna take this sweep and it's. 0052. Gonna be very practical. The textbook for today's talk is Europe 101. 0057. This is the book we've written after. 0058. 25 years of guiding groups around Europe. 1 o'clock. Understanding what you need to know and 102. Just as importantly, what you don't need. 104. To know to really understand and enjoy your sightseeing. 106. So let's head on out, and the first thing. 109. We're going to talk about is Europe in. 111. The year 500. Now in the year 500, Rome has fallen, right? 
117. Rome goes for 1000 years, from 500 BC to 500 AD, and then the Middle Ages go. 122. From about 500 for another 1000 years from 500 AD to 1400 AD. The first half of 128. That period, roughly 500 to 1000, is what is popularly called the Dark Ages. 133. Of course it's not in not that dark, but compared to everything else it's pretty. 136. Dark, so we'll call it the Dark Ages. 138. 500 to 1000. Then things kick into gear in 1000, and we get some very exciting. 143. Culture and art in the High Middle Ages. And that takes us from 1000 to 1400 when. 150. The Renaissance starts, and that in a lot of ways is the start of our modern world. 153. Now, when Rome fell it was replaced by the Roman Catholic Church in a lot of 159 ways. I mean I love this photograph. 201. Here this this painting you'll find it in the 203. Vatican, and it shows what is the remains of a broken classical columns laying on. 209. The floor knocked over and replaced by a crucifix and in a lot of ways 214 that's what happened Rome fell and the Roman Catholic Church carried on 219 the Pope was called the Pontifex Maximus and they 222 Roman Emperor was called the Pontifex Maximus 225 you had the Roman all the Roman senators, and then you had all the Roman Catholic. 229. Bishops and Archbishops. So there's a lot of that echo of Rome carrying on. 235. When we think about how important Rome was 2000 years ago, we got to remember. 239. Rome didn't mean the city of Rome. Rome meant the entire civilized world. 243. Everything from a Eurocentric point of view, and that's what we are today. 247. Everything was either Roman or it was barbarian. 250. Here we see the Roman Empire at the height of the time in the Pax Romana, the 254 first 200 years after Jesus. And we can see Rome is right in the middle of it. 258. But Rome spread all through that area, and when Rome during that period. 303. Everybody who spoke Latin or Greek was civilized. 305. Everybody beyond that was a barbarian, bar bar, bar. 309. Just like animals. Now, when Rome came when Rome fell. 313. You have the Christian Church coming in and taking the remnants of Rome, and. 318. Conquering it visually, conquering it physically. 321. You got Trajan's column here in Rome, what's on top? Is it a statue of? 325. Emperor Trajan, or is it a statue of Street? Peter? Street? Peter? 330. It used to be Trajan, they took him off and they put Peter up there. 333. So time and time again, we see this Roman. 336. Thing. Now when you think about the Dark Ages. 339. My frustration in teaching the Dark Ages. 341. When I was first doing this was, 
I wanted. 343. To do it all chronologically. It doesn't work. 345. Chronologically, it all fars apart falls. 347. Apart, that's why it's dark. So we think of that whole body of time, from 500 to 351. 1000, as just a bunch of splotches that are all over the place. 354. I'm talking from a practical travel point of view, what do we need to know? 358. Look at the map. You've got Rome as just an insignificant little city at this. 402. Point you've got the eastern half of the. 405. Roman Empire living on in from present day Istanbul. 409. You've got Islam cutting across Africa and moving into Spain. 413. You've got all sorts of movements of tribes, Magyars, and Slavs, and remember. 417. This is when bully tribes would move around, and weak tribes would get shoved. 420. Around, and there wasn't fixed borders. You had Celtic people, I like to think. 425. Nice Celtic people all over Britain, and then the Anglos came. 430. And they were tougher, and they pushed the Celtic people that were there first. 433. Into the less desirable fringes, and they settled down in the harder to farm. 438. Scotland, Wales, and Ireland, and the Anglos took the better land, Anglo land. 442. Or England, you see. You have the Vikings way up in the north. Miserable farm. 447. Country up there, they're good at boating. They get in their boats and they rape. 450. Pillage, and plunder instead of farming. 453. You've got the Moors pushing into Spain. 456. You've got the only guy important to remember, who is an emperor in the A. 459. Leader in the Middle Ages, Charlemagne, ruling from France and a little bit of. 504. Germany there in the year 800. You've got the city of Venice emerging as a big. 510. Power, and you've got Ixla Chapelle, which would be the capital, the early. 515. Capital of Europe where Charlemagne held his court. 518. So these are some of the ideas. When we think about that map in the Dark Ages. 522. We gotta remember Rome was falling, and the Roman Emperor said, I'm outta here. 528. And he moved over to Constantinople, it was called by Byzantium or something way. 533. Back then, and he said, I'm gonna name this Constantinople, the city of. 537. Constantine. So Emperor Constantine, the first Christian emperor by the way, set. 541. Up shop in present day Istanbul. Rome continued to fall, and Eastern Rome, which. 547 became the Byzantine Empire, lived on for a thousand years. 550. Christian in the echo of Rome, in a way, the Roman Empire surviving in the East. 555. You can see that in present-day Constantinople. When you think about the 6 o'clock art of the Byzantine Empire. 604. Ravenna was the western sort of capital of the Byzantine Empire, and their Yule. 609. 
Find sumptuous art, giving us a sense of how rich and exquisite life was in. 614. Byzantium. Remember for 400 years when Christians were just running in the mud. 619. In Europe, they looked at Constantinople as the leading city of Christendom, all right. 624. It's Istanbul today. And we can see that Byzantine art when we're in. 628. Italy, in Ravenna. When we look at this art, this is the end. 633. Of the ancient era and the beginning of the. 635. Middle Ages, this is around the year 500. 638. You can tell that because Jesus is portrayed beardless in the ancient world. 642. And he's portrayed bearded in the medieval world. And this is in the same. 647. Church, artists working in the same generation, on the cusp between ancient. 651. And medieval. Another little trick, when you look at a mosaic or painting and you. 657. See a bunch of religious people with halos. 659. The guy with a cross in his halo, it's always Jesus. 703. Only Jesus gets a cross in his halo, so there you've got one of the people that. 706. You're looking at in all those mosaics and stained glass, figure it out. 709. Okay, so we have these beautiful mosaics in. 712. Exquisite time, and when we think about. 714. The Byzantine civilization, here we see that standard for the next 1000. 719. Years, more than 1000 years. 721. It's the church and the emperor ganging up on the people, okay. 726. Here we got Justinian. He's the emperor. 7.30 He's wearing a crown, and he's wearing a halo. He is both holy and secular. And 7.35 You've got the leading church powers, and you. 7.37 Got the leading secular powers right here. 7.39 this is the original 1%, okay. You've heard about that, you know. 744. The 99 the 99's gonna raise their head later, but now for a long time. 749. The vote is always two against one. The. 752. Church and the government against the people. 755. All right. And that's kind of the status quo until we get to the age of. 759. Revolution, we'll talk about that. Now when it comes to the church, the Christian. 803. Church, in this day when there's a lot of barbu. 806. No. Free Christian and pagan religions going on. 809. It had to be pretty aggressive. And Jesus is often portrayed as a soldier. In fact. 814. Here in this mosaic you see Jesus dressed up like a Roman soldier, holding. 818. The cross as if it's a sword, standing on symbols of evil and on the book it says. A24 I am the way, the light, the truth, and the A27 Life, you see. This is really powerful art. A30 And it's very exciting to see how the church. A33 
establishes itself in that crazy world. 836. When Rome fell, and there was just chaos, a vacuum. 839. No real successful or established government. Now when we've got. 844. The Dark Ages, Europe is deep into the Middle Ages now, the power of Rome's gone. 850. In the 7th century in present-day Saudi Arabia, Muhammad comes along. He. 855. Establishes the Muslim faith, and that faith travels like wildfire across. 901. Africa. You can think how fast some of the Muslim extremists can travel these. 906. Days when they're on the warpath, right? Well. 908. This happened in Europe, and within 100 years. 911. Islam had spread from Mecca all the way across Africa, into Spain, through Spain. 917. And well into France. For 700 years. 922. The Europeans reunited in the effort to push those Muslims back out of Europe and 927. Back into Africa where they came from. That's called the Reconquista. 711. 932. The Muslims came across the Strait of Gibraltar. 935. 1492, they were finally pushed the other way. 937. One good way to get everybody on the same team is have a common enemy, right? 942. You can see it in present day politics, and back then everybody was on board. 947. Against the threat both from the east and from the south coming in, Islam. 952. Threatening Christian Europe. 953. This is the famous palace of the last Moorish stronghold in Granada. When you. 958. Ask a European what happened in 1492. 1001. They don't think about Columbus, that was the year they finally pushed the Moors. 1004. Back into Africa, away from this palace. 1006. The Alhambra. Now, the Moors have a huge impact on European culture. Very. 1011. Sophisticated, beautiful culture in so many ways, very smart. 1015. A lot of the great thinking of classical Greece was lost to Europe, absorbed into. 1019. Islam, and given back to Europe through the Moors in Spain. 1022. Now of course when you have Moorish art, it cannot have pictures of people or. 1027. Statues. You have calligraphy, you have Quranic verses, you've got propaganda. 1031. Phrases, you've got phrases of praise. 1034. Praise about the Prophet and so on. 1036. And when you go to a church you'll see a statue of St. 1040. Peter or a statue of Jesus or Mary. You go to a mosque. 1044. You can't see a statue. What you see is a banner with calligraphy writing in a. 1048. Very beautiful way that would say Mohammed or. 1051. Whoever, whatever prophet they're celebrating. 1054. So it's equivalent of a church, but. 1056. They can't have images so you get the calligraphy, and you see that in those. 1059. Mosques. 
Now for 700 years, Christians were pushing. 1103 The Muslims back out, and it was quite a struggle. 1106 A hero of this Reconquista was a guy named Santiago. 1111 Matamoros, Street James the Moor Killer And these days you go to Spain, you sit. 1117 In a church, this church is built on the ruins of a destroyed mosque, which is 1122 Built upon the ruins of a destroyed church, which is built upon the ruins of a Roman 1126 Temple, which was probably built on the ruins of something holy there before 1130 The Romans came, you see and you've got the 1133 Current church there now, and in a niche 1135 You see a guy on a horse rearing back with a sword up above, and the freshly 1140 Cut off heads of a bunch of Muslims at the feet of the horse 1143 So cutting off heads in a crusade is nothing new and you'll be surrounded by 1150 Cut off Muslim heads as you worship in churches in Spain 1154 This is fascinating stuff when you're interested in history and what's going 1157 On today Across Spain you've got the Reconquista An entire region of Spain 1202 is called Castile, and you'll find a lot of castles there that date back to that. 1206 Struggle In fact, there's a lot of towns called de la Frontera, Jerez de la. 1210 Frontera, Vigor de la Frontera, Arcos de la Frontera, and so on. 1214 towns that were established on the frontier 1217 the frontier pushed further down there 1219 embedded in christian spain and they still got the name de la frontera on the 1223 frontier a souvenir from pushing the moors back out now when christian europe 1229 Finally retook Spain 1231 There was a lot of Moorish civilization and artisans and crafts and aesthetics 1235 That stayed And they were just incorporated into Christian and Jewish 1239 Society and many of the churches and synagogues that were built after that. 1243 Actually were built by Moorish craftspeople. 1245 And you'll see that Muslim style carrying on. 1248 After the Reconquista When Rome fell. 1252 You had all this chaos. And there's all these barbarians tromping on. 1256 Meek, nice people's farmland, and burning their houses and so on. 13 o'clock On the mainland, near present-day Venice, farmers got sick and tired of getting. 1304 Run over by the barbarians and they said, this is gonna be miserable but let's move. 1307 Out in the lagoon and hope the barbarians don't like water. 1309 And they deforested that part of Italy, pounding in all the trees too. 1314 Make a foundation so that they could build their little houses, and they. 1317 Became the farmers became fishermen and eventually they became great traders. 1320 They had a real knack for that. 
1321. And by about the year 800 or 900, Venice was a huge sprawling. 1325. Trading Empire. Eventually, it went as far as the Holy Land, and it was the economic. 1329. Power in Europe in the year 1000. And when you go to Venice today you'll get a 1333 Sense of that You'll see street Mark's Basilica 1337 Now street Now Venice was an important place 1340 Historic politically, a whore important place economically, but no importance 1345. Religiously because it was an upstart town, kind of refuge refugee town. 1348. Nothing important there happened in the Bible so they don't have any relics. Bad. 1352. News if you're a self-respecting town. 1355. You need relics. I don't know if they had newsletters, or what, but it was. 1359. They became aware that the bones of street. Mark were available down in Egypt. 1403. So they sent a crew down to Egypt, and they rescued the bones of street. Mark. 1407. They brought him back to the basilica. And when you enter the basilica today, 1410, you see a mosaic over the door, and this goes back about a thousand years. 1415, and if you look closely at that mosaic, in the middle right under Jesus' blessing. 1419, the whole thing, is the coffin of street. Mark, and the big shots of the town are, 1423. Literally carrying him into the church. They planted him under the altar and. 1427. That put Venice on the map from a pilgrimage point of view, and now. 1431. Venice is a decent powerful town because it's got relics. 1435. It's got political and economic power and you've got all sorts of glory. 1440 Plastered all over that church. Small windows. 1443 Gold leaf mosaics letting the light that can squeeze and bounce around a lot, and 1448 It is filled with riches. 1450 When you go to Venice, you'll remember it was a military superpower in its day. 1455 An economic powerhouse in the day, to the point that it could scare away. 1459 Potential adversaries just by inviting them over. Taking them to the arsenal end. 1504 Showing them their very early form of mass production with an assembly line. 1508 Kind of production. 1509 They could crank out a warship every couple of days. 1513 A potential adversary came to Venice, they wined and dined M, let M see. 1516 The production of a warship, and then they rigged it not fitted it, and it's 1519. Just ready to go to defend the city, and that guy went home and said. 1522. Don't mess with Dennis, let's find somebody. 1524. Else. Venice was incredibly powerful. 1526. You can see the gate of the arsenal today when you go, and when you travel. 1530. 
Around Venice, you can see the result of all those riches. Time and time again. 1533. You'll notice it takes money to have things to look at a thousand years later. 1537. The places that had trade, the places that had money, have the most great. 1541. Buildings to see. Venice had the most money, they've got the most fantastic. 1544. Buildings, and you'll see this fanciful Venetian Gothic all over the place. 1549. I mentioned the Vikings up in Norway. Now the Vikings lived in very rough terrain. 1553. They were really good at shipping, and they had a huge impact on Europe. They. 1558. Sailed down rivers into Russia, in fact the word Russia is a Viking word. They. 1602. Sailed all the way to Sicily, they established a city and a society in. 1607. England, Horvick was a Viking town originally 1000 ago, and they. 1611. Settled in Normandy. And for generations they terrorized Europe around Normandy. 1617. Today in France, and so on. As a matter of fact, for generations the standard close. 1621. Of a prayer in Europe was not. 1622. Amen but it was and deliver us from the Vikings. 1626 Amen Those Norsemen, rape, pillage, and plunder, that's what they were good at. 1631 And they established themselves in Normandy. 1634 That's from the word Northmen, and they were assimilated eventually, and then in. 1637. 1066 it was the Normans that invaded England, right, for the Norman conquest. 1643. The Vikings had great ships, and you can see those ships up in Norway and in. 1647. Denmark. And when you travel around. 1649. Anywhere north of the Barbarian Roman line. 1652. I want you to remember that barbarians are kind of put down by history because. 1657. They couldn't write their history, but they really had some exquisite art. 1702. And when you go into Barbarian Europe and you look at old stuff, you got a given. 1707. Opportunity for the barbarians to shine, okay. 1710. The beautiful aesthetic in the wood carving that survives from the Viking. 1714. Age in Norway. When the Vikings were finally Christianized, that's considered. 1720. The beginning of the Middle Ages coming out of the ancient world into the middle. 1723 Ages, and then they put their woodworking techniques to building churches. You can. 1728 See a little bit of their ship building technique in their churches, this is a. 1731 Stave Church Now the big. 1733. Ruler of the Dark Ages is Charlemagne. Charlemagne is the only guy you gotta. 1738. Remember in the Dark Ages from a who's the king point of view. 1741. Charles the Great, Carolus Magnus, Charlemagne. 1745. Charles the Great ruled the Franks. 1749. He was crowned in the year 800. 
the Pope came up from Rome and crowned him in 1753. Paris, and this was the time when the Pope was needed to legitimize the Emperor and 1758. The Emperor was needed to legitimize the Pope, so they kind of worked together. 1801. Charlemagne was an effective ruler because he stayed on the road. 1804. Remember this whole term, a room fit for a. 1807. King. Back then if you just sat in Paris. 1809. You could say you you ruled everything, but in effect you didn't. You had to be. 1813. Out there moving and asserting your power. 1815. That's what Charlemagne did. Remember in the darkest depths of the Dark Ages, they. 1819. People in Europe knew they were in a middle time, they even referred to. 1822. Themselves then as some kind of medieval society, the Middle Ages. They knew there. 1828. Was something greater before them because they're sitting on the ruins of. 1830. Rome, and they knew they were in the doldrums. 1833. Now, but every time they had a little. 1835. Excitement going on they would shiver and drool with enthusiasm and think. 1838. Maybe this is the Renaissance, and then it would be a false start, okay. 1841. They had a little false start during the Carolingian time. When you hear they. 1846. Word Carolingian, that's from the reign of Charlemagne, okay. 1850. The real renaissance was not going to happen though for 600 more years. 1854 Until 1400 To give you an idea of the importance of monks during this period. 1859 Every effective ruler need to have scribes. The educated elites in. 1903 Charlemagne's administration were imported from Ireland, these were Irish. 1908 Monks During the darkest depths of the Dark Ages literacy was almost snuffed. 1912 Doubt and conscientious objectors to all that darkness and chaos, thoughtful. 1917 Bookwormy type people checked into monasteries. And they lived monastic. 1921. Lives, intellectual lives, and what they did to earn their keep was transcribe. 1924. Books, they would write out the books. 1927. This is a time when educated people spoke Latin across Europe. 1930. Not many people were reading and writing, and most of those who were were. 1934. Associated with the Church. The island of Ireland is called the Isle of Saints and. 1941. Scholars, and when Europe was pretty much illiterate. 1943. Ireland is remarkably sophisticated. And when? 1947. You go there today you'll see a lot of very. 1949. Interesting little monastic fortress communities that, 1000 years ago. 1954. Were bright spots in the dark ages. Remember, probably the most important. 1957 kind of painting in the Dark Ages is what we call illuminated manuscripts. 2002 There's no way to print a book except to hand write it. Not many people were smart. 
2005. Enough to handwrite, these were monks in the monastery that were scribes like. 2008. This, and it was boring work, all day long this. 2011. Writing stuff out. When they got to a new chapter. 2013. Oh man, I want to do something a little more creative, let's make a picture, so. 2017. They do a funny picture, or a fun picture on the chapter head, and then get back into. 2021. The hard business of transcribing the rest of that book, you see. 2024. The illuminated manuscripts, those paintings. 2027. Those illuminated cover pages, are they? 2029. Beautiful art of this period, and you'll see a lot of that in your travels. 2033. Now when Rome fell, there was a power vacuum. You can have a problem with. 2037. Government, you can complain about government, but try having no government. 2041. At all. If you have no government at all, you. 2043. Would wish for the government we have today. 2046. Believe it or not. When Rome fell, there was this power vacuum. 2051. What do you do? You got to have some semblance of order, so they had feudalism. 2056. Now Europe is fragmented remember, it is just people run for the hills. 2101. Used to be down in the valleys, now there's no order so people run for the... 2104. Hills, and we start these hill towns. All over southern Europe you find hill towns. 2109. Remember in the Middle Ages the only way to transport things safely and... 2113. Economically was on rivers. 2115. So towns would grow up on rivers. Rivers were good because they would turn your... 2118. Wheels and they would give you power, and of course you can get water from they. 2121. Rivers, so it made sense to build on a river. 2124. Paris was born on a river, like so many other great cities, originally in the... 2128. Island in the middle of the river, the Isle de la Site. 2131. Then it grows bigger, and it has to grow outside of the natural fortification, or... 2135. The moat caused by the river going around the... 2137. Island, and they have to build walls to protect it. 2140. Today, of course, the city grows way beyond those walls, and what they do is. 2143. They tear down those walls, and you have circular boulevard to help alleviate. 2147. Traffic congestion. All over Europe when you look at maps of great cities. 2152. You can see the medieval wall embedded in the city. 2154. Usually coming out from the river. This is Vienna. 2157. You got the river, you've got this. 2159. Cathedral, which would be the center point of that if it was what it would. 2202. Spin around, and then you've got the Ringstrasse. And the Ringstrasse was the... 2206. Former wall. Of course when the city grows beyond that, 
it's congested, you. 2211. Need to tear down that wall, and a beautiful thing about tearing down a. 2214. Wall is, you would always when you build a wall, have a huge no man's land beyond. 2220. The wall as far as you could shoot an arrow. 2222. If they let people build within that no man's land, it was built on the condition. 2225. That, if we are under attack. 2227. We going to tear down your house, because we don't want any of the enemy getting. 2230. Close to the wall without us seeing it. 2232. So you have the big no man's land plus the wall, oftentimes with a series of. 2236. Motes. You tear down the wall. 2238. You get the no man's land, and suddenly got all that real estate in the center. 2242. Of an important city that you can build on. When you look at Vienna. 2246. You've got the ring road, and it is lined with the greatest buildings in Vienna. 2250. Today. All the governmental buildings, the great museums, and so on, are built on. 2253. Land that was just free for the taking. 2255. When they took down their wall, and that's the wonderful string of buildings along. 2259. The Ringstrasse in Vienna. 2302. Here we take a look at Florence. Now when you go to a city like Florence, you feel. 2305. Like, oh this is exhausting it goes forever. 2307. Scissors it out in your mind, just around that circular road defined by the old. 2312. Medieval wall, and almost all of your sightseeing is almost always within. 2316. That, what was the old medieval wall? Here we see Florence on the river with a 2321 Fortified bridge coming in and a wall going around it 2324 Today the wall's long gone, you've got a circular boulevard, and the gates 2328 Some of them survived, and they ornament the traffic circles that take the road 2332. Into town. During the wall, you had the road coming to the gate. 2335. The wall's gone, you still have the road coming to the gate, but the gate is no. 2339. Longer needed, so they make a traffic circle and they leave it there as a. 2342. Memorial or a souvenir of their medieval past. In the Middle Ages it was. 2347. Hard to be on the waterfront because there was marauding pirates. All of the. 2351. Famous resorts in the Costa del Sol in Spain, they have sister towns five miles. 2355. Inland up in the hills. 2356. That's where the town was, and then when. 2359. Things got stable enough, they. 2400. Moved down to the waterfront. 2402. Once they're on the waterfront, they have castles, like here in the Sink Terre. 2406. Every town has a castle. And this castle would be where they would holler. 2409. 
Warnings when they saw the pirates coming. 24, 11. And the people could run for cover. You'll find little, little towns in. 24, 15. Many places of Europe where the church is hidden behind a hill. 24, 18. You don't want a big spire sticking up in the area just to beckon to all they. 24, 22. Pirates that you've got a lot of money to build a fancy church. 24, 25. You have a squat spire hidden, tucked away in a valley so pirates end. 24, 29. Marauders from the water cannot see you. If you're choosing a great city for a. 24, 33. Great capital like, let's say Spain, the most powerful guy in Europe, the Holy. 24, 37. Roman Emperor in Spain needed a fortified city for his capital. 24, 42. Toledo was great. It's the spiritual, end. 24, 44. Artistic, and historical capital of Spain today. 24, 47. Madrid is the modern capital because it's bigger but until the city outgrew. 24, 50. Toledo, Toledo was the political capital also. And Toledo is snuggled within. 24, 56. A hairpin turn of the river. And the cool thing about a hairpin turn of a. 25, 01. River is. You just make a border a wall across the bottom of it, and you've got a 2505. Perfectly fortified town. You'll see that textbook example in Toledo. I mentioned 2510. When Rome fell Europe was fragmented, a good example is Germany. Today Germany is 25. 15. The size of Montana. In the Middle Ages it was 200 independent little 2-bit. 25, 20. Fiefdoms and dukedoms. 25, 21. Each with its own little capital city, its own fortifications its own customs. 25, 26. And duties and all that kind of stuff. 25, 28. Here's an example. This is the town of 25, 30. Rothenburg. Most of us have been to Rothenburg. 25, 32. But until just recently, I never envisioned Rothenburg as the capital of a 25, 36. Little country. You can see Rothenburg in the center, and then you can see the 25, 40. Terrain of Rothenburg. Of course Rothenburg would be really walled, but the whole 25, 45. Terrain would have its fortification around 25, 47. That and in times of serious attack. 25, 49. Everybody could come into the walls of Rothenburg. The water mills would be. 25, 53. Vacated, and they would have to use the horse mills inside the walls of the town. 25, 57. To do their milling. And here you have a. 25, 59. Good example of a feudal state in Germany. 26, 01. I mentioned, if you don't like your government try no government at all. When? 26, 05. Feudalism hit Europe with the power vacuum caused by the fall of Rome. 
2609. There is a desperate need for some semblance of order. What do you do? 2612. Have an organization contractual organization between landowners. They. 2617. Willingly work together, giving something for something. 2621. Now, if you're the biggest landowner, let's say you own. 2624. All of the country, you can't really control of the country unless you divvy. 2629. Up sections of it to lesser landowners. 26, 31. So you give out major portions to the biggest landowners. Now they can't. 26, 35. Control all that land either until they divvy it up to other people, and then. 26, 39. They divvy it up until it gets down to the smallest landlord. And the smallest. 2643. Landlord is where the landed elites connect with. 2646. The landless peasants. And all the peasants. 2649. 90% of society has to work just for subsistence by producing land. 2653. For that smallest landlord. 2655. That's what we call manorialism, the manor house. And then it goes to bigger. 2700. Landowners, bigger landowners, and bigger landowners. Now. 2703. Feudalism is this relationship between all these wealthy elites, and you've got 2708. A two-way street. A lord gives a vassal land in return for loyalty, okay. 2715. The currency is, a lord gives a vassal. 2720. A fief in return for fealty. 27, 23. One man's vassal is another man's lord, all of. 27, 27. Them giving control of the land for loyalty. 27, 30. It's a fascinating thing to think about, and when you travel in Europe you. 27, 34. Realize there are three parts of the feudal pie. 27, 37. There's this relationship between landowners and all the rich people. There. 27, 41. Children are either the landowners or the knights, because if you're a second or. 27, 44. Third son you don't get the land because it all goes to the oldest son, you get a. 27, 48. Nice set of armor, and you get to be a bully. 27, 50. Running around chopping things down, okay. 27, 51. And there's a lot of people, pent up energy, and people with their. 27, 55. Armor, and so on, and knights in the prime of life. 27, 57. They're lucky people but there's nothing going on. 27, 59. They're anxious, they want some action, okay. 28, 01. That'll stir things up. You've also got the church and the intellectual. 28, 05. Elite controlled by the church. And then you've got the lion's share of the 2809 people, 90 percent, 
95% whatever. 28, 12. All through the Middle Ages it is the landed elites, and the intellectual. 28, 17. Religious elites, and the peasantry. And you've got some kind of a nice sort of. 28, 22. Democracy here, you've got the three estates. Throughout the Middle Ages in. 28, 26. France they would sit together when they needed to raise money for the king. He. 28, 29. Had to call the three estates. 28, 31. But it was always vote by house, not by show of hands. 28, 34. And it was always two against one. 28, 37. You see. There could have been 200 people in the estates general from the. 28, 41. Peasantry cause that was 90% of the people. 28, 43. And 100 people, and 100 people, and. 28, 45. They would still be vote by house. 28, 47. Two against one. So it was always stuck. My. 28, 51. Theory about history is you got a finite pie. 28, 55. You can't really make it bigger, and how you slice it up is determining who's got. 28, 59. What in society? And with everybody is stuck with or satisfied with their slice. 29, 03. There's not much history. 29, 05. If there's somebody new added to the mix and you gotta redivide the pie. 29, 09. Then there's history. Four centuries there wasn't much history in Europe, because. 29, 12. Everybody is satisfied with or stuck with their slice of the pie. 29, 15. Then you got the advent of cities. When cities come along, you got elites and they. 29, 19. Cities, bankers, lawyers, merchants, people with money and education, that don't fit. 29, 23. Into the landed nobility or the clergy, where. 29, 25. Do you stick M? These guys say, welcome to. 29, 27. The pie, you can sit with the peasants. 29, 29. Now they're in the peasantry. The peasantry now has a little bit of muscle. 29, 33. Because these guys are lawyers, and rich, and bankers, and they can demand a little. 29, 37. More respect when the king calls the assembly together, and we're moving. 29, 41. Ahead in history but that was leading up to the French Revolution, the king of. 29, 44. France needed to call the assembly together to raise money to fund the. 29, 48. American revolutionaries against England. Philosophically that was the enemy, but. 29, 53. You have an enemy just across the way so you're going to give money to that group. 29, 56. The American revolutionaries, to fight your enemy. 29, 59. Like we see happening in modern history too. The king called the assemblies. 30, 03. Together and the third estate said, wait a minute. 
30, 06. We're not just going to give you your money. 30, 07. I know we normally just rubber stamp it. 30, 09. But we're going to update this now, and we want a little more respect out of the 30, 12. Peasant out of the third first estate. And 30, 14. They said, we should vote by show of hands. 30, 16. Instead of by house, instead of two to one. 30, 19. It would be two 200 to 200, and maybe we can get. 30, 21. Some action here. And the king said, no way. 30, 24. Things got radical, and that started the. 30, 27. French Revolution in a very simple nutshell. 30, 29. But you can kind of see that feudal pie and the difficulty in re-slicing it. 30, 34. It's a fascinating thing when you get too many too. 30, 39. A few people having too much power, wow, okay. 30, 43. In the year 1000, things start to kick into gear in Europe, okay. 30, 47. Dark ages are pretty dark, not much progress, not much travel, not much growth. 30, 51. Not much innovation, and then in the year 1000 you got things startin'. 30, 55. To jiggle. Europe is starting to show itself now. People are traveling, people. 30, 59. Our trading, population is growing. 31, 01. There's an inventiveness, people are harnessing. 31, 04. Wind power and they're harnessing water power. 31, 06. They're building to last, they're building thinking it will be here in. 31, 10. 100 years, you've got this sort of a spirit, this sort of European spirit, this. 31, 16. Inventiveness, and it is stoked in a lot of ways by the Crusades. 31, 20. There was this pent up energy, all these. 31, 22. Noblemen with all sorts of weapons, and 31, 24. Horses and energy and there's no fightin'. 31, 26. Going on, what am I gonna do, you can. 31, 28. Only do so many medieval jests, you know. 31, 30. And they had a chance to go to the holy. 31, 32. Land and wreak havoc. So they have they. 31, 34. Crusades, an inglorious chapter in they. 31, 36. Story of Europe, but everybody in Europe. 31, 38. Had something excited about to get. 31, 40. Excited about the Crusades. 31, 41. This is when you got bands of righteous. 31, 43. Christians going to the Holy Land to. 31, 45. Free the Holy Christian sites from the. 31, 48. Muslims, right. Now the Pope wanted to. 31, 50. Push this cause the Pope would get. 31, 52. Prestige for doing this. Landowners. 31, 
53. Wanted to do it because they could get. 31, 56. New fiefs, more land holdings. Nobles. 31, 58. Want to do it because they had a horse end. 31, 59. Armor, and they're in the prime of life. 32, 00. zero. And there's no wars going on, and now. 32, 02. They get a little bit of rape, pillage. 32, 03. And plunder, that would be exciting. And. 32, 05. Christians even got on board, because. 32, 07. They thought they would win points by. 32, 08. Freeing the Holy Land from the Muslims. 32, 10. Everybody was excited about the Crusades. 32, 13. Europe got all excited about it. 32, 14. Horrible thing to see and read about. 32, 16. And sightsee. One thing good that came. 32, 18. Out of the Crusades was, when the forces. 32, 21. Went over to the Middle East they found. 32, 23. All sorts of stone working techniques and. 32, 25. They brought that home with them, and. 32, 26. Europe was able to build bigger things. 32, 28. With the stone working techniques they. 32, 29. Picked up in the Middle East from the. 32, 32. Crusades. When Europe was struggling to. 32, 34. Really get some kind of order. It's interesting the importance of the 32, 38 Monasteries, the monastic sort of 32, 40 Organizations around Europe Street Benedict 32, 43 Was founded the Benedictine Order 32, 46 and there was the Dominican Order, and the Franciscan. 32, 48. Order, and when you read about these monastic orders. 32, 50. They are literally thousands of churches. 32, 52. All over Europe, and they were remarkably. 32, 55. Cohesive and, and well organized. And each monastic. 32, 59. Community had its own little engine, its own innovation. 33, 04. Its own economy, and its own literacy. 33, 07. This is a modern portrayal of street. Benedict. 33, 11. With the slogan, Ora et Labra. 33, 16. Work no, prayer and work, all right. 33, 19. Prayer and work. They just worked all they. 33, 22. Time and prayed all the time, and it's a. 33, 23 very important part of the story of Europe. 33, 26. Remember in the Dark Ages, the Church. 33, 28. Became a very powerful organization, they. 33, 30. Monasteries became a very powerful. 33, 33. Organization. 
when people died. 33, 35. They willed their land to the church. They. 33, 37. Church was the biggest landowner in Europe by. 33, 39. Far. The only people who could thumb there. 33, 42. Noses at a secular leader's laws were. 33, 44. Church officials. 10% of all they. 33, 47. Wealth was going down to Rome, almost. 33, 49. Required, in the form of tithes. 33, 51. This made the church quite powerful. 33, 53. In the Middle Ages the kind of. 33, 55. Travel that was most common was. 33, 57. Pilgrimages. People would go on. 33, 59. Pilgrimages, and they would walk, and walk. 34, 01. And walk, and every time I approach a. 34, 03. Great medieval church I love to see it in. 34, 05. The distance, and I think of myself as. 34, 07. A kind I try to get the energy and excitement. 34, 10. Of of a pilgrim approaching on foot. 34, 12. Here we have the Chartres Cathedral. And. 34, 14. You can imagine what an incredible ounce like. 34, 16. Spire that must have been for a faithful Christian 800 years ago. 34, 21. Walking and walking and walking to see a. 34, 24. Shroud that shows the image of Jesus, or. 34, 27. A shroud that shows the image of Mary, or. 34, 29. A piece of that the cross, or a piece of. 34, 32. The crown of thorns, and this was what sort. 34, 35. Of motivated all that pilgrimage action. 34, 37. Remember when Christianity became they. 34, 40. Religion of Europe, they didn't just. 34, 42. Inherit the Roman temples. 34, 44. The problem with that is, a Roman temple. 34, 46. Is designed for people to be outside, they. 34, 48. Public never went into the Roman temple. 34, 50. Christian churches by their very nature. 34, 52. Are gathering together the body of. 34, 54. Christ on earth, the congregation sits. 34, 56. Together to worship together. 34, 58. You need a building that'll house a lot. 35, 00. zero. Of people. Pagan temples wouldn't do it. 35, zero 02. What would do it is the pre Christian. 35, zero 05. Roman Basilica. A basilica was a big hall. 35, zero 07. Of justice, a nice rectangular building. 35, 10. With two rows of columns, with an area in. 35, 12. 
the middle where everybody could gather. 35, 15 So churches adopted the Basilica plan. 35, 17 When you hear the word Basilica, that 35, 19 is an architectural design that predates 35, 22 Churches and Christianity, adapted by they 35, 24 Church in the Middle Ages Now if you're 35, 27 Trying to understand 35, 28 Your Medieval Church Architecture 35, 32 There's only a few words you gotta know 35, 35 And it'll start to make sense And 35, 37 People who write these guides to 35, 38 Churches and stuff, they just assume you 35, 40 Know what a transept is, or a west portal. 35, 42. Or an apse, or an ambulatory, and you just. 35, 44. Gotta get a hangout hang on these few words. 35, 46. First of all, the church is facing east. 35, 48. The altar is always in the east facing Jerusalem. 35, 52 That means the portal, the entry, is always the west. You have the west portal. 35, 58 It's the portal, there's only one portal, it's the west portal. Now if you're a 36, 02 bird flying over that basilica, it just looks like a box. 36, 05 You need to sprout transepts and it starts to look like a cross. 36, 09 Much better. So you take your boxy, rectangular basilica, and you sprout. 36, 13 Transepts because the church always faces east. 36, 17 You can only have a north and a south transept, so don't worry about west end. 36, 22 East transept, you've got a north transept and a south transept. These are 36, 26 Designed to accommodate pilgrims on a certain feast day or special saint's day. 36, 29 Hordes of people converge on that church. And the amble in, they walk in, they. 36, 35 Circulate right around that thing, and they amble. 36, 37 Out to the main square where the party's going on. 36, 39 That's what you have an ambulatory for. 36, 42 The outer row where you amble all along. 36, 45 Checking out each of the little chapels. 36, 47 That line the side and the transcripts. 36, 50 that's the ambulatory. Behind the high. 36, 52. Altar, in the very extreme eastern end. 36, 55. You've got a semicircular area which is. 36, 58. Called the apse. And near the high altar. 37, 00. zero. There's an area called the choir. 37, 03. We think of choir as a singing group. 37, 05. 
but acquire in architectural terms is a 3707 Little Church Within the Church 3709 This is a cozy place that could be heated and intimate in the middle of 3713 A vast stony building The choir is where 3715 You'll see an even song service when you 37, 18 Go to England you'll sit in the choir 37, 20 There's a mass every day in these churches 37, 22 And it's given in the choir, and so on 37, 24 So if you know those basic words, I think 37, 27 you have a good start on understanding. 37, 29 The terminology assumed of you when it 37, 32 Comes to describing a medieval church. 37, 35 This is the church of the Basilica of Street. Francis 37, 38 and the Basilica of Street. Francis is just 37, 40. Designed for pilgrims. You can imagine. 37, 42. Because all the pilgrims would come. 37, 44. There to see the relics of Street. Francis. 37, 46. In a sizzy. So around the church is a hole. 37, 48. Bunch of the associated buildings that. 37, 50. Were there for lots of visitors, pilgrims. 37, 54. Coming in. The first European art style. 37, 57 is Romanesque. Romanesque is a small. 38, 00. Stubby, thick-walled, small-windowed, dark. 38, 04. Interior, fortress of God, kind of church. 38, 07. This is the earliest Romanesque churches. 38, 09. Dating from about the year 1000. They. 38, 11. Feel like fortresses of God, some of them. 38, 14. Even have crenellated towers where you. 38, 15. Can hide behind with your bow and arrow. 38, 17. You know because these were places of 38, 19 Last refuge in a town that didn't have a 38, 21 Wall When you think about Romanesque 38, 25 Remember the carving is very flat 38, 27 Cluttered, and narrative 38, 30. It's just comic book kind of images so. 38, 31. You can read a story, it doesn't need to. 38, 33. Be realistic, they don't care how honest and realistic it looks. 38, 37. You just got to identify there's a. 38, 39. Woman with a dead child on her lap. 38, 41. That would be a pieta, you know. Here's a. 38, 43. Guy with a bushy beard and a key, that. 38, 46. Would be Peter. And it was just all that. 38, 48. 
Symbolism The best place to look for the 38, 50 Best carvings of the ages called the 38, 52 Tympanum The tympanum is the semi 38, 55 Circular area over the door, OK 38, 57 Look up there and you'll see the best carvings of that church. 39, 02 The most famous, I think, work of art of the 11th century. 39, 05 I think, would be the The Bayou Tapestry. 39, 07 And The Bayou Tapestry is sort of. 39, 09 Medieval style art, it's telling a story. 39, 11. If you don't understand that that's. 39, 13. Edward, it says Edward up above, and there's. 39, 14. All sorts of dead soldiers below. And. 39, 16. This is about a 50-yard long embroidery. 39, 18 That goes around the church, celebrating. 39, 21 The Battle of Hastings when the Normans. 39, 23 Went over to England and won. 1066 That's. 39, 26 One of the key days I don't remember 39, 28 Many dates if I bring up a date today 39, 30 This is worth remembering Battle of 39, 32 Hastings, 1066, the Normans invading 39, 34 England from France And when you think 39, 37 Of the Normans invading France, they 39, 40 Bring with them their architectural 39, 42 Style, which is Romanesque, but when you 39, 45 Go to England you don't find Romanesque. 39, 47 You find Norman architecture. 39, 49 If somebody refers to Norman architecture. 39, 51 It's the Romanesque brought over by the 39, 53 Normans a good example of Romanesque. 39, 55. Architecture in England is in London, they. 39, 58. Tower of London, built for William they. 40, 01. Conqueror. And this was the fortress. 40, 04. Of London, and when you go inside that. 40, 06 Fortress, you can see it glorious 40, 09 Romanesque, or Norman Chapel And when we 40, 13 Look at this chapel, we can see why Romanesque is called Romanesque 40, 16 Romanesque is called Romanesque because of 40, 19 The Roman style columns and round arches 40, 22 Roman columns, Roman arches, Romanesque, year 1000 40, 27 This is the Pisan Romanesque, the town 40, 30 Of Pisa has a great ensemble on its 40, 33. Piazza of Miracles, you've got the church. 
40, 35. You've got the bell tower, and you've 40, 37. Got the baptistry. And when you have a 40, 40. Medieval church complex. 40, 41. It always has those three elements. So. 40, 44. Do you remember when you're sightseeing? 40, 46. You've got the great church, but in the 40, 48. Middle Ages, you could not go into the 40, 50. Church until you were baptized. So you 40, 51. Had to have the baptistry outside of the 40, 53. Church. The baptistry in Pisa, the 40, 55. Baptistry in Florence, across the square. 40, 57. From the church. And then you've got the 41, 00. Bell Tower, in the case of Pisa, the 41, 02. Leaning Bell Tower, and that's where you'd 41, 04. Have the bells ringing the hours, ringing. 41, 07. When it's time to celebrate, ringing when you're under attack. 41, 10. Ringing when there's a fire. People. 41, 12. Didn't have watches, people didn't have. 41, 14. Radios. You had to listen to the bell to know what was going on. 41, 18. Italy is known as the land of a. 41, 20. Thousand bell towers. People have a. 41, 22. Psychological sort of trait called. 41, 25. Campanilismo. They love the sound of 41, 28. Their town's bell tower. 41, 30. If my town, Edmonds, had a bell tower, I 41, 32. Would have Campanilismo. I would when I get 41, 35. Home, I'd hear the town of my the sound of 41, 37. My bell tower and I think, yes, I'm home. 41, 39. In each town they would have a little. 41, 41. Glockenspiel, the bells that play, and. 41, 43. They would go, rattle, 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 do de do do. 41, 46. I'm paying attention, I'm glad I live here. 41, 48. Bong, 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 it's three o'clock. 41, 50. Or they would go fancier, fancier, and. 41, 53. Then suddenly, bum, 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 bum. 41, 55. Bum, 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 I'm so proud to live in this town. 41, 59. Bong, 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 3 o'clock. So you have. 42, 01. Those bell towers. You can climb to a lot of. 42, 03. M and C those glockenspiels, the keyboard. 42, 06. Worth of bells that they have up there. 42, 08. It's fun to go to the top of the leaning. 42, 09. Tower, it's not leaving this much, but it. 
42, 11. Is a very tilty place to go to the top of. Now the next big change is. 42, 16. Gothic. And when you have Gothic, you've got a lighter interior. 42, 21. This was a big break, this is the high. 42, 23. Middle Ages now, about the year 1200, we see. 42, 26. Gothic replacing Romanesque. And when you look at a Gothic church. 42, 31. You're seeing pointed arches, and you're. 42, 33. Seeing more windows. You've still got the. 42, 35. Tympanum above each of those doors on the west portal. 42, 39. You see the tympanum. Now it's pointed instead. 42, 41. Of semicircular because of the pointed arches. 42, 43. But that's where the best carvings are. 42, 45. That's where you'll see a lot of stuff too. 42, 46. Look at it. This happens to be the Notra. 42, 48. Dam, the great Gothic cathedral in Paris. 42, 50. I want to remind you, when they set out. 42, 52. To build these things they knew it was. 42, 53. Going to take more than 100 years. Nobody who dedicated their life to. 42, 56. Starting this building would be around to see it finished. 42, 59. But they dedicated their lives to the church. 43, 01. That was an important part of their communities. 43-02 Even though they would never see it. 43-04 Finished. When you step inside, you see. 43-06 The beauty of Gothic. The whole triumph. 43-09 of Gothic is to make the wall skeletal. 43, 12. Supporters so they can now not support the. 43, 14. Roof, but open up for windows, you see. 43, 17. A Gothic church is a masterful playing off against architectural forces. 43, 22. So the walls don't need to be stubby and 43, 24 Thick to hold the stone ceiling, but so 43, 25 The walls can just be window holders and 43, 27 There you see the ribs bringing that 43, 29 Skeleton of support to keystones on the top. 43, 32. The best way for me, as a tour guide, to. 43, 34. Demonstrate Gothic architecture is to. 43, 36. Build a Gothic cathedral out of tourists. 43, 39. Now I'll use the photograph instead of 43, 41 Asking for 12 volunteers, here are 13 43, 43 Volunteers, but it takes 13 tourists to make a Gothic cathedral 43, 46 Follow me here, you got 3 6 columns 43 48. So you get volunteers, and you got three. 
43, 50. Columns here, and three columns facing us. 43, 52. These are columns, each has ribs coming together. 43, 55. Forget the elbows, forget rib is not here. 43, 58. Architecturally speaking, this is a rib. 44, 00. That goes to the top of the cell. 44, 02. The roof. Now when you have your spire, four ribs coming together here. 44, 08. And four ribs over here, when you have your spire hoisting himself up, they. 44, 12. Weight of that spire, if it's a round arch, is going to go straight down and. 44, 17. You're going to need stronger knees, fatter knees, no room for windows. 44, 21. If you point the arch up, you don't need a stronger wall anymore. 44, 26. The weight of the spire when he hoists himself. 44, 30. Up, because it's pointed, pushes you out. 44, 33. So instead of stronger walls, you need buttresses to push the walls in. 44, 37. So you ask for six volunteers, and the buttresses come prancing up. 44, 41. They stand flush against the columns, and... 44, 43. Then you want to free up even more room. 44, 45. On the walls, so you ask the buttresses to take. 44, 48. One step back and fly in with your support. 44, 50. Flying buttresses, okay. Now, you've got that skeleton of support. 44, 55. You got your flying buttresses, you got your columns, you got your ribs. 44, 58. You got your pointed arches, and you've got a strong, wiry lightweight person, I. 45, 02. Hope, that hoist themselves up to be the spire, and it's all solid as can be, and. 45, 07. That's the essence of Gothic. And if you're ever having a party that's just. 45, 12. Not going over very well, you can say, hey let's. 45, 15. Build a Gothic cathedral, it just takes 13 of us. 45, 17. You can see these beautiful flying buttresses, you can see the pointed. 45, 23. Arches, it's fun to know about that before. 45, 25. You step into these churches. Remember. 45, 27. And by the way, when I say cathedral, that just means the seat of a bishop. 45, 31. Cathedra is the word for the throne of the bishop. 45, 34. So if there's a bishop there, and if that's his church. 45, 37. That's a cathedral. Street. Peter's in Rome is. 45, 40. The most important church in Christendom. 45, 42. It's not a cathedral because it's not the home of the bishop, right? Little tiny. 45, 46. Towns can have a cathedral. Wells, in England, is the smallest city. A city is. 45, 52. 
the name of a town that has a bishop, so technically Wells is a city and it's 45, 57. Church is a cathedral. In Italy you hear the 46, 00. zero. Word Duomo a lot. Duomo is the Italian. 46, 0, 02. Word for cathedral. Now here we have the 46, 0, 05. Facade of the Reims Cathedral, and it's 46, 0, 08. Just one of the great Gothic cathedrals, and I like 46, 11. It because it's beautifully floodlit, it's the Lacey. 46, 14. Grand, example of a west portal on the Gothic church. And at night they have. 46, 19. A sound and light show. And it looks garish, but this is really cool because. 46, 23. This is a reminder that these churches were originally painted like this. Hard. 46, 28. To believe, but when you think of the white gothic statues in the white gothic. 46, 32. Facades, you gotta remember that this is the color scheme of those churches 800. 46, 37. Years ago, and all of that paint is gone now. 46, 40. All sorts of beautiful churches. They used to be surrounded by graveyards, and... 46, 46. Now those graveyards are pulled up during the Napoleonic Age and parked. 46, 51. Elsewhere so you've got open space around the churches. Churches went taller. 46, 55. And taller, and taller, until they actually started falling down. 46, 59. This is the Cologne Cathedral in Germany, one of the tallest cathedrals. In Italy. 47, 04. They had Gothic architecture but because, I believe, that they were sitting. 47, 08. On the rubble of Rome, they had a more classic aesthetic and they didn't like. 47, 12. Tall spires, it was just tense and not very solid stable to them. 47, 17. They wanted things to be squat, stable, symmetrical, not so towering, and they. 47, 22. Would have less tall churches, but they would make up for the grandeur by. 47, 26. Really decorating the west port, the western port. So you've got facades, like. 47, 31. These churches in Orvieto and in Siena, that are just like, you know, just fruit. 47, 38. Cake kind of fancy, and you got that in Italy. And now the architecture evolves. 47, 43. Until it reaches what's called flame-like Gothic, that's the final stage of. 47, 47. Gothic, flamboyant Gothic, and that's the last stage of Gothic before its sort. 47, 52. Of collapse, and is replaced by the Renaissance. Here we have the cathedral. 47, 56. In Milano. And this is spires, upon spires, upon spires, frilly, ornate, the same thing. 48, 03. Happens inside. You had the pure ribs, and then they got more and more decorative. 48, 07. Until you have fan vaulting. 
That's as they get fancier and fancier and forget. 48, 11. The simplicity of the original churches. When we look at that stained glass, we. 48, 16. Gotta remember this was so important in the Middle Ages. People were not literate. 48, 20. They went to church one day a week, this was their break from the drudgery of. 48, 23. Their peasant lives. And they'd step into church, and back then, if. 48, 27. Ever religion was the opiate of the masses it was back then, they'd stepped. 48, 30. Into church and they'd read the beautiful Bible stories, and it made. 48, 33. Sense to them. And teachers could use this as an example. And it's not my idea. 48, 37. Of necessarily a great time to spend half an hour with a scholar explaining. 48, 40. Every window, but once in your life it's nice for somebody to give you an idea of. 48, 44. How sophisticated and cohesive the sermons are in each of these windows. 48, 49. Malcolm Miller does that in Chartres, and it's. 48, 51. Just brilliant. If you get a chance to go to Chartres. 48, 53. Be sure you take his tour. But here we have a window at Chartres Cathedral, and. 48, 57. I forget exactly examples but you got image, you know, images demonstrating. 49, 02. Jesus' life going up the middle. On the left you have Old Testament, on the right. 49, 05. You have New Testament parallel lessons, and it all reaches some beautiful. 49, 09. Biblical sort of finale on top. It's all tied. 49, 12. Together. And when we look at those windows. 49, 15. We are just, I think, blown away by the fact that the High Middle Ages were. 49, 19. Pretty darn sophisticated. They would make the stained glass by melting. 49, 24. Minerals into the molten glass or by painting it after it was already baked. 49, 30. And then they would put it together in these lead sort of borders. 49, 35. Remember throughout the Middle Ages, the church was the noble endeavor. 49, 42. You could have art as long as it decorated the church. And they. 49, 47. Craftspeople that made the art were anonymous. 49, 50. They were not supposed to be famous. Nobody knew who was making all these. 49, 54. Beautiful things, they were anonymous. 49, 56. Craftspeople. This guy's name is Adam Kraft. 49, 59. And he is the first sort of architect that actually honored himself by. 50, 05. Sneaking a self-portrait in, and this is a. 50, 07. Reminder that things are about to change. 50, 10. When we step into the Renaissance. But in the Middle Ages, it was all to the glory. 50, 14. Of God. You had exquisite art celebrating the Virgin. 50, 18. Mary, 
and you had to exquisite art reminding you. 50, 21 Who the saint was that you should be thankful for, and so on. In Barcelona, Street 50, 26 George is the patron saint, so you got street. George everywhere you look. 50, 30 If you go to England and you find a church dedicated to street. Michael 50, 34 You can pretty much bet that church was built on a pre-Christian pagan holy spot. 50, 38 Because street Michael was in charge of tamping down the evil spirits. And they. 50, 43. Wood Park Street. Michael on that church in order to keep those evil spirits from. 50, 47. The pagan holy spot from corrupting what was going on in the church. 50, 52. If you're in Paris and you see a guy holding his head in his hand, that's got. 50, 56. To be street. Dennis. Because according to the story about street. Dennis. 50, 59. He was an early martyr and got his head chopped off. And you will recognize these. 51. 02. Symbols as you travel, and you'll be able to read beautiful Bible stories into. 5107. Beautiful church art when you enjoy the churches. 5110. Of the Middle Ages. Remember, until now. 5112. You didn't need to be realistic. You don't need to understand the body. 51, 15. You don't need to know really how a dead body lays on his mother's lap, it can be. 51, 20. Just a paper mache Jesus on Mary's lap, and that tells you that is a pieta. 51, 25. Of course that will change when we get Michelangelo and the Renaissance. 51, 29 Back then people looked at art because it told a story. Here you got 20 or 30. 51, 33 Pages, all telling a story. When you looked at an altarpiece in the church. 51, 38 You would find, above the high altar, the most important piece of art in that town. 51, 42. In a lot of cases, and a lot of times it be carved, and behind that would be. 51, 46. Canvases, and you would have many panels going back and forth. This is a polyptych. 51, 52. A many paneled altarpiece that could swing and show you different. 51, 55. Scenes depending on the time of year. 51, 57. Or you could have a simple triptych, three panels that would come together. 52, 01. And half of each scene and the back would come together and show you a full. 52, 04. Scene. The first the last great gothic painter, and maybe the first of. 52, 09. The modern painters, is Giotto. He preceded the Renaissance by about a hundred years. 52, 14. And if you want to see Giotto's work you can see a. 52, 17. Lot of it in the great cultural centers of Italy. 52, 19. Perhaps the best collection of Giotto is in Padua, where you can find the Scrovnit. 52, 24. Chapel. And you step into this chapel, 
and the entire thing is frescoed. 52, 28 By Giotto and his aides and students And we find here a cohesive 52, 34 Story that just tells an entire the life of Mary, or the life of Jesus, or whatever 52, 39 And when you look at this, you see powerful 52, 42 Visual images that were really effective teachers 600 years ago. 52, 47. Also, when we look at this, we are looking at frescoes. You hear the word fresco a lot. 52, 52. It's not technically a painting, fresco is mixing the pigments into the wet. 52, 56. Plaster. It was very permanent and you had to be very fast, because when it was 53.01 Dry, it was dry But it survives a lot better than canvas, alright 53.04 So fresco artists, and a lot of this art is fresco, they would dry 53.08 cartoon on the wall, and then they would mix the color into the plaster and they 53, 13 would apply it to the wall, they'd rough up the walls so the plaster would stick to 53, 16 it, and when the plaster dried, the color was the wall 53, 20 I mean it was so strong and you'll see frescoes all over in your travels. A. 53, 25. Beautiful thing about going to, for instance, this Skrovna chapel is. 53, 28. You follow the whole story through. It always culminates with a judgment day. 53, 33. Here you have Jesus coming down on Judgment Day. On one side people are 53, 36 Going to heaven, and on the other side people, well these are the people going 53, 40 To heaven, and on the other side are people just kicking off a pretty 53, 43 Miserable eternity, going to hell and I just love to look at these hell scenes. 53, 48 And get a sense of the, the power of the church to scare people into towing. 53, 53 The line from a church obedience point of view. All of this art now is paid for. 54, 02 And you got to ask yourself, who paid for it, and why? what was going on and if you 5406 look at a lot of the art you can get an indication of what medieval guild would 5410 have paid for it if you've got a beautiful church in your town in it 5413 needs a nice new door perhaps the carpenters or the masons or they 54 17 drapers will pay for that if the carpenters pay for it 54 20 they'll hire somebody to make this niche and put a statue of street George or 54 24 whatever and in the bottom you would have a little ad that says this program 54, 29 Was brought to you by the generous people at the 54, 31 Cobbler's Guild Remember next time you need a shoe 54, 34 These are good people, they gave this to 54, 36 Your church, alright And that would be 
54, 38. The advertising of the Middle Age, and you'd see that in the church. 54, 43. Remember, acidic air has wrecked havoc on all sorts of precious art. And what we 54, 48 need to do is be thankful that the church has taken the statues off of the 54, 53 churches now, all over Europe 54, 55 and put them in museums associated with the church and this is one of the great 54, 59 Underrated attractions in Europe Most travelers just go to the church, because 55, 03 There it is, it's right there, it's front and center 55, 06 It's big, it's free, it's dramatic, but the great art is across the street in the 55, 12 Museum of the Church, and we're kind of tired by the time we get there. 55, 15 Give some energy to seeing the Museo del Duomo, you know, that's in Florence. 55, 20 They've got the Museo dell'Opera del Duomo, where you've got all sorts of. 55, 24 Great art on how they made the church, and the great art that used to be in the 55, 27 Niches of the church When you go to these museums associated with the church 55, 31 You get to see the originals, even though they're faces 55, 34 are all rotted because of the 800 years of air. 55, 37 You get to see the originals where the new ones are stuck in the niches today. 55, 40 And you get some fun little glimpses at the history of that church. For instance, 55, 44 Gargoyles Gargoyles are fascinating, you know, their storm drains right on the 55, 48 Edge of the buildings And on a rainstorm the water would spew out 55, 52 You hear about when there's a big fire in a church, the copper panels of the 55, 56 Rooftop melt because of the fire 55, 58 I've always heard about this, the molten 56, 01 Copper was cascading down the church And 56, 03 I just thought, what a horrible thought, but I couldn't really imagine the roof 56, 07 Becoming molten, you know metal. And then in this museum. 56, 11. I saw a gargoyle that was, because of the storm of molten. 56, 16. Copper coming down off of the roof or lead, he was spewing out the molten metal. 56, 22. And then it got solid, and right there we can see that very odd little. 56, 27 Souvenir of a terrible fire in a church somewhere in France You needed a lot of 56, 33 Castles to protect all of these petty little countries And you've got the very 56, 39 Earliest castles, which are generally this Mott and Bailey design a Mott N. 56, 44. Bailey means a man made mound in a Boonesboro type stockade. And you'll see. 56, 50. That Mott N. Bailey in your travels. 56, 
52. For instance, well when you travel in Ireland. 56, 54. You can actually see some classic old, you know. 56, 56. Melted ice cube or sugar cube, kind of mott and bailey structures. When you go to 5701 York there's a mott with a castle, Clifford's Tower, right on the top. 5706 When you're traveling through medieval sites, you need to remember, it took money. 5710 To build beautiful towns and to fortify them so they would survive. The most. 57, 13. Beautiful, popular tourist towns today are probably so beautiful because they. 57, 17. Were great trading towns 600 or 800 years ago. 57, 19. Rothenburg is everybody's favorite medieval German town, crossroads of two. 57, 23. Trading routes, lots of trade there in Rothenburg, consequently beautiful. 57, 27. Buildings that survived to this day. In the very earliest days, it was two. 57, 31. Expensive to build a stone building, so they would do it with timbers, and they. 57, 35. Would fill in the timbers with mud, and cow pies, and so on, and then they would. 57, 38. Plaster over that, wattle and daub. You see a lot of that in thatched buildings in. 57, 41. England. Of course that's the building of a poor person. 57, 44. If you're a rich person you have a stone building. 57, 47. If you're a poor person that wants to look richer than you are, you build a. 57, 51. Waddle and dog building, and then you plaster. 57, 53. It over and you pretend that that is stone. 57, 56. A lot of people covered up their wattle and dog half-timbered look because that. 57, 59. Was low class. And then in the modern times, people found the wattle and dog. 58, 04. The half-timbered look more charming, and. 58, 06. More profitable from a tourism point of view. 58, 08. So they peeled away their fake stone and proudly. 58, 11. Showed their half-timberedness, like this. 58, 13. Oldest town the oldest building in Bacharach on the Rhine River. 58, 17. I bet one day it was covered up with stucco. 58, 19. So it looked like a stone building. 58, 21. And then in the modern era they peeled away the stucco to reveal the half. 58, 25. Timber. Many towns burned down because they were all fire all wood. And it got. 58, 31. To the point where they decreed, like in Oslo. 58, 33. You can't have a building in the town center. 58, 34. Unless it is made out of stone. A lot of times people would cheat on that, and. 58, 38. They would have a stone facade, and if you go into the courtyard around the back, 58, 41. You can still see that half-timbered wattle and dog sneaking through. They. 
58, 45. Trade in the Middle Ages was on the river. 58, 48. You had all these petty little kingdoms along the river, they each had a castle. 58, 51. These were the original robber baron castles. They would levy duty from the 58, 55. Boats that come down the river. 58, 57. This is Pfal's castle, actually a castle in the middle of the river with a 59, 01. Chain going out on both sides. Boats coming down the river, they hoist there. 59, 04. Chain, you can't go by, until you pay your duty, then they drop the chain and you. 59, 08. Can carry on to the next robber baron castle. 59, 10. You can imagine why city merchants were the original supporters of kings that 59, 14 wanted to create big national units, because that would give them 59, 18 Better free trade Free trade, Hansa Attic League, was a way to get around all 59, 22 those petty things and had a trading range in between all these great cities. 59, 25 The feudal lords were really found it convenient for Europe to be fragmented. 59, 30 Because they could levy all those duties. And today Europe is getting more. 59, 33 and more free trade until the EU is the final development of that, and you got 59, 38 400 million people that all have free trade but in the old days, it was just 59, 42 the opposite of that, all these robber baron castles when you go around Europe 59, 46. And you find the mightiest castles, a lot of times these are castles that are not. 59, 51. From the people where the castle is located. 59, 54. But from the conquerors that came in. 59, 56. If you go to Iraq today, you'll probably find a lot of fortresses that were built. 60, 01 With American help as we came in and tried to stabilize things there. When you 60, 05 Go to Wales today, you'll find a lot of castles built by England, who wanted to. 60, 10 Stabilize things they wanted to keep down the insurgents. You keep down the 60, 14 Insurgents by having castles with green zones attached to the castles. In Baghdad 60, 20 You fly in like this, down to the green zone, where you have your castle. In the 60, 24 Old days, of course, you didn't have a flight pattern like this for safety. 60, 27 You attract you came in by boat which was safe. So you look at the castles in. 60, 31 Wales, and generally there'll be a mighty castle with a fortified port, and then a 60, 36 grid planned garrison town within walls and that was the English foothold in 60, 43 that part of Wales surrounded by angry indigenous people 60, 46 you'll find more castles per square mile in Wales than almost anywhere else these 60, 51 are amazing castles 
and you want to check them. 60, 53. Out for sure when you're traveling in Wales. 60, 56. Remember, when you have a little country, you have a castle that would be the 61, 00. zero. Center of that, and it would have the ability to house most of the town end. 61, 04. The troops there when they're under attack. 61, 07. And that means you have to have a big pantry. 61, 09. There are huge cellars where they would keep provisions for the the, the times. 61, 14. When they were under siege. And before the advent of cannons, the defenses were. 61, 19. Stronger than the offenses, ANS the standard warfare was siege warfare. 61, 22. Surround M, we'll never break through, we'll just starve them out. 61, 26. So you have to have a well, and a big pantry, and lots of food. 61, 29. And wait it out. Warfare was really boring back then. Later on they developed. 61, 34. Cannons and things changed. 61, 37. Also remember when you're sightseeing, in the middle. 61, 40. Ages, because of this lack of central powers, big shots. 61, 43. The Rockefellers, and, you know, the local families, the Medici, whoever. 61, 48. They would have their own they were warlords, they would have their own. 61, 51. Armies and they would have their own fortifications. Think of the Montags. 61, 55. And the Capulets in Verona from Romeo and Shakespeare story. 61, 59. Those were two families, each with their own armies and probably each with their. 62, 03. Own fortified towers. All the towns in Italy had these noble family towers. 62, 09. Which threatened the king. 62, 11. So whenever you'd have a strong central. 62, 13. Power he would likely say, I'm offended. 62, 15. By all these noble pieces people families. 62, 17. With their, towers tear down your towers. 62, 20. There's only one town in Italy that has its medieval, bristly, noble family. 62, 24. Skyline surviving, and that's San Gimignano. And that's where you see all. 62, 28. Of these towers. Not unique to San Gimignano, uniquely surviving in San. 62, 32. Gimignano. Each one of those towers would be the fortress of a wealthy family. 62, 37. I mentioned early castles were stronger than the offense, and you could just. 62, 42. Build a tall castle and say, you can't. 62, 44. Come in. But when cannons came along, they. 62, 47. Could knock those castles down really easy. 62, 49. So what you get after the age of cannon is squat castles. They don't want to. 62, 53. 
stand on top of the hill saying, Come, and get. 62, 55. It, their squat, their crouching down. 62, 57. And their walls are 30 feet thick. And you can pummel it with cannonballs all. 63, 02. Day long and not get through. 63, 04. So when you see a modern day castle, like. 63, 07. Here in Luca, or in the fortress around. 63, 09. Milano, you're going to see a cannon hardened. 63, 12. Castle, and that's bringing in the modern age. 63, 15. Remember a lot of these palaces in the countryside, and royal fortified palaces. 63, 19. And everything, were pretty Spartan. If they were a palace for the king, the king. 63, 24. Only came a few times in his lifetime, and they would have the royal party was. 63, 28. Moving around, and they would have, I think you'd call them the royal equivalent of. 63, 32. Rhodes, that went ahead and set up the place when the king and his entourage. 63, 35. Arrived. In France you find a lot of that when you go to the 63, 39 Different palaces, and countryside castles, and chateaus 63, 42 Each one had a room fit for a king, and when the king came they would furnish it 63, 47 The French word for furniture is meubles, right? and it the furniture was all. 63, 52. Collapsible. They could fold up the tables, fold up the chairs, grab the. 63, 55. Chests with handles on them, put them on their wagons, and go to the next chateau. 64, 00. zero. So when you look at your royal furniture remember, it all fits in a wagon. 64, 04. The walls were cold and drafty, and you would have your whole royal collection. 64, 09. Of tapestries you'd hang up there to warm up the place. And the tapestries. 64, 14. Were sort of the newsletters of the day, they would tell folk wisdom. They would. 64, 18. Tell whatever has happened politically, they would make the king feel good. 64, 22. You'll find exquisite tapestries all over medieval Europe, warming up the. 64, 26. Walls of these otherwise barren chateaus. 64, 29. When France, which had a lot of castles, became established, suddenly you've got a 64, 36. Fortifying castle, a defensive castle in the middle of a very stable country. 64, 42. You don't need it anymore. These morph into hunting lodges and luxury getaways. 64, 47. Four kings and their mistresses, all right. 64, 50. All along the Loire Valley you find chateaus that originated as. 64, 54. Defensive castles, that became ridiculous from a defense point of view, and they. 64, 59. Just became really over the top, ostentatious. 65, 02. Getaways for royals. Like Shambord, 
shown here. 6505. 440 rooms. This was a hunting palace for the king. 6509. He rarely came there. If you look at Shen Anso, again. 6513. It's an over the top castle that has no defensive purposes. 6516. This is a party house run by the king's mistress and decorated with a reel. 6521. Feminine touch. A lot of the castles were very feminine because they were the ones. 6525. With unlimited budgets and not off on crusades or off fighting, but they're at. 6529. Home busying themselves by decorating up some fancy chateau. 65, 34. When we look at what we've just talked about, in the Middle Ages, the Dark Ages. 65, 38. Go from 500 to 1000. And we've got the fall of Rome, meaning barbarians are. 65, 44. Going all over the place throughout this age. You've got monasteries providing. 65, 49. Some semblance of order around Europe, as that was really the. 65, 53. The shadow of Rome's structure of rule. The rule of Charlemagne is the only. 66, 00. zero. Important sort of big political event in the middle of the Dark Ages. 66, 05. Byzantium was former day Constantinople. It is. 66, 10. Istanbul, what Istanbul is today. It came well into Europe, and it even threatened. 66, 14. Vienna at one point. And Islam cuts across Africa and moves all into Spain. 66, 20. So that was kind of what we see, in a blotchy kind of way, in the first half. 66, 25. Of the Middle Ages. When we look at the High Middle Ages. 66, 28. We still have Byzantium and we still have Islam, but. 66, 32. What we have here is Europe coming into the fore. 66, 35. We've got that first European art style, Romanesque, which goes from 1000 to 1200. 66, 39. We've got Gothic picking it up from there until the Renaissance, and we. 66, 44. Got the Renaissance kicking in around the year 1400. At this point. 66, 49. Europe is still Eurocentric. Maps show a fuzzy understanding. 66, 53. Of where the world ends, it's just kind of scary. 66, 56. Woe to ye who sail beyond this point. 67, 00. Dragons live over there, and you've got Jerusalem in the center, okay. 67, 04. So it's a Christian centric, a Eurocentric. 67, 07. Map, with no sense of the rest of the world. 67, 10. That's gonna change. You've got an inkling now of humanism, where people are. 67, 15. Getting it together. This is the city hall in the main square, standing like an. 67, 19. Exclamation point, declaring, we can figure this out. 
6722. And that's the people in the city state of Siena in Italy. 6725. They're starting to come together that way. There's an alertness, it's still a. 6729. Church dominated world, but there's an alertness, and Europe is ready to step. 67, 33. Out of the Middle Ages and into the Renaissance. 67, 36. And that's where we're going next. 67, 38. Thank you very much. Art 2, Renaissance and Baroque 1400-1800, with Rick Steves. HTTPS slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch v equal uf 4 zhg 9 lkxk 167547 20141220 Rick Steves Travel Talks Subscribe at httpgu.gl slash l6qjus for more new travel talks Europe explodes with new ideas in religion, the Protestant Reformation, exploration, Columbus, and politics, the rise of nation-states. The happy result is some of the Western world's greatest art treasures from Michelangelo's David to Botticelli's Venus. It inspires the next generation of Baroque artists to build even grander wonders, like street. Peter's Basilica and the Palace of Versailles. Download the PDF handout for this talk, https, slash slash goo, gl slash clue 5 tr. Shop Rick's art book, https, slash slash store, ricksteves, com slash shop slash p slash t. Rick Steves 100 Favorite European Works of Art, Illustrated with Vivid, Full color photos. Planning a trip to Europe? You'll find lots of free travel information at https slash slash www.ricksteves.com slash Europe slash. This talk was filmed during the Rick Steves European Travel Festival on November 1, 2015. Any special promotions mentioned are no longer valid. 0, 0, 010 Thank you. 0, 0, 0013 Oh yeah. 0, 0, 0016 Oh, you're just all trying to get A's. 0, 0, 0019 All right. We'll all get A's. The great thing. 0, 0, 0023 about learning about history and art is 0, 0, 0024 The more you understand what you're 0, 0, 0026 Gonna see before your trip, the more fun 0, 0, 0027 You're gonna have when you travel So we 0, 0, 0029 are one third of the way through a three hour look at the story of Europe. 0, 0, 033. From the year 500 until 20th century, and now. 0, 0, 036. We're going to dedicate the next hour to. 0, 0, 039. Part 2, and that is the Renaissance and the Baroque era roughly 1400 to 1800 zero, zero, 0046 and that's just a reminder that this is all very rough dates this is very zero, zero, 0051 sweeping history it's ridiculous to try to do anything in depth when you're zero, zero, 0055 Covering 400 exciting years of history and art for our travel interest in one. 0, 0, 0059. Hour, but I just want to give you a handle on the very basics, in hopes that. 103. 
you can be inspired to perhaps drill down little deeper, and learn more. 106. About this before your trip, because I promise you, when you understand what. 110. You're looking, at it all comes to life. Your trip to the Vatican to see Raphael's. 114. Beautiful school of Athens really has meaning when you know, why did he do this? 119. Who paid for it, what was their agenda? Now when we think about the Renaissance. 123. We are celebrating this return to the wonder of classical Rome and they. 129. Classical world, the Greeks, and the Romans. For nearly 1,000 years. 133. Europeans were sitting in the dark. They knew there was something great before. 137. Them, but they're wondering, when are we? 139. Gonna come out of this cultural slumber. 141. It happened around 1400. And that's the time when you had all of this aesthetics. 146. Of the classical world, the beauty of these statues from Greece and Rome. And. 151. Now the Europeans are doing that, they are grappling with the challenges. 155. They're stepping forward, they're actually going beyond where the great. 159. Romans and Greeks went. And it all started in Florence. It started in. 204. Florence for good reason. 206. Florence was the most urban part of Europe at that time, that part of Italy. 211. It was the most advanced, with banking and trade, it was the most literate. 217. Florence was sitting Italy was sitting on the rubble of ancient Rome, and it was. 221. Painfully aware that they were great people here 1000 years ago, and. 226. We're not doing much at all, let's get our act together. 229. In Italy during this period you had no unified Italian state, you had. 233. City-states. And each of them were very proud, and people did stuff for their city. 237. And, in Florence, you had this amazing. 240. Coincidence of all sorts of great people. 243. Living in the same generation. Now when you think of this, what I like to call. 247. The class of 1500, it is quite remarkable to think what was going on at this time. 253. Not just Florence, but all over European civilization. Here is just eight guys who. 259. Probably most of them probably knew each other, or knew of each other, or were like. 304. Two degrees separated, or something like that. You've got Martin Luther. 308. Starting the Reformation. You've got Columbus and the Great Explorers. 312. Breaking out of that Eurocentric world, and establishing the fact that the world. 316. Is round, and there's a lot of people out there. You got Machiavelli who is Mr. 320. Machiavellian politics in Florence. We've got Albrecht Dürer, on the far right, he. 327. Was the first guy to a proud self-portrait. Artists are really becoming. 330. Important characters in this civilization. You've got Lorenzo the Magnificent, they. 
335. Medici family paying for great art. You've got. 339. Leonardo da Vinci, the classic Renaissance genius. 342. We've got Henry VIII who dissolved the monasteries, and sort of took the. 346. Reigns into his old hands own hands in England, and you've got Michelangelo. All. 350. These guys, the class of 1500. Think about it. 354. Albrecht Durer, look at that portrait there. 357. That self-portrait. This is one guy who's. 359. Quite impressed with himself. 401. This is a painter, he's painting himself like an elite. In the Middle Ages artists. 407. We're anonymous craftspeople, now they're becoming highly paid, they're becoming. 411. Respectable they're in the inner court of the. 415. Political leadership. This is a big change. 418. We've got Martin Luther. Martin Luther decided, enough of this other people. 423. Translating the Bible for us, it should be able to be read by the parishioners. 427. And Martin Luther risked his life to translate the Bible into the peoples. 431. Language. He wanted to give people an alternative way to get to heaven without. 435. Going through Rome. Quite radical, quite. 438. Problematic and we'll learn more about him. 441. Henry the Navigator, Vasco da Gama. 443. Magellan, Columbus, Amerigo Vespucci, all. 446. These guys, same generation, opening up. 449. The world. Then Columbus sailed to the 451. Americas, when Magellan sailed around the 454. World, when Vasco da Gama sailed around 456. Africa to get to the spice trade in India, suddenly the lock on trade between 502. Europe and all the luxuries of the East was broken. It didn't go through Venice. 507. Any more, and the powerful states emerged. 509. On the Atlantic seaboard, and now we have. 512. An expensiveness, and that really shook things up in Europe. This monument is in. 517. Lisbon which, in its day, was one of the most important cities in Europe. And when? 521. You had the new the new discoveries, and the age of discovery, and? 526. The age of colonization, you got this wealth just washing back into Europe. 532. There's so much gold leaf they can just. 534. Slather it over all the high altars. And this. 536. Would have just been harvested from the new the new world. And you've got great. 541. Architectural innovations, and great art masterpieces, and again. 547. Florence is the epicenter of all of this. When we look at this dome, this is the 552 Duomo, the Cathedral of Florence. And we gotta understand, that is really the 557 Architectural kickoff for the Renaissance.
within a 10 minute walk of 601 that dome you can see much of the great art of the renaissance that dome itself 605 symbolizes the spirit of the renaissance when the florentines built the gothic 610 church they didn't know how they were gonna finish it 613 they just knew it was not going to be another 615 gothic spire it was going to be something more 618 renaissance more roman it was going to 619 be a dome but they didn't know how to 621 make the dome yet and they scrambled and 623 they found somebody Brunelleschi who 625 could innovate this and they capped that gothic church with a renaissance dome 630 this was the biggest dome built in Europe since the year 200 when they built the 635 Pantheon 1200 years they had not been able to build a dome bigger than they 640 Pantheon and now the Florentines did it to give you an idea of how respected 644 this dome was later on when Michelangelo was hired to go to Rome and design the 649 New Street Peter's Basilica he said I can build a 651 dome bigger but not more beautiful than the dome in 654 my hometown designed by Brunelleschi the Duomo in Florence that's the dome that 7 o'clock inspired so many domes until today and today you 702 can go to the top of that dome as a visitor 705 when we look at the architecture of the Renaissance we see geometry everything 709 is balanced everything is orderly everything is 713 symmetrical squares and circles it all works out 717 they were so into the geometry that when you step into a great renaissance church 722 what they want to show off is not frilly clouds and cupids but the architectural 727 lines themselves you can see here they've actually highlighted the lines 732 by making them a different color than the rest 734 of the wall so you step in there and you think 736 these people have their act together geometrically remember throughout the 739 middle ages art was okay if it was the house of god why would you be making 744 frilly silly luxurious art if it wasn't for the glory of god the most noble art 751 form was architecture the most noble building was the church paintings 755 statues windows tapestries were okay because they decorated the house of god 801 statues were in the niches of churches and you can psychoanalyze this as europe 807 is stepping away from the church 810 this is the humanism that is sweeping through europe starting with the 814 Florentines here we have a church in Florence and this is more gothic and 819 
These are buried deep in the church. A22. This is a niche in the church. In the same church you have another niche. A27. Made later on, and here we see street. George, who is alert. He's reaching out of the. A32. Church, he's still there, he's only legitimate because he's in the church. A35. But boy he is ready to leap. He is ready to jump. And you can look at his face, you. A41. Can look at his alertness, you can look at the way his toes are grabbing the edge. A46. And then you have David by Donatello. David. This is the first male nude to be. A54. Sculpted in Europe in a thousand years. A56. This would have been disgusting a generation earlier, and now we are. 9 o'clock. Celebrating a classical nude, a Greek classical nude. 9.05. David. It's a, it's a, it's a male nude, but it is a Bible story. David is still. 9.11. Toying with the head of Goliath at his feet, so it's okay because it's religious. 9.15. But this is art done for a rich person to decorate his garden. That's a big. 9.22. Change. And that was an inspiration, and this is kind of the excitement of the. 9.27. Renaissance. It's dicey, it's very very dicey. Here Botticelli shows you Eve and 9.34 Venus It's the same person, isn't it? But the first one is Eve because it's still 9.40 Got to be a biblical character, and then later 9.42 On you can take Eve and say no, no, no I'm 9.45 Just kidding, it was pre-Christian. This is really cool because the pre-Christian. 9.50 Stuff is humanist, people can do it. You don't need to be humbled by the church. 9.55 You've got the three graces in an ancient Roman fresco, and you've got the three. 10.01 Graces in a Florentine Renaissance painting. The same inspiration. Now. 1007. Artists are mathematicians. Artists understand the laws of perspective. 1012. Artists are scientists, they're botanists. 1014. They gotta know what they're painting so. 1017. They can give you realism. Before, it was just symbolism. 1019. It was narrative, it was like comic book figures, now. 1023. They want to show you the real thing. And they've got it. 1027. Organized so that it has a psychological impact. Here. Leonardo actually had a 1031 Design for his last supper Now, when you look at this you don't think, oh man 1036 Isn't it amazing how the lines of perspective pull you right to Jesus, but 1042 Subconsciously, you feel those lines bringing you to the centerpiece, which 1047. Of course is Jesus. And at the same time, there's something about that room that's... 1051. Not quite right mathematically. Leonardo didn't make a mistake, he wanted to. 1056. Create an otherworldly atmosphere at that table. 1059. 
also, because this was not just any dinner. 1102. This was the Last Supper. So these are mathematical, scientific, geniuses that. 1107. Have an agenda, and this is coming through in the art. Now in order to be in. 1112. Artist, you have to have understood the mathematical laws of perspective. 1116. Giberty did the gates of the baptistry gates of paradise. 1118. And here you can see this is the pride of Florence. They had a competition to. 1122. Decorate the gate of the baptistry, and all the leading artists of the. 1126. Generations submitted there, there, their samples of what they could do. 1132. And Giberty was given the gig, and for a generation he was the superstar artist. 1136. Of Florence, and he blessed the city with these incredible panels, there's a hole. 1141. Bunch of these panels. When we look at M. 1143. We see this is a mathematician. He is really passionate about showing. 1146. Believable three-dimensional depth on a flat two-dimensional surface. This is about a. 1150. Half an inch deep, but he's pulled out all the stops to make it feel very deep. 1154. Look at, you've got arc mathematically correct architectural backdrop, you've. 1158. Got tiles in the foreground that are mathematically correct, intentionally put. 1202. There, you don't need tiles in the foreground but that gives you a sense. 1205. That it's going deep. In the center you have a foreshortened bench, in the back. 1209. There that lets you know it's deep. 1212. You've got a foreground, a middle ground, and a background this is brilliant to show. 1215. Believable three-dimensionality. In a generation before that, nobody would have. 1219. Bothered, it didn't matter, but now they are so fanatic about showing depth. 1224. Montaigne painted this Jesus taken down off the cross, this deposition. 1228. Foreshortened in an extreme way. Why would anybody do that? This is really. 1234. Tough, try to do this on a napkin next time in a restaurant, it's just really. 1237. Really tough to make it work. And Montaigne is a Renaissance artist and he. 1242. Could handle, it he took the challenge and he did it. 1245. The paintings are evolving from this flowery, mystical, dreamy, gothic style. 1251. With pointed arches, with gold leaf backgrounds, and with very unrealistic. 1256. Characters. Here we have by the way this is an enunciation, and the angel is. 1301. Telling Mary she's gonna give birth to the Messiah. And just in case you don't. 1304. Know it, actually there's a line of sight here, and there's actually writing along. 1308. The line, connecting the angel with Mary. And. 1313. You know, when you're seeing all of the. 1315. Different great paintings of this period, they. 1317. All are telling a story, you always gotta remember who paid for this and. 
1320. What's the agenda here? Here we've got a high gothic painting, and we can see too. 1325. Things happening at the same time. On the left, you can see Adam and Eve getting. 1328. Kicked out of the Garden of Eden, and on the right you can see the Holy Spirit. 1332. Coming down, along with the angel, to tell Mary she's got, all of a sudden, a lot of. 1337. Importance coming down the road in her life, she's going to have to give birth. 1341. To baby Jesus. When we look at the portico there, it's not a believable. 1346. Space. It's not important that it's mathematically correct, it's just wacky. 1351. From an arithmetic point of view, but that's good enough. We see the columns and we. 1354. See the roof, that's all they needed to do. If we look at Mary more carefully, we. 1358. Can understand that the artist has no interest in the anatomical correctness. 1402. Of her hands. 1404. I mean look at those hands, it's like somebody's wearing two left-handed. 1406. Rubber gloves, you know, when you have to wash dishes. 1409. It's just not right. But that's okay, there's five fingers there, those are. 1412. Human hands, and that's good enough. 1414. The art is evolving. This on the left is a very early Gothic painting, and. 1420. We see some attempt at depth. We can see Mary's foot stepping over the tabernacle. 1426. We can see the whole altarpiece there, trying to have substance, but we see they. 1431. Angels are just stacked on top of each other totem pole style. On the right we. 1435. See a painting by Giotto, a more modern painter, and here Mary has more. 1440. Believable depth. The architecture of her throne is more believable, and we can see. 1446. The angles are not stacked on top of each other like totem poles, but they get. 1450. Smaller as they get farther away, as would be reality. 1455. So artists now are trying to do this. 1456. Giotto is considered the first modern painter. In this fresco we see a scene. 1501. From Giotto which is a vignette. It's cute, there's an animal, there's depth, there's. 1505. Rocks, there's an angel, it's a, a real scene. There's actually a blue sky. 1510. Instead of a gold leaf sky, they're moving away from that gold leaf stuff. Remember. 1515. Who paid for it and why? This is a powerful crucifix done by Grunewald in. 1520. All sauce in France. And this was paid for by a hospital where people were. 1526. Dying gruesome deaths from skin diseases. That was a common way to die in. 1530. The Middle Ages, you had a skin disease and you just rotted to death. It was a. 1533. Horrible thing. And people would go to these hospice places, and they would just. 1537. Wait until they died. 
and they didn't have any painkiller, all they had was. 1541. Their faith and their belief that Jesus suffered, Jesus came to earth to suffer. 1545. And to be able to empathize with us, he knows what you're going through. 1548. Have faith, you'll get through this, and... 1550. Ultimately be in heaven where everything's okay. 1552. So from a medieval frame of mind you look at this Jesus, Jesus actually has a... 1556. Skin disease himself here, to be more empathetic with the people in this. 16 o'clock. Hospital. We can see the death of Jesus. I mean, it's pulling the crossbar down. His. 1606. Elbows are pulled out of their sockets, his fingers are stiff in death, his feet. 1611. Are mashed by a bad job of hammering in the nail. This is really gripping, this is. 1616. A powerful altarpiece designed for people who are in great suffering, that. 1620. Need to know their Savior suffered also. He's with you, you'll get through this. 1625. This is powerful medieval art, and it's important to know who paid for it and. 1629. Why? When we look at the art in the great churches in Florence, we can see the work. 1634 Of the Florentine masters, this is by Masaccio. And Masaccio was hired here too. 1638 Paint a chapel into a sanctuary, and look at the architectural depth there. It's 1644 just painted flat on the wall, but in a sense, you've got a whole new room in. 1647. That church, it is so believable. And look at the pyramid of that the design there. 1652. That is designed for stability. 1655. You've got a pyramid of people, it's all symmetrical, it's balanced, it's... 1658 Mathematically correct, classic renaissance by Masaccio. One of the great. 1703 Names of the Florentine Renaissance is Botticelli. I'm a sucker for. 1708 Botticelli, I just love his work. And he is so excited about this opportunity to. 1713. Be more classical Greek, and classical Roman, and be free to paint from before. 1719. The advent of Christianity in Europe, when they really had that humanism going. 1723. On. And here we have the birth of Venus, commonly called Venus on the half shell. 1726. And you'll see that in the Uffizi Gallery, in one room right next to the birth of. 1731. Spring or the painting called Spring. And there's a whole room in the Uffizi Gallery. 1737. Filled with Botticelli masterpieces, and if you like. 1740. Botticelli. If you like Florentine art, the Uffizi Gallery is the best. 1743 Collection of paintings anywhere in Europe The Three Big Names 1748 Of the Renaissance, Leonardo, Michelangelo, and Raphael Leonardo is 1755 Your classic Renaissance genius this is a self-portrait of Leonardo. And when you... 18 o'clock.
think about Leonardo's genius, it is broad. And that's kind of what a 1805 Renaissance man is, he's not just a poet. 1808 He's not just a philosopher, he's not just an engineer. 1812 He's all these things. If Leonardo was going to write his epitaph, it would. 1817 Probably read something like this, Here lies Leonardo, a great poet, philosopher. 1821 Engineer, man of letters, architect, sculptor, and I could paint pretty well. 1830 Also I mean he just did it all, that's what you did. Michelangelo designed. 1835 Scaffolding to go to the top of the Sistine Chapel. Nobody d ever done this. 1838 They said said it couldn't be done. 1839 He did it. Michelangelo built a road to get up to the best marble, in Carrara. 1844 Nobody else could do it. Michelangelo designed the road. 1846 Florence was under attack, the city of Florence hired Michelangelo to design. 1850 Their fortifications Michelangelo did his sculpture, the Pieta, and David. 1853 And the Pope wanted him to paint, so he went. 1856 down to Rome and he did the Sistine Chapel. 1858 I mean, it's amazing. Oh yeah, you're not dead yet. 19 o'clock Why don't you design the dome, so he did the dome of street. Peters 1902 He did it all. These guys were amazing. 1907 now when you think about Leonardo, you're thinking of his Mona Lisa, his most famous. 1913 Painting, you'll see that in the Louvre. Here we have visually sort of the 1917 Quintessence of the Renaissance Stable, squat Her hands are there to give a base. 1924 She's a triangle. She's even tilted back a little bit so she doesn't wobble. She. 1928. Is a model of composure, she's subtle, and you've got this mysterious background. 1934. You've got this background. Leonardo didn't want to be so simplistic to have. 1938. A tree-lined road going to a vanishing point, Leonardo took it one step further. 1942 In the way he showed depth. He wanted to show depth, he wanted to be this realism. 1946 He did it by analyzing what happens to. 1948 Color as it gets farther away from your eye. 1950 It sort of mellows out as it gets further, you know, when you look at a 1954 Zoom lens kind of painting or a zoom lens 1956 Shot, you can see the color changes, it's muted in the distance 20 o'clock Leonardo's dreamy landscapes show depth that 2002 Way in a classic sort of Leonardo trick 2005 Leonardo was very cerebral about his art Everything was organized I mean here we 2010 Have a painting by Leonardo, and he would have had it all figured out this 2014 Way
When we look at it we don't see that, but you can see the circle created by 2018 The semicircular top If you dropped it down, it would fit in the box of the rest 2022 Of the painting perfectly If you look at everybody's gaze, everybody in that 2027 Painting is looking at the same point underlined by a finger so that gives a 2031 cohesiveness there and when you look at that painting you're oblivious to it 2035 but the point is the renaissance master knew about that he intended that and he 2040 made it happen here we have another Madonna and child, we see that pyramid, we 2046 See symmetry, two columns on both sides, always symmetrical, and we see 2050 Leonardo's dreamy landscape Leonardo did the Last Supper Now when a genius like 2057 Leonardo is hired to do the Last Supper, he doesn't just do the Last Supper. It's 2101. Not just 12 guys having dinner with Jesus. It is some sort of agenda for the 2109. Patron. What do you want to show? And the man who paid for this wanted to show the 2113. Exciting moment when Jesus said, one of you will betray me, and everybody got 2119 Excited and said, Lord is it I It's that Lord is it I, moment that Leonardo 2124 Is capturing here When you know that, as the visitor, then you look at this 2128 Differently, and you can see the energy, and the excitement, and the mastery of 2132 Realism that Leonardo gets across 2134 Of course, Leonardo was a very experimental kind of guy, he didn't want 2138 To just do the slam dunk obvious, and he was innovating all the time so this is a 2142 Fresco Remember fresco is different than a painting Tith the fresco, you draw a 2148 Cartoon on the wall, you mix the pigment into the wet plaster, and you apply the 2152 Plaster to the wall within the cartoon you drew 2156 You've got to be fast, you've got to be accurate, because when it's dry 2159 You're stuck with it, and it's very durable when it's done 2203 Leonardo's Last Supper, a fresco Michelangelo's Sistine Ceiling, a fresco 2206 now Leonardo did an experimental fresco here with the Last Supper, and they 2212 Wall absorbed moisture in a way he didn't 2214 Anticipate, and today it looks pretty, pretty bad 2218 And it was looking bad pretty soon after Leonardo did that, and that's just 2221 A consequence of his adventurous spirit Michelangelo is a different kind of 2227 Artist Michelangelo was the first crazed artist He was just so into it, and he 2232 Would pick his favorite marble, and for him it was all about realism you didn't. 2236. 
want to show that paper mache medieval pieta with a dead Jesus looking like. 2240. It's not even a real body, you have to have a real body, and a dead body. Again. 2246. What's the purpose of this? You're not just doing a pieta, there's Mary and Jesus. 2250. Jesus died for our sins. 2253. This is a dead Christ, he's been killed. He'll rise again and everything will be. 2258. All right, but right now Mary is sitting with the body of her dead son, who's just been. 2303. Crucified, on her lap. That's got to get across by showing that this is a 2307 Believable body And we've got Mary looking younger than she should be 2311 Because that's the eternal youth of the Virgin, you've got Jesus with his 2315 Beautiful body, his believable body Obviously Michelangelo has dissected. 2320 Because he knows what's under the skin. It was dangerous to dissect back then, it. 2324 Wasn't allowed. People artists did it on the sly. And if Michelangelo saw. 2328 Another hotshot artists from another town who was supposed to be really good. 2331 Take one look at of art at his art, and he'd say, you've dissected haven't you? 2335 I know you've dissected because you got that body right. Here we see Jesus, his. 2339 Dead body on Mary and you've got a stone body, you want it to be flesh. 2344 How do you make the flesh more fleshy when it's? 2347 Really stone? Contrast Contrast is really important. 2351 How do you make a group really happy with a wonderful 2354 Hotel Give M a lousy one just before it 2357 Contrast, OK Now when it comes to art, you've got 2401 This intentionally coarse robe of Mary, don't you? 2405 Accentuating the beautiful fleshy body of Jesus. The 2409. Deadweight, you see Mary's hand under Jesus' arm. 2413. You see the weight of his body, actually her fingers. 2416. Are pushing into his rib cage because he's so heavy. 24. 19. This is so powerful, and to stand there in street. Peter's Basilica and look into. 24, 24. The eyes of Mary holding the crucified Christ as a Catholic, understanding they. 24, 31. Importance of Mary in the Catholic faith. 24, 34. It's magnificent, it's powerful. And it's our challenge to understand and accept. 24, 39 The context of this art. What's it all about? 24, 43 Why was this such a big deal? Why is it in the most important church in? 24, 46 Christendom because Jesus is gone Mary's holding the body, and Mary is our 24, 51 Intercessor, Mary's gonna take care of us 
24, 55. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. A few years later, Michelangelo sculpted David. 25, 00. zero. Now when we think about David, when we think about Michelangelo and we think 2504 About Leonardo, these are two great Renaissance artists, but two quite 2507 Different artists Leonardo thought the most noble thing is to paint Leonardo 2511 would paint, and he would create from nothing, I mean it's quite impressive, he. 25, 16. Was quite a popular dandy, a legend in his own time, very well paid, and he would. 25, 20. Paint, and then at 6 o'clock he'd wash up and go to some fancy gathering at the. 25, 23. Medici's house, you know. Michelangelo, on the 25, 26. Other side, he said no, Leonardo you got it all wrong. 25, 28. We are not divine ourselves, we don't create, it is most noble for us to. 25, 33. Be a servant of God. We will reveal the beauty God put into the stone, that's why. 25, 37 I would rather sculpt than to paint. 25, 40 I want to reveal God's beauty. And Michelangelo would get passionate with a 25, 44 Piece of marble He'd chip away at it like mad. When he was inspired he would even. 25, 48. Have a little beanie with a candle on his head so he could chip away at night. 25, 51. He was the first crazed artist. And when you look at, for instance, the Pieta, I. 25, 55. Mean think of a it sounds a little bit like. Yeah, man, really, but think of a 26, 00, 25 year old you know, and give him a chisel and a piece of marble and say 26, 03. Reveal. Michelangelo must have been 26, 05. Inspired because he was passionate about 26, 08 Knowing the Pieta was inside of that marble. 26, 10 And I'm going to chip away the excess and show it. 26, 14 I'm going to take that big hunk of marble, and I know there's a beautiful. 26, 17 David inside, and I'm gonna reveal it. When we look at David, I think we're 26, 23. Looking at the visual embodiment of the Renaissance. I love thinking about David. 26, 28. It was paid for by Florence to be the symbol of Florence, as it was struggling. 26, 32. Against its bully city-state neighbors. And what's the deal? 26, 36 The good mascot for Florence is David, not because David was a brute, but 26, 40 Because David was on God's side. David was a thinking individual who had faith. 26, 46 In God, and it wasn't David, the little boy that slayed the giant, it was God. 26, 51 Working through David that slayed the giant. And when you look at this statue, a eh? 26, 55 
Lot of people say that hand, that right hand is just too big, what's going on? 26, 58 With Michelangelo? He didn't mess up, that's intentional. This is the hand of 27, 02 God, and it was the hand of God that slayed the giant, and it was the hand of God. 27, 06 That made sure Florence triumphed over Bologna and Pisa and Genoa, and all those. 27, 13 Other Italian city-states When we look into the eyes of David, I believe we're 27, 18 Looking into the eyes of Renaissance man 27, 21 And for me, this is really sizing up the 27, 23 Darkness of the medieval superstitious world 27, 26 Again, this is humanism Humanism, in a Italian Renaissance sense, is not a 27, 32 Repudiation of God I think it's just an understanding that the best way to 27, 37 Glorify God is not to bow down in church all day long, but it's to recognize the 27, 42 Talents that God blesses you with, and then get out there and use them And 27, 46 That's what the Renaissance Florentines were doing They were doing this for the 27, 50 Glory of God, but they were doing it in a humanist spirit, they could tackle their 27, 54 Challenges, and they could overcome And Florence would really succeed 27, 59 This is just so exciting when you get into that, and when you get into that in 28, 02 Your travels, as you visit all of these palaces and galleries and museums, they 28, 06 Take on more meaning It's important when we're traveling and looking at things 28.09 Done in the 1400 and 1500 to realize that they were awestruck. Wonder 28.15 Struck by what happened 1500 years ago in ancient Roman times, and 28.20 2000 years ago during the Greek Golden Age and they would actually know about 28, 24 These statues from the ancient writings, but they would be lost, and they would 28, 28 Just be looking at sketches of these things, and descriptions of them, and then 28, 31 They would find them The Torso Belvedere or the Laocoon, these are 28, 36 Great statues that you'll find in the Vatican today These kind of statues were 28, 41 Uncovered during the careers of Michelangelo, Leonardo and Raphael, and 28, 45 they would run down to wherever they were excavated and sketch them, and be 28, 48 Inspired at them These are two 2000 year old inspirations, and from 28, 54 Those, look at the musculature there, the artist of the Renaissance would be 28, 58 Inspired and they would bring us their renaissance art A lot of Michelangelo's 2903 Art is unfinished, and nobody knows exactly why Very well could have been 
2907. That his patrons would die, or get sidetracked, and money would dry up, and 2911. Priorities would change, and he'd be called over here to do that, or over here to 2915. Do that. Or maybe Michelangelo the genius was just satisfied. 29, 18. He's revealing the body that was in there, he's not gonna hang around to. 29, 21. Polish it, that takes a lot of time, let's get on to something else. 29, 24. Whatever the case, you'll see a lot of unfinished works by Michelangelo. In fact, 29, 28. At the Academia in Florence they there's a whole hall. 29, 31. Of them that lead right up to David. It's sort of. 29, 34. To me like a temple of humanism, and at the high altar of humanism you've got. 29, 37. David, declaring that we're moving into the modern world, the Renaissance in. 29, 42. Florence. Michelangelo loved the musculature of the body. 29, 47. He wasn't great with women's bodies, but he loved the body. 29, 54. It's like a woman's body for Michelangelo, to me it seems like it's a. 29, 57. Man's body with coconut shells, you know, I mean it's just. 30, 00. zero. Michelangelo's favorite thing to do was to go up to the quarry pits up, in. 30, 04. Carraro where the best marble in the world was, and he would sketch the. 30, 08. Muscular, rippling bodies of those quarry workers, and he would be inspired, and he. 30, 13. Would come back and make those kinds of statues. Now when you think about seeing. 30, 18. Michelangelo's finished work, you can see. 30, 20. Almost all of it in Rome, Florence and Milano. 30, 21. There's great art by Michelangelo in Florence and well in Milan and Rome, but. 30, 29. In Florence, be sure to go to the museum of the cathedral, behind the cathedral. 30, 33. And there you'll see an underrated and just beautiful piece of work by. 30, 38. Michelangelo. This Pieta which has Nicodemus on the top. And Nicodemus has. 30, 43. The features of Michelangelo himself in his old age, and it's just a powerful. 30, 47. Self-portrait as he's looking down on what maybe is one of his last works. 30, 51. Of art. Again, think of the intent of the artists here. Jesus this is the. 30, 55. Deposition, Jesus body being taken down off the cross. Again, Jesus has been. 31, 00. Killed, Jesus has died, you can't have a resurrection without the death first, and. 31, 04. You want to emphasize the death. And look. 31, 06. At the weight of Jesus' body pulling down. 31, 09. Look at how tall Jesus is, Jesus is. 31, 11. Unrealistically tall, if he was to stand up. 31, 14. 
you've got that zigzag of his body giving you that weight coming down, and... 31, 18. That was all calculated by Michelangelo to give you the power of that particular. 31, 22. Pieta Pieta, and that is what distinguishes a Renaissance genius just. 31, 27. From another artist. Now, Michelangelo really liked to be in Florence doing. 31, 33. Statues. But when the Pope says, come to Rome and do a painting, Michelangelo. 31, 37. Really has no choice. So he goes down to Rome, and he spent years on his back. 31, 42. Doing the fresco of the Sistine Chapel, the ceiling, and... 31, 47. Much later, he's called back again to do the big wall behind the altar, the... 31, 50. Last Judgment. Two very different works of art, one done around 1510 I believe. 31, 56. And the other done around 1540, okay. 31, 59. The ceiling is humanism. It is the story of creation. It is God giving Adam the... 32, 06. Spark of life, and right from the very beginning. 32, 08. Adam is quite an impressive character. We look at Adam. 32, 12. There and we go, wow, he is made in God's image. 32, 15. This is a humanist look at creation, and that is in keeping with the Renaissance. 32, 19. Sort of aesthetic. When we think about David and I mean Adam and they. 32, 28. Stature he gets right from that moment he gets the spark of life, it just all. 32, 32. Fits in with what we're talking about. And when we look more at the different. 32, 36. Scenes on the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel, showing Genesis and the whole. 32, 40. Creation, we can psychoanalyze it further. For instance, here we have the dramatic. 32, 45. Expulsion. Adam and Eve disobeyed, they tried the apple, and now they're getting. 32, 50. Kicked out of the garden. If we look at this historically, we've seen the same. 32, 54. Theme again, and again, and again. In the Middle Ages when Adam and Eve eat they. 32, 58. Apple, they are puny worthless creatures. And it's almost like worms on they. 33, 03. Sidewalk after a rainstorm, and God comes in and just sweep them out into they. 33, 07. Wilderness and there's no more Garden of Eden for them, okay. 33, 10. That's a medieval look at it. In the early Renaissance, on the left, you see a 33, 15. Masaccio, an early Renaissance Florentine painter, and we can see the 33, 19. Weight, and the emotion, and the believable light source, and the 33, 23. Heartbreak of being kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And that's early. 33, 27. Renaissance. High Renaissance, we can look at Michelangelo's depiction of Adam and. 33, 32. Eve getting kicked out of the garden, and it's almost. 33, 
34. Like Adam saying, come on Eve, we'll go, we screwed up. 33, 36. I'm sorry, we'll be okay on our own, okay. That's that confidence of they. 33, 41. Renaissance man, even getting kicked out of the Garden of Eden, you're gonna make. 33, 45. It, you're gonna make it. Now 30 years later, it's a whole different story. 33, 50. The Reformation has happened. Rome has been sacked by the Catholic Army of. 33, 55. Spain. The Roman Catholic Church has been split. 33, 59. It's been a horrible couple of decades, and the church is coming out swinging. 34, 04. This is the Counter-Reformation. And Michelangelo is asked to paint the last. 34, 08. Judgment. And the last judgment is a scary thing, I mean here we have a. 34, 13. Vindictive Christ coming down on Judgment Day, his fist is raised. 34, 17. Mary is cowering under him. I mean, you know, normally Mary will go, can't you go? 34, 23. Easy on these people. No. Mary can't even get in a word edgewise here. 34, 27. Jesus is coming down, there's people who are going to. 34, 29. Heaven, and there are people who screwed up. And if you're. 34, 32. A Protestant, God help you, because you're kicking off. 34, 35. A miserable eternity in hell. 34, 38. Michelangelo's last great work was the Dome of Street. Peter's Basilica. 34, 45. Michelangelo took the job knowing he would never live to see it completed, and. 34, 50. He took the job on three conditions. Number one, that he would have an army of. 34, 58. Workers to get as much of it done in his lifetime as possible. 35, 02. Number two, that he would not be paid. He wanted this to be a mark of his devotion. 35, 06. To the church. And number three, that the dome would cap a Greek cross church. 35, 12. A Greek cross is like a plus sign, right, equidistant arms, as opposed to a Latin. 35, 16. Cross, was like a crucifixion cross with a long stem. Why was that such a big deal? 35, 21. Because Michelangelo is a humanist, and he wants the church to be a positive. 35, 26. Place. Man is made in God's image. A Greek cross is contained in a perfect circle. 35, 33. It's all very positive, whereas a Latin cross is more hellfire and brimstone. So. 35, 38. There's that philosophical point, and then there's also the point of if you. 35, 42. Have a glorious dome and you have a long normal west portal and nave, they. 35, 48. Portal will obliterate the grandeur of the dome, because you it comes out too. 35, 52. Far and you can hardly see the dome. And with a shorter nave, you get the glory of. 35, 
56. The Dome. This is Michelangelo's dome here. 35, 59. Looked at from a window in the Sistine Chapel or a window in the Vatican Museum. 36, 03. And you can see what a glorious design it is. Taller than a football field on end. 36, 07. The tallest dome in Europe. You can go to the top. 36, 10. For wonderful views. But when you look at it. 36, 12. From street. Peter's Square you have this big Baroque facade obliterating the view. 36, 17. When you stand just in front of the church. You don't even see the dome. And. 36, 20. That really frustrates the architect. Now the church was gonna go along with this. 36, 25. Greek cross plan until the Baroque age comes in. With the Baroque age which. 36, 30. Follows the Renaissance, everything is more theatrical and you got a cast of. 36, 32. Thousands, and you need capacity to have. 36, 34. More people in the church, so what do? 36, 36. They do. They say, well here's a fix, we'll just double the nave, who needs that? 36, 40. Greek cross we'll make a Latin cross, then twice as many people can go inside on. 36, 43. Christmas Eve for the Mass, you see. Well that's handy but it messes up. 36, 48. Michelangelo's vision for the church. Still, when you stand on the square end. 36, 52. When you climb that dome, you get a good appreciation for Michelangelo's genius. 36, 57. As an architect, as well as a painter and sculptor, a Renaissance genius. 37, 03. Raphael is the third of the big three, and Raphael is considered the synthesis of. 37, 08. The grace of Michael, the grace of Leonardo and the power of Michelangelo. 37, 12. When we look at Raphael's work it is very balanced, it is sort of uber. 37, 16. Renaissance. Again, you've got these triangles, you've got that stability. 37, 19. You've got the symmetry, even if you have five people in this holy family, you've. 37, 24. God with street. John the Baptist, you've got a tangle of bodies making a pyramid. 37, 29. You even got the clouds that are symmetrical, the clouds fall into order. 37, 32. One on either side, so everything is balanced and looking in a good. 37, 36. Renaissance way. The Pope hired Raphael to paint the library of the Pope in the 37, 43. Vatican in a celebration of Greek and Roman pre-Christian philosophers. 37, 51. This is mind-blowing, this is radical, that's what. 37, 53. People were getting locked up for and run out of town in the old days. 37, 56. And now the Pope has hired Raphael to celebrate Socrates and Plato. I mean you. 38, 02. God this is called the School of Athens. 
And what's really exciting about the 3806 School of Athens, it shows street Peter the New Street Peter's Basilica under construction 3810 Because it was happening at the same time And it has all the greatest stars 3816 Of the Greek Golden Age portrayed by the superstars of the art world of Raphael's. 38, 23. Generation, they're playing the roles. 38, 26. So when you look at Plato and Aristotle, Plato, on the left, is actually. 38, 30. Leonardo da Vinci. Raphael made sure to include Michelangelo in the school of 38, 36 Athens You got Euclid down there doing the design, and playing Euclid is 38, 43 Bramante, the engineer that did a lot to design the Dome of Street Peters And in the 38, 48 Background, just peeking around the corner from that pillar, is a 3852 Self-portrait of the artist, Raphael himself 3855 It's so exciting to look into these paintings and understand what's going on 3858 So remember, this is Europe in the 1500s and you've got big 3904 families running things you got the ottoman empire still on the scene you 3908 have no germany but you do have the holy roman empire which is a loose 3911 confederation of german states 3913 You've got no Italy but you have the Pope being a big shot politically. During 3917 This period the Pope was called the Pope King. And you've got Venice running a 3921 Trading empire that stretches all the way to Crete and beyond. When Raphael 3927 Dies in 1520, the Reformation or the Renaissance, heads up to 39, 33. Venice. Started in Florence, the Pope bought it down to Rome to do all that. 39, 38. Renovation, the big three are gone, 1520, and it emerges, or it carries on up in 39, 44. Venice, where there's just lots of money. Remember Venice is a city of fabulously. 39, 49. Rich merchants, and they have their own ethics and their own values, and they. 39, 55. Hire the best artists of the day to make them feel good about their materialistic. 40, 00. zero. Values. You got a painting like this. This is Danaea, and the Shower of Gold. 40, 05. And this is by Titian. Titian was the greatest Venetian painter. You can. 40, 10. Remember him, Titian the Venetian, cranked out about one painting a month. 40, 14. For 60 years. You're going to see a lot of Titians when you travel. And Titian. 40, 18. Was earning his living, and a very good living, by making these big shots in. 40, 22. Venice happy by painting art that made rich people feel good about their. 40, 26. Materialistic values. 
here we have a voluptuous woman reclining, no more. 40, 32. Symmetry, reclining sloppily, and sexily on a messy bed, and money. 40, 39. Gold, falling down from the heavens, just blessing this rich guy. You've got art. 40, 45. That, like this is called Venus and the organ player, showing the tension between. 40, 50. Culture and hedonism, as this merchant leers at this voluptuous woman while. 40, 55. Keeping both hands on his organ. This is just such, it's such powerful art, and it. 41, 02. Is soaked in keeping with the values of the rich. 41, 05. People that were paying for it in Venice. In the north. 41, 08. You've got the northern renaissance. Now the northern renaissance is not a. 41, 12. Renaissance in the true sense of the word. 41, 15. It is a growth out of the Gothic period funded by lots of money. It wasn't going. 41, 19. Back to the greatness of classical Rome, it was just lots of money and lots of. 41, 22. Interest in art. And here we have a bunch of merchants, a bunch of city big shots. 41, 26. In the Netherlands with the world, and open. 41, 29. Closing a deal. It's just that sort of values. 41, 32. You've got guilds, you've got lots of money, this is on the main square in. 41, 35. Belgium and you've got art that is really excited about details. 41, 40. Lots of details, tiny details. This is a descent from the cross by van der Weyden. 41, 45. Paid for by the archery guild. And look at, Jesus. 41, 48. Almost looks like a crossbow there doesn't he? 41, 51. It is so much fun to know who paid for the. 41, 53. Art and what do they have in it for them? 41, 55. There's a playful attention to detail, this is the Arnolfini wedding portrait. 42, 00. zero. Classical, Classic sort of values in the 42, 02. North, you have a rich merchant and his bride. 42, 05. All sorts of symbolism. She looks pregnant, I don't think she was pregnant. 42, 10. It was just the style to make her dress like she was pregnant to make it more. 42, 15. Likely that she would be fertile and that they would have a child, at least. 42, 17. That's what they told their parents. There's a dog at her feet symbolizing. 42, 23. Fidelity, FIDO. There's ripe fruit on the windowsill symbolizing fertility. In the 42, 30. Back there's a whisk broom hanging on the wall, maybe symbolizing what they. 42, 33. Position of the woman is after the wedding. And if you look in the very back. 42, 36. The round mirror. In the old days you didn't have the technology to make a big. 42, 40. Mirror, so you made a round mirror that bowed. 42, 42. Out and collected more images. 
if you. 42, 44. Look carefully at that you can actually see the bride and the groom from behind. 42, 48. And the artist himself painting the scene. 42, 52. It's just playful attention to detail, symbolic of that fun-loving detail you. 42, 56. Find in Northern European art during the Northern Renaissance. Art up here is sort. 43, 02. Of Foki, it doesn't have heavy-duty Christian spiritual messages, it's got. 43, 07. Folk wisdom. Here we have sort of a peasant's wedding dance, and everybody's. 43, 11. Dancing around the bagpipe. Bagpipes are symbolic of hedonism there, and they. 43, 16. Churches in the background being ignored. 43, 18. So there is a little message there, but it's kind of playful and fun. The art by. 43, 22. Masters like Peter Bruegel showed slice of life in the Netherlands. Here we have 43, 28 A hundred different games children play in the streets, or 40 different games. 43, 32 People play in the streets. And if you look 43, 33 At each one of them it's a little vignette. 43, 35 A fun little intimate look at life back then 43, 38 Centuries ago in the Netherlands This is a triptych, a three-panel altarpiece, done 43, 43 By a guy named Hieronymus Bosch This is called the Garden of Delights And here 43, 49 We have a typical preachy altarpiece On the left we have creation God creating 43, 55 Adam and Eve, a luscious garden, everything is peaceful and good In the center, we 43, 59 Have hedonism gone wild 44, 01 All of these decadent people and bubbles, in fruit pies, having all sorts of sexy. 44, 07 Things going on, chasing misguided values, and that ends up in hell on the right, and. 44, 14 That's where we got the dues you pay from all of these earthly pleasures. You. 44, 19 Can see here all of the earthly pleasures, and then when you go to the 44, 22 Third panel, you see your hellish result Here we have a self-portrait of the 44, 28 Artist Bosch, wearing your typical nightmarish hat with the bagpipe 44, 35 Symbolizing hedonism, with birds leading naked people around the brie, the artist. 44, 40. With your broken eggshell body, and tree trunk legs, crashing through dinghies on. 44, 45. A frozen sea. 44, 47. Bosch was really a trip, I'll tell you. And you can look at Bosch for hours, and you. 44, 54. Can see his great art, a lot of it in Spain, in the Prado, the greatest. 44, 59. Collection of paintings I think anywhere in Europe, because back then it was. 45, 03. Called the Spanish Netherlands, and the King. 45, 05 
of Spain ruled it and he got all the best art. 4507. Consequently, it ends up in their museum hundreds of years later. In Germany you. 45, 12. Got Albrecht Dürer. And Albrecht Dürer, this. 45, 15. Is another self-portrait of this guy, he. 45, 17. Just was quite a self-respecting dandy, and he insisted on being well known, on. 45, 22. Putting his initials on every painting so people. 45, 25. Could see it, and along with attention to detail. 45, 28. He was famous for being the first mass produced painter, because he was a. 45, 32. Master of the woodcut. And you would paint on a piece of wood, and then you. 45, 36. Would chip away all the wood that was showing, apart from the sketch that you. 45, 39. Did, and then you would dip that in the ink, and you stamp it out, and you would. 45, 44. Produce all of these paintings. And now people could afford to have an Albrecht. 45, 48. Durer in their house, because they printed up like mad. And at the bottom you have. 45, 52. A.D., Albrecht Dürer, reminding you who made this piece of. 45, 56. Art. In the same generation as Michelangelo in Florence. 45, 59. You've got Michelangelo style, Michelangelo. 46, 02. Quality, wood carvers in Germany. 46, 04. You'll see some of the very best wood carving when you go to Rothenburg in the 46, 07. Church there by Riemann Schneider, from about the year 1504. 46, 11. Now during this period, you've got all sorts of corruption in the church. 46, 17. You've got the church running around, trying to pay for all that art with the 46, 21 New Basilica at the Vatican, that was not cheap 46, 24 You got an army of people working on this thing, and you've said all of your 46, 28 Tithe collectors to the far reaches of the Roman Catholic world, saying, as soon. 46, 32. As you drop a coin in the bucket, your loved one's soul will be spring free from. 46, 37. Purgatory, selling indulgences, selling church offices, just really disgusting. 46, 43. Christians up there that didn't understand why giving money to this. 46, 46. Corrupt guy would help you get to heaven quicker. And that was causing a problem. 46, 51. And that was causing a lot of people to chafe at the bits. I want to remind you. 46, 55. During this period, the church was really really powerful. They were the 46, 59 Biggest landowner in Europe, the church officials win. 47, 01 People die, you'd will your land to the church or they. 47, 04 Monasteries, so that you would have people. 47, 06. Praying for you to get through purgatory. 47, 08. 
the only people that could thumb their noses at secular laws of all the petty. 47, 12 Little kings and dukes in Germany, were the church officials, because they had a 47, 16 Higher law from Rome 10% of all your wealth 47, 19 Would go to Rome in the form of tithes 47, 22 There were so many reasons for the petty little political leaders of Germany to 47, 26 Jump on the Reformation bandwagon 47, 28 They just needed somebody to give them permission to overthrow the power of the 47, 33 Church, take all that land keep all that money, and still be Christian 47, 37 So you could go to Rome without going through 47, 39 So you could go to heaven without going 47, 40 Through Rome And remember, during this period the abbeys and the monasteries 47, 46 And the church controlled knowledge If you've seen the movie or read the book 47, 50 Name of the Rose, you get a very vivid image of that And I was just in a 47, 55 Monastery in Prague where they had a cage above the library, called Libri 47, 59 Prohibiti, the prohibited books And these were the books that you had to get 48, 03 The key from the abbot to actually get your hands on and read And this is a 48, 07 Period when none of the Bible or the sacred writings could be translated into 48, 10 The vernacular languages so regular people could learn them, they were 48, 14 only in Latin, because that kept him away from the unwashed masses, and then they 48, 19 Priesthood would interpret that to the people And that's one that way they 48, 23 Church was keeping its grips on a knowledge, on land, on power, and it was 48, 28 just really ripe for a change 48, 30 And here comes this troublemaking monk in Germany, who is a professor in a 48, 35 Little town up in the north called Wittenberg, and he just didn't 48, 39 Understand it all 48, 40 he marched all the way as a loyal pilgrim, a faithful pilgrim, all day. 48, 46 Way down to Rome, he climbed the Scala Santa, the sacred stairs. 48, 49 On his knees, he got to the top and he just said, I still don't get it. 48, 53 I don't know what's all this you know, paying for forgiveness, and so on. 48, 58 He went back and he hammered 95 points he wanted to discuss on the door. And 49, 03 That was not allowable and he had to take refuge, and he hid out, protected by 49, 09 A German prince at that time he wrote 49, 11 He translated the Bible into German, which made things even worse for him and 49, 16 It opened up this crazy time called the Reformation Wars Europe was embroiled in 49, 21 A 100 years of fighting 
49, 23. By the end of the Reformation Wars, 1648, with the Peace of Westphalia at the end. 49, 27. Of the Thirty Years' War, they decided it was religious freedom. 49, 32. Now that wasn't religious freedom like we know it, it was every king gets to decide. 49, 36. What religion his people will be? That was religious freedom. And the line. 49, 42. Between loyal to Rome and Protestant, is remarkably close to the line between they. 49, 49. Roman Empire and Barbarian, OK. 49, 52. North of that Roman line, that's where the Protestant Church was. I find that. 49, 57. Quite thought-provoking. Now, Martin Luther could not have succeeded, guys. 50, 01. Before him got burned at the stake, but Martin Luther was along the same time as. 50, 05. Gutenberg, when you could print stuff up economically. And you could print your. 50, 10. Ideas up, and you can hand out these little brochures, and leaflets, and. 50, 13. Booklets, and everybody could get on board with you. And Martin Luther would. 50, 17. Have been burned also, had it not been for a number of things, but one of them. 50, 20. Was the Gutenberg printing press. After. 50, 23. Martin Luther opened up this kin of worms. 50, 26. Every Protestant reformer got to carve his own way to hell. 50, 31. That's what they would say. And you had Knox up in Scotland, and you had Calvin. 50, 35. And you had all sorts of reformers packing the churches out, taking Europe. 50, 39. By storm, and in a couple of years in 1517, we're going to have the 500th. 50, 45. Anniversary of the Reformation, 1517, 2017. 50, 49. That's going to be a big deal in Germany. One thing the Reformation did was also. 50, 53. Overcome the lock of the church. Henry VIII was in on this. 50, 55. He dissolved he did the dissolution of the. 50, 58. Monasteries. When you travel around England. 51, 00. zero. You'll see all these destroyed monasteries. 51, zero 03. All of them destroyed in the 1500s. 5105. When Henry VIII decided to ruin the power of the monasteries and take. 5109. The power himself, making the people Protestant Christians instead of Roman. 5113. Catholic Christians. Every time there's chaos in the church. 51, 17. You've got people whitewashing the other people's art. Just like what's. 51, 21. Going on the Muslim world today, iconoclasm. 51, 24. You see a pre-Christian Catholic church, suddenly it's a Lutheran church or a. 51, 29. Protestant Church, and everything is whitewashed. And all behind that white. 51, 33. Wash is Catholic painting. 
51, 35. This is the church in Harlem, and if you look at the column on the right, you see. 51, 38. A patch that is revealed from when it was all painted that way. And instead of. 51, 44. All sorts of glorious statues and paintings about Mary and the saints. 51, 48. Instead you got a giant pipe organ, as they. 51, 50. Focus now is more on the pulpit and on music. 51, 53. Great front and center pulpits and glorious pipe organs. Iconoclasm. All. 51, 59. Through your travels you're going to see beautiful art defaced by people who. 52, 03. Disagree with that religion. 52, 05. You see it in the ancient world, you see it in more modern times. 52, 09. Iconoclasm. It's so sad to see beautiful paintings with their faces crossed out. 52, 14. Or their noses broken off, or whatever. 52, 16. That's all part of that iconoclasm. Now they. 52, 18. Church wasn't going to take this laying down. 52, 21. They responded with the Inquisition and the Counter-Reformation. The Inquisition. 52, 26. Palace is in Spain. Spain was the powerful army, the biggest, most important. 52, 33. Defender of the Roman Catholic Church during the Reformation, and the center of. 52, 37. All that was the big palace outside of Madrid, El Escorial. El Escorial. You can. 52, 44. See that, it's the only building built in that generation in Spain, it was such a big. 52, 47. Project, and from there, a lot of the Counter-Reformation was run. 52, 51. I mentioned, in the Sistine Chapel the front painting was done by Michelangelo. 52, 57. After the Reformation, and this is that sort of judgment day. 53, 03. Counter-Reformation art. All over Catholic Europe you'll find paintings in. 53, 08. The church is showing angels coming down, grabbing the scriptures that have been. 53, 12. Translated into the local language, and then torching those scriptures. 53, 16. That's not allowed, that'll get you in big big trouble. 53, 20. Finally after all that killing, it's called the First World War in a lot of. 53, 25. Ways, because every nation was embroiled in it. 53, 27. Europe was exhausted. And it was mostly fought on German soil because Germany. 53, 31. Was fragmented, and it was just convenient to fight the battles there. A. 53, 34. Third of Germany was dead. 53, 35. It was just a horrible slaughter, and finally they just said, let's just go to. 53, 40. Church and worship whatever way they tell us. 53, 43. And if a king was Protestant that was gonna be it, and if a king was Catholic. 53, 46. That was going to be it. 
You stepped into church and you get this pro status quo. 53, 49 Art You just gaze up at the ceiling, and it opens up into heaven, and you get 53, 53 Baroque Baroque is art for the church, and Baroque is art for the divine. 53, 59 Monarchs, and Baroque is pro status quo art. Baroque follows the Renaissance. When? 54, 05 We think about Baroque, it was born in Rome. And this is the Vatican, and that's 54, 11 The arm of the Counter-Reformation Bernini was the first great artists of 54, 16 The Baroque Age and Bernini designed the Piazza San Pedro, which is the symbolic. 54, 21 Outstretched arms of the church to welcome the people into that protective. 54, 26 Circle When we go into this street, Peter's Basilica, we see the glory of that. 54, 31 Baroque spot, and we also find all over Rome, in churches, this new theatrical art. 54, 37 You've actually got angels pulling open the curtains, and people are tumbling out. 54, 42 And it's just like on stage art. And it's just over the top. 54, 46 it's emotional, a wonderful sort of change after the cerebral renaissance. 54, 50 Now we have emotional art, we have pro status quo art, we have art that just. 54, 54 Says follow the church or follow the king, and let's stop fighting. Now in. 54, 59 Order to impress upon people in the interest of the church and in the 55.03 Interest of the Divine Monarch 55.05 You gotta control nature in a beautiful way to have that energy and that 55.08 Exuberance and to control nature is to have a fountain and a fountain would be 55, 13 A very popular tool in Baroque art And you've got beautiful fountains like 55, 19 This one of the four rivers, that is on Piazza Navona, by Bernini When we think 55, 25 Of Baroque art it's gonna grab an exciting moment. Here we have three. 55, 30. Different portrayals of David slaying the giant. Early Renaissance. 55, 34. It's this wonderful, elegant study in a classical nude, Donatello. Hi. 55, 40. Renaissance. Humanism 55, 43 David is sizing up the giant, and he's gonna 55, 45 He's gonna take him with the help of God 55, 48 Baroque, now it's actually in action That stone is about to fly See in Baroque 55, 54. They're gonna capture the action. In Renaissance it's going to be composed. 55, 58. And thoughtful. 55, 59. I've got my sling, I've got the hand of God, I've got my rock. 56, 02. I've got my enemy, we're gonna do this. Baroque, it's much more action. 
5607. A perfect example of a Baroque theme would be this wonderful statue by 5611. Bernini in the Galleria Borghese in Rome, one of my favorite buildings. 5616. In all of Europe, because it's filled with masterpieces by Bernini, the father of 5619. The Baroque Movement. 5620. These statues are just breathtaking. And this one, this is Apollo chasing. 5624. Daphne. And Bernini has captured just the exciting moment in the mythological. 5629. Story when Apollo is running after Daphne. 5632. He's just about to jump on her, he's got all. 5634. Sorts of exciting ideas, he can hardly wait. 56. 36. And in at that very moment Daphne is turning. 56, 39. Into a tree. Branches are sprouting from. 56, 42. Her fingers, roots are sprouting from her toes. 56, 46. And Apollo is in for one rude surprise. 56, 50. It's that split second that Bernini is capturing here in Apollo chasing Daphne. 56, 57. And that is classic, classic Baroque. Don't miss that when you're in Rome. 57, 02. Baroque cannot stand a simple straight line. 57, 06. Baroque wants to decorate it over the top. 57, 09. Architecture would be all glittered and gussied up, you've got lots of 3D, Yule. 57, 14. Find a painting and then you'll have a stucco leg from the painting. 57, 18. Actually coming down over the cornice. You'll have in this church in Rome, and 57, 22. Actual false dome. If you sit in the right spot in the nave. 57, 26. It looks like the dome's real, but when you walk right under it, you can see it's 57, 29. Just painted on a flat roof. 57, 31. That would be just a classic Baroque sort of thing. Remember Baroque is 57, 34. Political, and Baroque is religious. 57, 37. It is the tool, the propaganda tool of the church that wants a pro-status quo, and 57, 43. It's the propaganda tool of the divine monarch who tries to con his people into 57, 48 Thinking, God said I get to rule you without any question, I am Louis XIII 57, 54 You can call me the Sun King In fact on my medallions 57, 57 The Sun the source of all life and goodness. 5800 Shines its beautiful energy onto me. And that energy bounces off me, and it warms. 5805 Up the people of France, and you are lucky I am here. I am the Sun King. 5811 This is the Divine Monarch. He raises with the sun ceremonially, and goes to sleep. 58, 16. With the sun as the sun sets, and then he comes out and plays some more. 58, 19. 
but it's just all on show, and you gotta have art that really impresses people if... 58, 24 You're going to say, God said I get a rule you without any question. If you're a... 58, 27 Divine Monarch, which was the standard, the norm, throughout the Middle Ages. 58, 32 You better have an impressive house. Louis invested half of the income of the... 58, 38 Entire country of France, the most populous and most wealthy country in... 58, 42 Europe Half of the income of the entire country of France to build his palace at 58, 46 Versailles He rerouted a river to power his fountains 58, 49 He could grow incredible gardens Louis had fountains nobody had ever seen 58, 55 Bursting all around through his gardens. He had mirrors that nobody ever seen, so. 58, 59. Many mirrors glittering up his hall of mirrors. 59, 02. So you have the light reflecting in and out. People could wander through these. 59, 06. Halls they could wander and just see his lifestyle on display in all they 59, 10 paintings, and just go, you know he really is an incredible guy we're lucky to have 59, 15 a divine monarch ruling us only our king can grow oranges in Paris 59, 22 they're on wheels he wheels M out on sunny days, and his men wheel M back into. 59, 26 The orange re when it's cloudy and cold. 59, 28 Louis can do it. All the other kings in Europe wanted to be like Louis. They. 59, 33 Would build their own palaces like Louis. 59, 35 Here's the Skonbrunn for the Habsburgs in Vienna, or you got the great. 59, 39 Royal Palace in Madrid, or you've got the Tsar's Palace in Street. Petersburg All over. 59, 44 The place you got knockoffs of Versailles, all decorated the same way. 59, 48 This is Baroque Controlled exuberance 59, 51 The art of divine monarchs, the whole notion that society is divided into the 59, 57 Haves and the have-nots, and God wants it that way 60, 01 This is so poignant 60, 03 So poignant, when we think about the struggles in our society and the things we're 60, 07 Trying to sort through, because along with all these divine monarchs came 60, 11 Finance ministers who were just as wealthy, they didn't have the divine 60, 15 power but they were just about as wealthy and when you travel around 60 18 France and you go to the chateaus of the lawyer and so on you realize a lot of these 60 22 incredible chateaus were not the king's chateaus but they were the finance 60 25 ministers chateaus the hedge fund managers 60, 27 Of the day, the guys with their hands on 60, 29 The back workings of the economy 
and this is just one finance minister's house. 60, 34 And you climb up to the top of his dome and look at his backyard, and he clearly. 60, 38 Does not know what to do with all his money. Our hedge fund managers have a 60, 42 Tough time with their money today. 60, 43 The finance ministers back then were just as obscenely wealthy. The artist you. 60, 48 Need to remember from the Baroque era, one of them is Caravaggio. Caravaggio was. 60, 54 A rough guy. He did his art with street people in Rome being his models, and he 60, 59 Gives everything a harsh three-degree third-degree interrogator's light This 61, 03 Sort of unforgiving look at the scene And here we have David with the head of 61, 08 Goliath and Goliath is actually the head of the artist. 61, 12 Caravaggio, with the mark of the stone right there between the eyes. 61, 17 This is that kind of Baroque energetic emotional sort of art that is so. 61, 21 Exciting When you look at Caravaggio's scenes, their sacred scenes portrayed in 61, 26 Everyday see me, seedy, street life terms in they 61, 30 Streets of Rome, giving it a special impact 61, 33 Look for the work of Caravaggio When you go to Spain you'll find they 61, 36. Work of Velázquez. Velázquez's was the court painter. This is a self-portrait. 61, 41. Here when he's doing Los Maninas. And here's one of the most famous end. 61, 45. Beloved pieces of art that you'll find anywhere. And we see the artist with his. 61, 49. Canvas painting the royal couple, but this is the scene the royal couple would. 61, 54. Look at while they're posing. And if you look in the very back of the room you. 61, 57. Can see a mirror that shows the reflection of the king and queen is. 62, 00. zero. They're posing for Velázquez, with all the kids of the court gathered to see. 62, 03. What's going on? And when we look at this, we can almost step into the 62, 07. Three dimensional, and there in the background you see the mirror reflecting. 62, 11. The king and the queen posing for this painting. 62, 13 What a delightful sort of mix, and 62, 15 Is so realistic you can almost walk into it. And now when we look closely at the 62, 19 Brushwork We can see these artists have done reality, you know. Raphael could do 62, 24. Reality, now the artists are going to be a little more slapdash with the 62, 27. Brushwork to give you a little more energy. 62, 29. Without bogging down on that photo detail. 62, 32. Remember, a painter like Velázquez, his primary job, his bread and butter, is 62, 36.
painting for the royal court. 62, 38. The royal family. So when the king wants his son painted on a horse. 62, 42. You're going to paint him looking really good on a horse. This is a portrait of. 62, 45. The prince in a way that the king would have liked, and that's what Velasquez. 62, 49. Was all about. But Velasquez had energy to do people on the street, and he had. 62, 53. Some great slice of life art that you will see when you go to the Prado Inn. 62, 57. Madrid. Now in the north, in Belgium. 63, 00. zero. You've got Rubens. And Rubens is one of the most prolific painters you'll find. 63, 07. You can go to his studio in Antwerp and see where he had this just big room. 63, 11. Where he would crank out Rubens would paint what they called the cartoon end. 63, 15. Then his students would make the big version, and then Rubens would come in. 63, 18. And give what they called the fury of the brush and then they would ship it. 63, 21. Out to some aristocrat, or some nobleman, or. 63, 24. Some bishop's house palace, you see. And. 63, 26. This was that sort of system of Baroque, cranking out masterpieces. To me, this. 63, 31. Picture by Rubens characterizes the energy of the Baroque art. Now if you. 63, 38. Compare that to Mona Lisa, you can see Renaissance composure, and balance, and. 63, 43. Thoughtfulness, and Baroque theatrical exuberance, jump off the stage exuberance. 63, 49. That's what these artists needed to do to keep their patrons happy. 63, 52. You remember they are done to make their patrons feel good, and well-fed women. 63, 58. With light complexions were considered elegant and high class, and they were. 64, 03. Painted beautifully. And you have these Rubenesque women that show up in. 64, 06. Paintings from this period. Remember this is. 64, 10. Art for the kings and for the church, 4. 64, 13. The Pope. When you go north now, in the post-Reformation Europe, you have 64, 18. The Netherlands, for instance, which is actually a Republic Protestant state. 64, 23. No king and no pope, no bishops, no nobles. 64, 27. You've got You've got merchants and big shots in. 64, 31. The city, and this is a trauma for painters, because you don't have your. 64, 35. Traditional patrons. 64, 38. They have to scramble now, and who are they going to paint for? They're going to. 64, 41. Paint for the Rotary Club. 64, 43. They're going to paint for the mayor, there. 64, 45. Going to paint for the rich businessmen. 64, 46. 
they're going to paint for middle class people with small no name paintings. You. 64, 51. Go to a art gallery in the Netherlands and you see a lot of little paintings by. 64, 54. Names you don't recognize, and you want to go, where's your big guns? 64, 58. This is a new market, and it was a. 65, 00. zero. Affordable market for merchants in the city. 65, zero 02. We needed small, affordable, unpreachy art, and that's what you get when. 65, zero 07. You don't have the Pope and you don't have the King to do it. Now the famous. 65, 10. Artists would do well. They would earn their bread and butter by painting big. 65, 15. Shots portraits. This would be a beautiful painting of a rich merchant. 65, 18. Who really loves his wife. 65, 21. Everything is there. His devotion, the big ring on her finger, he's put his hand. 65, 28. Over his heart, she's got this wonderful ruff, it's just a gorgeous. 65, 32. Portrait of a man and his wife. You wouldn't have some saint or some king. 65, 38. Overlooking your dinner table, no way. You're going. 65, 40. To have art that just makes you feel good about your. 65, 43. Values and your hard work. You're gonna have still lives. 65, 45. Still lives are a beautiful beautiful genre in the Netherlands. 65, 50. Again, Protestant, no king art. 65, 53. Still lives that just remind anybody that comes to dinner. 65, 57. This man has some very good pewter. 66, 01. This man knows how to feed his family well. This is a beautiful household, hard. 66, 08. Work, that Protestant work ethic shows around here. You've got themes that are. 66, 13. Folk wisdom. Not sort of big preachy stuff, but folk wisdom. 66, 18. One of my favorite artists in the genre is January. 66, 21. Stain. This painting would be the danger of luxury. 66, 25. How affluence will rot out your values. And here we got filthy rich people who's 66, 31. Lives are falling apart. 66, 32. Another painting might be, I don't know exactly the name of this, but it's 66, 35. Something like parents be aware, your children are modeling their lives after 66, 40. How you live your life. 66, 41. And here we have people that are very hedonistic, and the kids are there. 66, 44. Paying attention. In the window you can see a little boy learning how to smoke. 66, 48. And in the foreground you see two little girls learning how to drink, and they're 66, 52. Just going down the same messed up road, and the parents better wake up. 66, 56. 
That would be your preachy January stain Dutch kind of art. One of the most. 67, 00. Exquisite painters of this period is Vermeer. 67, 04. There's only a handful of Vermeers in captivity, you'll see four of them in the. 67, 08. Rijkaseum in Amsterdam. But Vermeer is beautiful. 67, 11. Just sumptuous, exquisite, intimate art. A milkmaid. 67, 16. Nothing fancy, just a humble milkmaid in a quiet moment. 67, 20. You can almost hear the milk pouring into the bowl. Beautiful art, you'll see. 67, 24. That when you're in the Netherlands. 67, 26. Rembrandt earned his money that's a self-portrait of a young Rembrandt painting. 67, 30. Patrons, this man and his wife. 67, 34. This is called the Jewish Bride, and we have all of those details that would. 67, 38. Make the patron very thankful for this beautiful art masterpiece. 67, 42. This would be the Draper's Guild, and this is how the painters, like Franz Halls. 67, 46. And Rembrandt, would earn their keep. 67, 48. They would paint the big shots, all painted equally because they all paid. 67, 52. Equally, but you still want to have a believable scene, somebody just walked in. 67, 56. And went, hey you guys look over here. 67, 58. And everybody's caught in a candid way. It. 68, 00. Looks convivial but it also looks equal. Now the standard Secretine type. 68, 06. Equality in the paintings was sort of the. 68, 08. Bread and butter, or the standard portraits. 68, 10. Rembrandt was a bigger creative spirit than that. 68, 13. And he did the night watch. And when you look at the night watch you've got a. 68, 16. Group portrait, but this group portrait is not, you know, short guys in front. 68, 21. It's not everybody equally lit and equally portrayed, how well they are. 68, 25. Portrait is dictated by the scene, the composition that Rembrandt has in mind. 68, 30. And not everybody here was happy with the way they were portrayed, it just. 68, 34. Wasn't equal. Now I don't know if it's too simplistic to say that it meant he. 68, 37. Didn't get much work in his later years, but the fact is, Rembrandt was more. 68, 41. Creative than what was good for his career as a portrait artist, and they. 68, 45. Consequence was he spent his last years pretty much in a, you know, in a 68-51 Desolate sort of run-down, depressing sort of situation Didn't have any work 68-56 This is a self-portrait of a I've seen it all sort of Rembrandt overlooking the 69-00 Ruins of what was a very successful career. And he spent his last years. 69, 04. 
painting for himself, basically. And that freed up his beautiful creative spirit. 69, 10 And we get a lot of Rembrandt's masterpieces that are really not done. 69, 13 For the taste of his rich patrons. 69, 15 But just done for the love of Rembrandt's style of art. Here we have 69, 20 Jeremiah lamenting the destruction of 69, 21 Israel Jerusalem, a very powerful psychological 69, 24 Portrait Here we have Peter denying that he knows who Jesus is 69, 30 Talk about a powerful psychological thing Peter, Jesus his right hand man 69, 34 Saying, I don't know him, as the Roman soldiers quiz him 69, 39 And here we have Peter confronted by the Romans, and in the background you can see 69, 42 Jesus looking over shoulder, realizing what's going on Beautiful piece of art, eh? 69, 47 Masterpiece by Rembrandt 69, 50 Now the Baroque movement gets into a frilly extreme, as art movements do, and 69, 56 Baroque over the top is Rococo Delightful irresponsibility 70, 02 Giddy, intentionally tripping, unbalanced 70, 06 Giggling, flirting, Rococo And Rococo is, you know 70, 10 Pink cheeks everywhere 70, 13 It's the let them eat cake art You know, when Marie Antoinette was out in her 70, 19 Little peasant Hamlet telling the peasants, just make do. 70, 22 She was in this Rococo world. And that was sort of the last straw in so many. 70, 27 Ways for the old regime. 70, 30 So here at the dawn of the French Revolution, we see the end of the Baroque. 70, 35 Era. We still have Europe run by big families, the Habsburgs, and they. 70, 40. Hohenzollerns, and the Romanovs, and they. 70, 43. Bourbons, and we have no Germany, and we have. 70, 46. No Italy, and we have things that are going to. 70, 49. Start to kick into gear into the modern age. 70, 52. We have this pro status quo elite society, but at the same time we have the 70, 57. Next generation, and talk about a generation gap. 71, 00. zero. What's just around the corner is the people rising up as the city folk are. 71, 05 Going to just bust into that feudal pie, and do some violent readjustment. 71, 10 That's the age of revolution, and it took a revolution to cut off the head of the 71, 15 King and that whole old regime notion, that some people are born to be rulers. 71, 20 And the rest of us are born to be ruled. And this shot is just a reminder that 71, 25 Museums can be exhausting. And when you go to the museum 71, 30 
We hope we can help you out, we've worked very hard to bring you material to help. 71, 34 You enjoy the museum while you're still alive and well, okay? I know I'm good for. 71, 38 About two hours in a museum, and we've worked very hard. This is called the 71, 42 Victim of the Louvre, at the longest gallery in Europe. 71, 45 We've worked very hard to make the art. 71, 47 Fun and meaningful, and that is an R. 71, 49 Book Europe 101 This book I wrote after with the beautiful help of my friend. 71, 55 Jean Openshaw, and it's written after 25 years of tour guiding, developing a sense. 72, 00, 00. Of what people need to know, and also what they don't need to know. We know how. 72, 00, 03 To make the art come to life. 72, 00, 05 We've got 100 people working at Europe the back door, we've got 72, 08 Guidebooks for every country in Europe 72, 10 These come with a passion for art and history, and we have an app now that 72, 14 Gives you self-guided tours to your 20 greatest 72, 18. Historic Walks, and its 20 Greatest Museums. 72, 21. This is a chance for you to take the tours that we give our tours, but you. 72, 25. Don't need to take the tour. You can download the app, it's absolutely free. 72, 28 and have me being able to narrate for you. 72, 32 Whatever visit you want to check out. 72, 34 These are just they I'm just so excited about how these can help people enjoy. 72, 38 All the art we've been sharing today. So I hope in your upcoming trip. 72, 42. You can use the Rick Steves Audio Europe app. I want to remind you that they. 72, 46. Biggest part of our business these days is our tour program. 72, 49. Each year we take 15,000 or 18,000 people on about 700. 72, 52. Different tours around Europe. We have 35 different itineraries, and each of these. 72, 57. Itineraries is designed to give you maximum travel thrills for every mile. 73, 01. Minute, and dollar in your upcoming trip. That's what we're all about. 73, 05. At Europe through the back door, and a fundamental part of that is making the 7308 History, and making the art come to life. We can sit with you on the rubble of 7312 Rome, as I was doing back when I was a college kid with our first groups, and we 7316 can make it make sense. 73, 18 We can bring you into the Vatican, and we can explain how that Laocoon inspired. 73, 22 The artists of the Renaissance, and we can bring you into the greatest galleries of. 73, 25 Europe and make that art come to life. 73, 28. 
I hope that we can be a part of your travels that way. I want to remind you. 73, 31. We've got a lot of art covered in our TV shows. We've produced well over 100. 73, 35. Shows, you can watch them for free anytime at ricksteves.com. 73, 39. If you're visiting any destination in Europe, certainly you can find the TV. 73, 44. Episode on that place, and in there will take you into the museums, take you. 73, 48. Into the palaces, and do our best to explain it to you. 73, 51. You can travel with us on Facebook if you just get on board at Rick Steves on. 73, 54. Facebook, we'd love to have you along. 73, 56. This is my personal joy. I've got about a quarter of a million people now that. 73, 59. Follow me as I get to share an intimate. 7402 Candid behind the scenes look at our work 7404 That's ongoing at Facebook and at our website at ricksteves.com 7408 There's a world of travel information there 7411 To help make your travels more meaningful 74, 13. So this was Renaissance and Baroque, that's part 2, and we are, after this. 74, 19. Ready to step into the modern world. Thank you very much, and happy travels. 74, 28. Thank you, thank you very much. Art 3 Modern 1800-2000, with Rick Steves, YouTube, HTM 20141220. HTTPS, slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch, V equals CW underscore 2 versus underscore OMW. Rick Steves Travel Talks. Art 3, Modern 1800-2000 with Rick Steves HTTPS slash slash www.youtube.com slash watch V equals CW underscore 2 versus underscore OMW 39577 20141220 Rick Steves Travel Talks Subscribe at httpgu.gl slash l6qjus for more new travel talks. When France erupts in revolution, the modern world is born. Art styles follow the march of history, neoclassical artists celebrate democracy while passionate romantics champion the individual. The 20th century brings two world wars, ideological turmoil, and equally wild art. Finally, Rick brings you right up to date with the birth of the European Union and the vibrant world of Europe today. Download the PDF handout for this talk, https, slash slash gu, gl slash clue 5 tr. Shop Rick's art book, https, Slash slash store Rick Steves com slash shop slash p slash t Rick Steves 100 favorite European works of art, illustrated with vivid, full color photos. Planning a trip to Europe? You'll find lots of free travel information at https slash slash www Rick Steves com slash Europe slash this talk was filmed during the Rick Steves European Travel Festival on November 1, 2015. Any special promotions mentioned are no longer valid. 0007 Hello 0013
Thank you. 0, 0, 16. Oh, very good, you are ready for the revolution. 0, 0, 20. Okay, okay, you all get A's, that's good. 0, 0, 25. Thank you so much for joining us, we are. 0, 0, 27. Ripping through European history and art for travelers. 0, 0, 29. This is the third hour of a three-part series. 0, 0, 33. We've gone from the Middle Ages, through the Gothic Age. 0, 0, 36. That was 900 years in an hour, and then we went from 1400 to 1800. 0, 0, 42. That was the Renaissance and the Baroque Age in an hour. 0, 0, 45. And now we're kicking off the tumultuous last two centuries of. 0, 0, 50. European history and art for our travel needs. It is so important when we travel. 0, 0, 54. To understand what we're looking at, and boy, in the last 200 years in Europe. 0, 0, 58. There's been lots going on. So thank you very much for joining us. 102. And right now we're gonna take about an hour to go from the French Revolution. 106. The late 1700s up until our generation. And I want to remind you once. 112. Again, of the ridiculousness of covering this much ground in 60 minutes, so I'm. 117. Going to be sweeping over things, I'm going to make gross generalizations. 121. I'm going to rough up and ballpark things, but what I want to do fundamentally is 125. Give you a handle on the most important aspects of European culture, so that when 131. You travel you can check them out. All the details are in our guidebook. 135. Europe 101, History and Art for Travelers. 137. And right now we're going to talk about how Europe made this. 141. Very, very complicated and painful change from the Middle Ages. 146. Into the modern world. From the age of the. 149. Divine monarch into the age when people are. 153. Liberty, equality, and fraternity, this notion that we are our own masters. 159. That was quite a change, and it took a big revolution. 202. These two paintings kind of sum it up, you've got this notion of divine. 207. Monarchs, and you've got Napoleon on a horse. 210. Taking the ideals of the revolution into a viable future. 2.15 We've got a huge generation gap when we think of the people of the 2.21 Divine Monarch Age and the Baroque Age, and their children in this new age of 2.27 Reason, the Enlightenment, where everything 2.30 is subjected to the test of reason. 232. When we think about the revolution, we're talking about a society that really was. 237. Stepping into a brave new future and challenging this guy, Louis XVI. 243. Louis XIV, the King of France, was the embodiment of the old regime notion that 249. Some people are born to be rulers and the rest. 252. 
of us just need to follow the rules, okay. 255. This was sort of the huge gap between rich and poor that Europe put up with. 259. And the elites, and the royalty, and the people that supported them, were able to. 306. Pull this off using art as propaganda, having the church on their side, and. 311. Keeping people unable to get their hands on information. 315. It was a very impressive lock on power, and it took a lot to tear it down. When? 320. You have that divine monarch you have to impress upon your people that God really. 325. Is ordaining you to rule without question, and you can't do that without a. 330. Fancy house. And Louis had the ultimate palace in Europe, Versailles. 334. This was sort of the textbook example of a Baroque king, a divine monarch kings. 340. House, and other kings emulated him. Now as this elite society got more and more. 346. Fabulously powerful and rich, they retreated more and more from reality. And 352. As you get this divide between fewer and fewer people getting richer and 357. Richer and more and more people getting poorer and 359. Poorer, you're going to get rumblings in the street. 402. The kings didn't even want to hang out at Versailles, that was where all of. 405. There, you know, elites would party. They moved into the park, into the garden, and. 410. Marie Antoinette, you know, and Louis would go further and further away, until. 415. The palace retreat of the palace retreat of the palace retreat was buried deep. 420. Into their fantasy land, and that was Marie Antoinette's Petit Hameau. 424. The Little Hamlet. Where the queen would tend her perfumed sheep and her manicured. 429. Gardens, and her people would tell her everything's okay. 432. They'd tell her, the people are hungry in Paris, she'd say, let them eat cake. 437. Let them eat cake didn't mean I was always. 439. Confused by that didn't mean like a piece of cake. 442. It meant the throwaway stuff, the crust in the bakery. When they're. 447. Eating that when they've eaten that if they're still hungry, then let. 450. M come to me to help M out. 452. It was that disdain for the people that was just too much. And in the streets of. 456. Paris they rumbled, and they gathered, and they charged on to Versailles and they. 502. Literally took the king and queen under house arrest into the city, and. 506. Eventually cut off their heads. 508. This was the physical, sort of symbolic ending of the old regime, and that was. 514. The Great Revolution, the Liberal Revolution. 516. The French Revolution, 1789, around there. 520. When you think of the revolution, I want to review the different elements of the 524 pie and how re-slicing the pie leads to this violent revolution throughout the 529 feudal ages you've got three parts in the pie and to me there's a fixed pie tin 
5.33 All that stuff in there has to be divided up with the people. How you? 5.38 Do that, shape society, and when you re-slice. 5.41 The pie, that is what causes history. 5.43 And not much happened, relatively speaking. 5.45 in lots of the Middle Ages, because 547 Everybody was stuck with, or satisfied with, their slice of the pie 551 You had three slices, the nobility and the landowners, you had the clergy and 557 The church that controlled the religious power and the intellectual power, and you 602. Had everybody else who were the peasantry, the landless peasants. When they. 605. City folk came along, they put them into that third estate. And that's what. 609. Caused the ruckus, because now the third estate was more than just a bunch of. 613. Uneducated illiterate, superstitious, you know, unwashed peasants. 618. Now you had smart people, you had educated rich people, that demanded. 622. Respect, and they demanded a chance to re-slice that pie, and they got it. They. 627. Got it and it was violent and that was the French Revolution. Now when that was 631 All said and done, you made room for the city folks, and then later on 635 You had the peasantry of the city, the proletariat, and you sliced that pie. 639 Again, and that was the social revolution of the Bolsheviks. 644. And our modern age. And today we have a situation which is much different than. 648. What they came with out of the French Revolution. Thinking about the French. 652. Revolution, we go to Paris, we see so many sites that relate to that. And we can. 657. Imagine what it was like with the king and the queen being held hostage, and 701. Then eventually paraded up the street and made 703. What they call, a foot shorter at the top. 706. Meeting the National Razor. Now this was a brave new age when they cut off a 712. Head of the king and the queen, and what came out of that was a very stark. 716. Cerebral, revolutionary, enlightened society. 721. Everything was subjected to the test of reason. For the first time, respected. 726. Elements were standing up and not just saying, the church is wrong. 728. They were saying, religion doesn't make sense at all. 730. Everything had to be logical. During the French Revolution. 734. Churches were turned into temples of reason. 737. During the French Revolution they said, 365 days in the year except when there's 742. A leap year, and 30 days has so and so, and 31. 744. And February has 28 or 29, it's all silly. 747. We need 12 30 day months. And then there's 5 or 4 days at the end of. 752. 
the year where everybody will not do anything except help the state. And each. 755. Of those 30 day months has three 10 day weeks, now that's logical. 801. And that's what they had in the French Revolution. Everything was that kind of. 804. We're going to start over and we're going to do it smart. 807. Nothing was immune. And it was really an amazing time. 811. The art of this period was neoclassical. And we see that when we go to Paris. 816. Great structures that feel old, but really. 818. Feel new, they're just 200 years old. 821. You've got the Arc de Triomphe. You've got all sorts of great. A24. Classically inspired buildings, that came in the early 1800s. A28. You've got statuary that is pure and ideal this is Canova. A34. Or the great Danish sculptor, Torvalsen. Beautiful neoclassical statues. A40. You've got neoclassical themes that celebrate great, you know. 844. Ancient stories, like here's the death of Socrates. 849. When you think of Napoleon coming out of the French Revolution, this crazy. 854. Revolution got so wild that, you know, it got more and more extreme, and... 9 o'clock. Finally, they cut off the head of Robespierre. I mean it went. 9.03. You could, it's like there's a window of political conceivability. 9.08. There's only so much wit that a society can handle. And as it moves left or right. 9.13. What used to be loony becomes fringe, what? 9.15. Used to be fringe becomes that side, what? 9.17. Used to be that side becomes the middle. 9.18. What used to be loony here becomes inconceivable. It moves that way. And then. 9.23. People that weren't heard are now heard. And they wave their flags and they say. 926. Cut off their heads, and it goes further. And those loonies. 930. They wave your flag, cut off their heads, and these people are anybody. 933. Suspected of showing insufficient patriotism. 936. That was grounds enough to cut off your head. 939. If you are suspected of showing insufficient patriotism. 943. It was called the terror. And this was took over France. All the nobles and they. 948. Old regime people fled to other countries, and then all those countries. 952. Declared war on France and out of that came the Napoleonic Wars, and so on. 957. It was just an amazing time. Well the revolution got going so far. 1002. It went so wild, they actually cut off the head of Robespierre, and then there. 1005. Were people starting to rethink it? 1007. And the king was out here, and he's saying I want back the king's heir. 1009. Was over here, he says, I want back on the throne, and when I get back on the throne. 1013. Heads are really going to roll. 1015. What an amazing time. So the revolutionary people realized, we're. 
1019. Gonna lose this thing, we got to either go back to the king or give it to thee. 1022. Military. And they said, Is there a charismatic leader of the military? A hero. 1028. Of the revolution? A short guy that keeps his hand in his and his coat like this. 1033. Napoleon, perfect guy. So Napoleon was given reins of the government, and... 1037. Napoleon now has, you know, the most populous most powerful country in Europe. 1042. Unbridled with the old privilege, and the idea. 1045. That rich kids get the positions of power. 1048. Now it is talent, and it is for a cause. 1052. It is liberty, equality, fraternity. 1055. This is the brave new world, and France is leading Europe into that. 1059. I'm a sucker for that, when you see Les Miserables and so on. 1102. It's just amazing to think of the courage of these young intellectuals, in. 1107. A lot of cases, that helped bring the rest of the world. 1110. The rest of the Western world, into the modern age. 1112. I want to stress, it's not just the revolution of 1789. 1116. There were several after that. It took a long time, and there's a lot of craziness. 1120. And finally it all came out, and the result of it all, was a compromise. 1126 It was a constitutional monarch who went to work every day, not in Leotard's end. 1131 A wig, but with a briefcase. And that's what came out of the revolution, all. 1135 That chaos, something that was modern and viable and reasonable when we think of 1140 napoleon he was crowned emperor he wanted to be king 1144 he wanted to be the king of france but you couldn't do that because that was 1147 unrevolutionary but what was revolutionary is being the emperor 1151. So Napoleon was emperor. And he got crowned where the French kings got crowned, but... 1156. He didn't want to be in a Gothic church because that was medieval, and that's... 12 o'clock. What they're trying to get beyond, he masked the medieval columns with Roman. 1205. Style pilasters. And he crowned himself emperor, not king. So he's powerful, but. 1211. It is this new notion of power that came out of the Reformation. 1214. You can see this canvas of Napoleon's coronation. 1217. It's the biggest canvas in the Louvre and it's something you don't want to miss. 1220 Remember, all across Europe now you have this neoclassical art. In England. 1225 There's a lot of neoclassical art, but it's called Georgian art, named after they. 1230 King who was on the throne then easy to remember because it was King George that. 1233. The Americans were fighting, and the art of that age in England is called. 1237. Georgian. Here we have the British Museum in London, a beautiful example of a. 1242. Georgian facade. Here in the town of Bath, two hours west of London, 
you have a 1247 Georgian condominium complex. And this is where the elite of that society would 1253 buy beautiful homes, and they all got this beautiful Georgian uniform purity. 1258 this neoclassical elegance coming out of the age of revolution and the 1304 neoclassical art that got so extreme that people wanted to let their hearts 1308 off their leash and they wanted a response to that and theirs 1310 this pendulum that swings back to the romantic side and the next movement is 1316 called romanticism it's very interesting the pendulum when you think about it so 1320 often it goes from cerebral to emotional 1323 think about it in European history it doesn't go cerebral cerebral emotional 1327 Emotional, it always swings back and forth. For instance, 1331 Gothic is quite emotional, and then 1335 Renaissance is quite cerebral. And after Renaissance you've got Baroque which is 1340 Intentionally emotional, and then after that after 1344 so much of rococo and all that kind of stuff 1346 you've got the enlightenment and the french revolution and neoclassicism 1351 and then after that and turning churches into 1353 temples of reason and all that 1355 the pendulum swings back and we've got the Romantic Age. 1358 Now people just are tired of all this cerebral business, and they want to. 1402 Underline their medieval and their Christian heritage, and they want to do. 1405 Things in a neo-Gothic way. 1407 It's amazing this back and forth that you see in your travels. 1411 When we think of romantic art and romantic romanticism really is the ism. 1416 Of the 1800s romantic art is not kissy, mushy, flirtatious art like. 1421 We would think in the modern sense of romantic. Romantic is just emotional. 1426 A good example of that is The Raft of the Medusa by Jericho. Now The Raft of 1432 The Medusa is a intentionally emotional. 1435 Romantic theme It was a terrible event, a ship. 1438 went down, there was cannibalism, it was a terrible thing. 1441 The survivors on the raft. And here they are in despair. People dead, people giving. 1447 Up. And it works up to this powerful pyramid of hope, and there's a man waving. 1452 a rag up on the top of all these people, and in the distance. 1456 Tiny, tiny on the horizon, is the mast of a ship that may or may not rescue them. 1502 What a romantic painting! And that would be a great example of the spirit of. 1506 Romanticism a wonderful romantic painter is Goya. Goya, who? 1511. Painted in Spain, and you'll see a lot of his art in Madrid. 
1516. Boya started off a pretty light, romantic painter. 1519. But he was a painter with a political edge. 1521. He painted the royal family, cause that was his bread and butter, and he painted. 1525. Them looking kind of guni, because they were. 1528. Kind of guni and he got away with it somehow. 1531 Goya witnessed the first modern armies and the consequences of that. The Army of 1538 The Napoleonic Age was the Levy and Massé. It was all hands on deck. 1543 Everything was for the state, and the French created this biggest ever. 1546. Assembled army, and it was able to go and mow down patriots in other countries. 1552. With all the compassion of a lawn mower. 1554. Look at those soldiers there in lockstep, intentionally faceless, as there's a. 1559. Whole line of patriots that are going to be shoved in front of the firing squad. 1602. And killed one after another. This is the 3rd of May by Goya, and you see. 1607. These patriots meeting their death, and ending up a rumpled heap on the ground. 1612. That's romanticism. And remember, Romanticism has a natural affinity for 1617 The patriotic underdogs, the ethnic Cinderella stories 1623 Gypsies, Indians, any sort of national cause that's against a big emperor 1630 That's going to have a romantic sort of a partnership Boya finished his life 1635. Just sort of crazed in a depressed gloom in his house, literally painting on his. 1640. Walls, kind of finger painting with his own blood in a sense, and these are his. 1644. Dark stage paintings. And you'll see mankind slamming away at each other, as he. 1649. Has seen these modern armies that are unprecedented. 1652. And then there's a very famous painting by Goya called Saturn Devouring His Son. 1658. Which is symbolic of time eating us all. 17 o'clock. Again very, very emotional, very romantic in that way. 1704. Another dimension of romanticism, which I think is quite powerful. 1708. Is this love of nature? When we think about romanticism in the 19th century, in 1713. A lot of ways it's losing yourself in the awesomeness of nature. 1717. And this is a first in art history. 1719 Now we have artists being inspired by the wilds. A part of the daily academic. 1724 Diet of every scholar at Oxford and Cambridge was. 1727 To walk in the woods and commune with nature. 1730 now when people made a pilgrimage to cultural big shots, they weren't. 1734 Into some fancy salon in Paris, they were going up to the Cumbrian Lakes District. 1738 In the north of England and walking in the woods with the great poet Wordsworth. 1741 Turner is a great romantic landscape artist, and he would paint seascapes, and 1747 
he would paint landscapes that really pull you in. 1751 To the wonder of nature When you go to the Lake District in northern England. 1756 That's where you find the power of nature in such a beautiful way. Yule 1759 Find more youth hostels per square mile in the Cumbrian Lakes District than 1803 Anywhere else in Europe, and they need every one of them, because they 1806 English people love to go up there and commune with nature. 1808 This is the backyard of Wordsworth, the great poem poet, and you can see his home. 1813 There, you can read his poetry there, and you can be inspired by the romantic. 1818 Movement, and how that involved nature. Along with nature. 1823 Remember Romanticism is the natural partner of patriotic spirit when it 1828 Comes to nationalism Romanticism and nationalism, they're together 1833 And in the 1800s, the other ism, along with Romanticism, was nationalism 1838 should there be a German state? Should there be an Italian country? 1843 Should Norway be part of Sweden? 1845 Should the Bulgarians be free from the Ottomans? 1848 All of these were romantic causes, warmed up intellectually in 1852 Romantic circles, intellectual circles, and then becoming politically reality. 1858 Robert Burns was a great romantic poet and novelist who popularized the notion. 1904 That Scotland should be a proud group, a proud nation. And he did a lot too. 1909 Reawaken the spirit of the Scottish people. Our notion of Scotland today. 1914. Pretty much created by Robert Burns in the 1800s, even though we. 1919. Think it's much older than that. When we go to Norway, for instance, I love to go. 1925 to the National Gallery in Oslo before going into the wilds of the fjords. 1929 Because in the National Gallery, I can see how great. 1933 Norwegian painters painted their natural wonder in an 1936 Over-the-top romantic style, how connected it is with the soul of Norway. 1940 when we go to any country in Europe, if you go to the 1943 National Gallery, look at the 19th century paintings. 1946 And there we get this romanticized notion of those people. 1950 I was just in Berlin filming in the old National Gallery where they have all of 1956 the romantic paintings that show the Germans idealizing their country before. 2002 It was made into a country, to sort of legitimize it. 2006 These paintings to me really are powerful comments on the folk culture. 2011 And how powerful and legitimate that is. 2014 it's no coincidence that in the 1860s the United States was fighting. 2019 Our civil war, struggling over the notion, should we be one nation indivisible? 2025 Or should we be two nations? And we went to war wondering what we are, 
and we. 2029. Decided we are one nation. At the same time. 2032. Italy was struggling to become one nation. In the same decade, Germany was. 2037. Going against everybody's wishes and forging that nation. At the same time. 2041. Norway was distinguishing itself from the Swedes, Bulgarians, Gypsies. 2047. Everybody was making their move, it was an exciting time. 2050. The musicians of the age championed the romantic causes. 2055. I just love it. When you go to Norway, you go to the fjords and you can hear they. 2059. Music of Edvard Grieg. And then you go to Trollhogen, where Grieg lived, and you. 2103. Go to the little hut where he had his piano, and. 2105. He was inspired by the view out the window. 2108. You see how that the soul of Norway's in the fjords, and it shows through in the. 2113. Music of Edvard Grieg. I had the great privilege and creative challenge and. 2118. Delight of producing a one-hour TV show called Europe, A Symphonic Journey. 2123. Right here in this room. And we had our local symphony right here. 2126. And a lot of travelers out here, and we chose seven different countries in Europe. 2131. And we celebrated their national emotional, Anthems. Not a national anthem in the. 2137. Pledge of Allegiance sort of sense, but a national anthem in a sense of. 2141. Aaron Copeland makes me feel great as an American. 2144. Smetana Fields makes me feel great as a Czech. 2147. Wagner makes me feel great as a German, and, you know. 2153. Strauss makes me feel really good as an Austrian. Grieg makes me feel Norwegian. 2158. All of those were celebrated, we played the great hit. 2202. And then we cut in all sorts of beautiful images from those countries and put it. 2207. Together in a very tight hour. It's a beautiful hour with our symphony, and with. 2211. All the archive of images we have from our TV show. 2214. Beautifully edited by my crew, and you can watch it anytime for free at. 2217. RickSteves.com So if you want just an appreciation of romanticism as a 2222 Champion of nationalism with music in the late 1800s, go to 2226 RickSteves.com and listen to Europe, a symphonic journey 2231 I just love going to the Czech Republic and seeing. 2235. The work of Mucha the Slav epic. And there you got a classic. 2240. Example of the triumph of the Czech people. 2241. Imagine surviving as a little tiny nation. 2244. Between Germany and Russia over the centuries. 2247. How do they do it? It's quite a, quite a triumph, and you see that in the. 2252. Romantic art. 
now during the middle of the 1800s. 2256. Again, we have no Germany, we have no Italy, and we have Europe pretty much. 2301. Run by big families. Eventually, at the end of WWI, all of the big. 2307. Families are going to be gone, no more Ottoman sultans, no more Romanovs. 2313. No more Habsburgs, and so on. All of those big families are going to be history, and... 2319. We're going to end of that concept of the divine monarch. But it's going to... 2322. Take still a little while. When we think about Italy uniting, none of the existing. 2326. Powers wanted a new power, but Italians knew that there was the case to be made. 2332. For one nation, where everybody who speaks Italian is together, and they made it. 2336. It's a fascinating story. By 1870, Italy was. 2339. Essentially, the Italy we know today, okay. 2342. They had said, famously, now we've made Italy, our next step is to make Italians. 2347. It was really tough to get people to relate to Italy. 2350. Because they have such a strong regional loyalties. 2353. But you have that beautiful country of Italy, created only in 1870. The same. 2358. Thing in Germany. Germany was not existing nor was Italy in 1850. 2402. There was 15 or 20 different states there. 2404. Remember, when we do our sightseeing, we're looking at the crown jewels. 2408. And the palaces, and the white houses, and so on. 2410. Of countries that don't do no longer exist. 2412. Bavaria was a moderate power, ruled for 600 years by the Wittelsbach family. 24, 17. Today that's long gone, as Germany has been. 24, 20. United. Of course when Germany was united. 24, 23. All of a sudden you've got a new player in the game. And with Germany united. 24, 28. You've got a superpower, and everybody else has carved up the world from a. 24, 32. Colony point of view, and Germany's scrappy get out there, whatever colonies. 24, 36. They can, that created attention. People didn't want that they worked against it. 24, 41. I think in Germany they had a, sort of an inferiority complex, and a lot of the art. 24, 46. During the German unification movement was art that delves deep into the. 24, 50. Mythical past, to make Germany legitimate. Just like we had Paul Bunyan, and just. 24, 55. Like England had King Arthur, Germany would have these characters from there. 25, 00. zero. Mythic past that said, yes there should be a Germany, there may not be a. 25, zero 04. Political unit called Germany today but it's the truth and the truth will. 25, 07.
prevail. In 1870 they put together Germany. 25, 10 Now some of the romantic are we see in Germany is 25, 12 For instance, Neuschwanstein Castle 25, 15 When you look at Neuschwanstein, it looks medieval, but it is neo-medieval 25, 19 Remember Half of all the most pointy medieval stuff that you see, it's 25, 24. Probably done in over the top neo medieval style. 25, 27. In the late 1800s. For years I went to this castle. 25, 31. This famous Disney castle in southern Germany, and I thought, 25, 33. It was medieval, it's pointy. And then I learned. 25, 36. What romanticism is. I learned about Mad King. 25, 39. Ludwig, that's his popular name for tourists, Mad he's King Ludwig II. 25, 43 of Bavaria, and I learned that his best buddies were opera composers, like Wagner. 25, 48 Entire rooms in his castle were modeled after Wagnerian opera themes. When you 25, 53 Look at the wallpaper in these places, you're going to find all sorts of 25, 56 Knights in shining armor. 25, 57. It was just this nostalgic, fanciful look back at the medieval past. 26, 02. That's romanticism. And in a way justifies Germany in this case. 26, 07. Remember, when you're sightseeing around Europe, when you see something very 26, 11 pointy, like Mad Ludwig's castle, like the castle here in Segovia outside of Madrid 26, 17 like the skyline in Bruges, or like the pointy church in Prague, or like the 26, 21 halls of parliament and Big Ben in London 26, 23. This is very likely romantic, done in the middle or late 1800s, in an 26, 29. Over the top, full medieval style. It would be neo Gothic or neo Romanesque. 26, 38. There's a whole art stage here called historicism, which is neo everything. 2643 In the late 1800s Neo Renaissance, Neo Baroque, Neo Gothic 2648 It's all this late 1800s building that goes back to their heritage 2653 Here's the cathedral in Berlin made in the late 1800s 26 56. Looking pretty old to me. 26, 58. But done in an over-the-top style. During this period we also have the 27, 03. Industrial age, and with the industrial age we got the train lines of Europe. 27, 07. Being laid, We've got all sorts of iron and steel happening. 27, 11. This is the very first iron bridge. This was built in 1776 in. 27, 15. England, it's the Iron Bridge Gorge, considered the birthplace of the. 27, 18. Industrial Revolution. When we think of 
2720. The Industrial Revolution, What Comes Out. 2722. Of That Is Industrial Age Art, Like The Eiffel Tower. 2726. When You Look At The Eiffel Tower. 2727. That was a hundred years after the French Revolution, built to celebrate the 2730 French Revolution, 1879. And all over Europe you'll find similar kind of 2736 Buildings that look Eiffel-esque. Here's a mini, stubby Eiffel Tower. 2741 in the resort town of Blackpool in England. 2742. That was just they had an erector set, and they wanted to use it. 2747. They built a lot of these things intending to take them down. 2751. They built the Eiffel Tower, fully expecting to build it on a schedule. 2754. Celebrate that it was there, and then take it down on a schedule. 2758. They got it all the way built and they decided, you know. 2759. Let's just leave it up, and the radio was just coming along. 2802. And it was handy for Marconi at the time, and today it's a great sight in Paris. 2806. But like the Crystal Palace in London, it was just a way to show off in. 2810. The Industrial Age, and they fully intended to make it temporary. 2813. During this period, with the Industrial Revolution, 28, 16. You've got all sorts of trade. And there was a little window of time before they. 28, 20. Trains took hold, that the industrial age canals, like the Erie Canal in the United. 28, 25. States, were really important. Today, much of. 28, 28. Europe is laced with industrial age canals. 28, 31. But they had that little window when they were of any value from an. 28, 33. Industrial point of view, and then the ships got too big, and the train lines. 28, 37. Came, and it became more economic to go by train and these canals were just 2840 abandoned and today they provide Europe with a wonderful recreational sort of 2844 network and you can take a canal boat from 2847 Amsterdam all the way to the Black Sea 2850 if you wanted to with canals, and rivers, and locks, going over the continental. 28, 55. Divide, and then down and connecting with another river and carrying out. You could. 28, 59. Take a canal from the Atlantic coast of France, over the continental divide, to. 29, 04. The Mediterranean coast of France. And it's just a beautiful opportunity now. 2908. When you're traveling to hike or bike along those canals, or and those are. 2913. Towpaths that used to, in the very early days. 2916. Volga boat song kind of pulling the boats up and down the canals. 29, 20. And you can also vacation in a canal boat, 
in many. 29, 23. Countries in Europe. With the Industrial Age. 29, 26. We have all of these train tracks laid, and we have train stations that are just. 29, 30. Celebrating this new way to get around, and the centerpiece of a great train. 29, 34. Station facade would be a big clock, because. 29, 37. This is the first time that clocks mattered. 29, 40. People weren't really used to looking at the minute hand, but here, with the train. 29, 44. You knew that quarter after, that train's leaving and it's going to be in London. 29, 48. And they would celebrate that by having a big clock up there, this is the triumph. 29, 52. Of the age, the industrial age. They would build all sorts of steel and glass, iron. 29, 56. And glass buildings like Kew Gardens, like the great galleries that you find. 30, 00. This is the Victor Emmanuel Monument in Milano, named for the first Italian king. 30, 06. Part of this 1870 celebration of Italian unity. 30, 09. You've also got glass and steel galleries, oh in most cities. This is. 30, 14. Brussels here, you see similar galleries that are wonderful, elegant. 30, 18. The turn of the century kind of shopping malls in Paris and in London. 30, 23. The art of this period is very conformist. 30, 28. It's the salon, sort of accepted romantic art, and there was a movement. 30, 36. Against this saccharine sweet romantic stuff, and it was called realism. And when? 30, 42. You go to Paris especially, you'll see both of these art styles side by side. 30, 46. This would be the pro status quo, mainstream, no ruffled feathers. 30, 53. Conservative art from the salon. And in the same. 30, 57. Decade you would have this, Realism by Manet. 31, 02. This is Proto-Impressionism. This is Realism in the sense that, we're not. 31, 07. Gonna make it gauzy, or make anything more. 31, 10. Polite and pleasant than it really is. 31, 13. In this painting of Venus by Manet. 31, 18. We see the harsh reality of a courtesan, or a prostitute, and she's kind of. 31, 25. Hardened, and she's been there and done that. 31, 29. And she's looking at you saying, next. 31, 31. It's just pretty harsh painting, and that would have been too much for the fancy. 31, 36. People of the age in Paris, but that was the unconventional art, and that led to. 31, 42. The Impressionist Movement. 31, 45. Impressionism is the biggest break in the flow of art since the Renaissance. 31, 52. When they combined art and science to give us believable three-dimensionality. 31, 56. Now they've mastered three-dimensionality, they've mastered. 32, 00. 
realism, and with the Impressionist movement. 32, 03. They're leaving reality, physical reality, like what we think. 32, 08. Impressionism is not looking at the physical thing, that's just the rack upon. 32, 15. Which the color, and the shadows, and the glimmers hangs. For instance, you could. 32, 20. Take you could stand on the balcony of your hotel, like Monet, and you could paint. 32, 24. The cathedral from your angle at two different times of day. 32, 28. And it would be two different paintings, as different as a painting of a house. 32, 33. And a car, in his mind, because he doesn't care about the physical substance. 32, 37. He carries about he cares about the light and the shadow, Impressionism. A. 32, 41. Good way to illustrate that would be take Monet, the textbook Impressionist. 32, 46. And Leonardo, textbook realist. 32, 49. Leonardo's driving down the street, he sees a glimmer in the asphalt. 32, 53. Ahead of you, he says, well there's a glimmer there but it's not there, I know I'm gonna. 32, 56. Drive right through it, that's hard as rock, it's black. He'd paint it that way. 33, 01. Monet would slam the brakes, he'd jump out. 33, 03. He'd set up his canvas, and he'd capture. 33, 05. The glimmer on the asphalt, because he's looking for the impression of the. 33, 08. Light and the shadow at that particular moment. The rallying cry of the. 33, 13. Impressionist was, out of the studio and into nature. They wanted to get out, and. 33, 18. Set up their canvas, and capture that moment. 33, 21. Impressionism was named as an insult, just a scant impression, but I think that. 33, 26. Suited them well. It was not pausing long enough to get the actual number of. 33, 31. Leaves, and so on, that didn't matter. We're catching the ambience of that. 33, 34. Beautiful moment, with the dappled light. 33, 36. As the sun is shining through the willows. 33, 39. Monet, the great impressionist, actually dedicated a good part of his life to 33, 43 making this wonderful garden outside of Paris at Giverny and when you go to 33, 47 Giverny today, you wander through the lily pads and under the weeping willows 33, 51 and over the little Japanese bridge and you see all of these beautiful. 33, 55. Inspirational scenes, and then you go to the. 33, 59. Gallery, and you see how it just inspired Monet. 34, 03. It's an amazing thing. An impressionism, remember, it. 34, 06. Happened to coincide with the popularization of the camera. 34, 09. I think it's a little simplistic to say they. 34, 12. 
camera could do reality so painters left it, but... 34, 15 Having the camera there didn't encourage painters to labor over reality. 34, 19 I think they were inspired to go beyond reality. They're kind of freed now to get. 34, 23 Into that wonderful catch the moment. 34, 26 Impressionists do not mix the painting on the palette. 34, 31 They dab the colors side by side, knowing it will mix as it comes to your eyes. 34, 37 And that gives it a special kind of vibrancy. The key about 34, 40 Impressionism, of course, is not to get up too close. 34, 43 you don't want to stand really close and say, aren't those messy? 34, 46 Brush strokes, you want to step back and let they... 34, 50 Moment, the ambience, the conviviality, turn you on. 34, 54 This is Renoir, and this is a garden party in Paris. And here we have that. 34, 59 Swirling, romantic, everybody's had two glasses of wine, and there's. 35, 01 Wonderful music and we're getting along just fine moment. 35, 07 It's a beautiful painting, and thank goodness it's not bogged down to details. 35, 11 You're caught up in the impression of it. The greatest impressionism is in Paris. 35, 16 You'll find it in the Orsay Gallery. Remember, the art until about 1850. 35, 21 Is all in the Louvre. And then after the Louvre, you've got 35, 25 The collection of all the other galleries in Paris, gathered together in the 35, 29 Orsay Gallery A former train station, almost met the wrecking ball. 35, 34 Today it is one of the most delightful. 35, 36 Artistic experiences you can have in Europe. 35, 38 Don't miss the Orsay Gallery for the post-Louvre paintings and statues in Paris. 35, 44 Now with the Impressionist movement, that's the last time. 35, 48 Artists were all held together. From this point, it just goes crazy. 35, 53 And I have a real hard time with 20th century art. 35, 55 Making sense of a lot of the different movements, and we'll just talk. 35, 59 A little bit about some strange through the 20th century. When we look at the 19, 36, 04 The 18th century and the 19th century, so far what we've talked about is in the 36, 10 1900s or in the 1800s, we got nationalism as a driving force. 36, 16 This is opened up when you start remember when you have the Habsburgs. 36, 19. They're ruling people that speak all different languages, regardless of what. 36, 22. Their language is, they're just ruling it because so and so married so and so, and. 36, 25. Now they inherited that realm, and there's no togetherness. 36, 
29. The modern idea is you have a national movement that rules itself. 36, 34. That's nationalism big time in the 19th century. We've got the industrial. 36, 39. Revolution, and along with that, industrial age. 36, 42. Architecture, that whole erector set stuff. 36, 45. In a moment we're going to see Art Nouveau, which is organic, leafy, curvy. 36, 50. Intentionally swoopy, kind of art that is a reaction against the industrial age art. 36, 56. Too much Eiffel Tower, too much T-Square, give me a little Art Nouveau. 37, 01. We got Romanticism, leading to Realism, which 37, 04. Leads to Impressionism, and then we get into the 20th century. 37, 09. The Victorian era when we think of the word Victorian era. 37, 13. That's just the time of Queen Victoria in England who ruled for, I think 60 or 37, 18. 70 years. I mean it was a very long reign, and that was most of the 19th century. 37, 23. And the nationalist, and romanticism, and so on. 37, 27. Okay, into the modern age post-impressionism. Van Gogh is one of the 37, 32. Most important painters you'll find. Van Gogh was from the Netherlands. 37, 37. Van Gogh, this is a self-portrait was a very spiritual. 37, 41. Painter. As a young man, he even wanted to be a pastor. 37, 44. He worked with poor people, and he painted poor people with a special. 37, 47. Affinity. Here, the potato eaters, you feel that Van Gogh has an empathy for. 37, 53. These salt of the earth peasants and farmers. 37, 55. It shows in his beautiful art. When you look at the explosion of life, and color. 38, 00. And everything breathing together, in a Van Gogh painting. 38, 03. You understand his spiritual look at the world. It's all one, it's all kind of God. 38, 08. In our face, and it's a beautiful, powerful, sort of thing. 38, 12. He moved down to the south of France, he had an explosion of creative activity. 38, 16. He couldn't handle it all. And you probably you know about Van Gogh's life. 38, 19. And his tragic end, he ended up killing himself in a wheat field. 38, 23. This is one of his last paintings, and we see ominous crows taking flight in a 38, 27. Wheat field, and that was right at the end of Van Gogh's life. 38, 32. I mentioned Art Nouveau. Art Nouveau, around the turn of 38, 37. The 19 about the year 1900, Art Nouveau is organic. 38, 42. It is slinky, it is an intentional reaction against. 38, 46. This stern, Erector set art of the industrial age. 38, 49. I love Art Nouveau, 
it's just so easy to like Art Nouveau. It's really in vogue in 38, 54. Europe now, and you'll find Art Nouveau all over Europe. 38, 58. When you know where to look, you got to know the local word. 38, 59. You know, it's Jugendstil in German, and it's Modernismo in Spain, and in 39, 06. Czech Republic you look for the work of Alphonse Mucha. 39, 09. This is Mucha in Czech Republic, beautiful Art Nouveau window in 39, 12. The Cathedral by Mucha. In Scotland, you go. 39, 15. To Glasgow and you look for the work of Charles Rennie Mackintosh. 39, 19. Very trendy, very exciting to see his work end. 39, 21. Other artists from this period in Glasgow. 39, 25. When you go to Catalonia you'll find a lot of Art Nouveau. 39, 28. Barcelona is the capital of Catalonia, and here the most enjoyable Art Nouveau. 39, 32. Artist is probably Antoni Gaudi. Gaudi is famous for his Sagrada Familia Church. 39, 38. You know, in the Middle Ages they would. 39, 40. Take two centuries to build a church. 39, 42. Well beyond the lifespan of any of the people working on it at the start when. 39, 45. It was finally finished. In a way that's the Sagrada Familia in Barcelona. 39, 50. It's been going for 100 years, and it's getting there now, I've been. 39, 53. Visiting it for 30 years, and it's so exciting to see the process. If there's. 39, 57. One building I'd like to see finished in Europe if there's one building I'd like. 40, 00. To see in Europe. It's the Sagrada Familia finished in Barcelona. 40, 05. Here we can see this organic church, and you pay a steep admission to go there. 40, 09. But that's contributing to the ongoing construction costs, so it feels good. 40, 13. To pay the admission, and now the church is actually consecrated. 40, 16. It's got a roof over its head. I remember filming there with hard hats on, and now. 40, 20. You can go to Mass, right in that church, under this beautiful organic roof. 40, 25. When you think about Art Nouveau, look at the columns here. 40, 28. That is organic. These remind you of bamboo shoots. 40, 32. Gaudi is inspired by nature to have this canopy over the top. 40, 37. Of that beautiful church, and you can visit that today. 40, 39. A classic example of Art Nouveau architecture in Barcelona. 40, 45. At the dawn of WWI we see Europe here, and here we have the 40, 52. Austro-Hungarian Empire and German Empire. 40, 55. We've got Serbia in the southern part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. 40, 59. We've got the Ottoman Empire, the old man of Europe. It's called 4103. We've got Russia ready for revolution. 
4105. Italy is united, France and Germans have really never even met each other yet. 41, 10. There has not been much travel, so they can go to war. 41, 14. Battle on the Western Front and end up slaughtering each other. 41, 17. You've got in 1914, the Archduke going from Vienna down to Sarajevo to let it. 41, 26. Be known that the Habsburgs are going to keep a strict rule down here, we're gonna. 41, 29. Have like military exercises next week, and we want you guys to toe the line. 41, 33. Even though we don't speak your language, don't really care about you guys. 41, 36. You're part of this empire, and then one of their radicals. 41, 40. You can call him a terrorist, you could call him an anarchist, you could call. 41, 43. Him a patriot, I don't know but he killed the Archduke because he wanted to. 41, 47 Serbia to be free And what happened after that, was there was a hole. 41, 53 Conflicting, complicated, pile of treaties that. 41, 56 Were misunderstood, and that were inconsistent. 42, 0, 0. That were overlapping. And when Serbia assassinated the heir to the throne of. 42, 0, 06. The Habsburgs, Russia supported Serbia, because they're both Slavs. Germany. 42, 12. Supported Austria because they had a blank check of support. 42, 17. When Germany supported Austria against Serbia and Russia, France jumped in. 42, 22. Because it was tied in with Russia, and Germany decided to invade France. 42, 29. All of that happened, just BBBB, like a chain reaction after Princip killed. 42, 35. Ferdinand in Sarajevo, of all godforsaken places. 42, 39. I mean it's amazing that that isolated. 42, 42. Incident would cost Germany to invade France. 42, 46. That was the first thing that happened, Germany invaded France. By the end of it, 42, 51. Untold slaughter, all the royal families were gone, and Europe was into a brave. 42, 56. New World. It was amazing how much slaughter happened. 43, 01. The military leaders of the First World War were the heroes of wars back in the... 43, 06. Late 1800s, who had no understanding of the power of the new weapons. 43, 10. The machine gun was brand new. They called it the peacemaker back then in. 43, 14. 1914, because it was so overwhelming and brutal that nobody. 43, 18 could ever send their troops into it. It would guarantee peace. But the leaders of 43, 23 The previous war had no idea of the power. 43, 25 Of that, they'd wave their shoulders. 43, 26 Swords and boys would climb out of the trenches into the machine gun fire. 43, 31 By the end of WWI, 
half of all the men in France between 43, 34, 15 and 30 were casualties. Half of all the men. 43, 38. It's amazing, it's amazing the more you read about it. 43, 41. And you can visit sites about that in your travels. 43, 44. This obviously shook up the whole cultural scene, and you've got. 43, 48. Expressionist art coming out of this harsh new modern age. 43, 53. Munch's work is a good example of expressionism. 43, 56. But this is art that's just been shaken up from a society that's just been. 44, 00. Shaken up, and nothing is like it was in the old days. 4403. It's an amazing new age in the 20th century. Picasso is one of the great. 4408. Painters of are the last century. 4411. He was there in many many styles, and I like Picasso's early art, because in. 4415. Picasso's early art, you can see an abstract artist that is classically. 44, 20. Trained. And this is a very important reminder that the abstract artists that. 44, 26. Confuse a lot of us are classically trained. Picasso did this as a little. 44, 32. Teenager and from that he would evolve into cubism, and 44, 36 Picasso helped establish the whole genre of cubism 44, 40 Cubism is the best way I could understand cubism is, you take something 44, 44 That you can understand, here is a vase, and you break it and you then glue all. 44, 49. Of the shards onto a wall. And there you can see all the sides of it in. 44, 54. Different arrangement, and you play with your perspective. 44, 57. Cubism lets you play with your perspective in an unconventional way. 45, 01. Picasso also did Guernica, which is sort of the national piece of art in. 45, 06. Europe in a lot of ways, which is a cubist collage. 45, 09. And this is to me a powerful statement for peace. 45, 13. A powerful statement about the humanity of collateral damage. When France. 45, 19. When Spain was having its civil war. The fascist Franco was fighting against. 45, 27. The forces for democracy, and Hitler was allied with. 45, 32. Franco, because they're both fascists, Hitler was anticipating World War II. 45, 37. He had airplanes that were really clever at dropping bombs. 45, 40. Something that was quite innovative, and he told Franco. 45, 43. If you'd like, I could practice a little bit on some of. 45, 46. Your enemies, and I'd like to see how my bombs work anyways. 45, 48. Franco said, I am just so disgusted with the. 45, 52. Basques, who are helping the enemy in my civil war. 45, 55. Why don't you bomb their historic, 
Precious, Ancestral Capital, Guernica. 4601. So Hitler sent his Luftwaffe down there, and during market day, early in the morning. 4607. When everybody was out, the airplanes came in and just brutalized the town. 46, 13. It was horrific, and it was sort of an inkling of the destructive power. 46, 19. Of World War II, which was just around the corner. 46, 21. The world was just appalled at this, Picasso stopped what he was doing, and... 46, 25. He created Guernica, which was not allowed in Spain until Franco was dead. And today. 46, 32. It sets in a place of honor in Madrid, and you gotta see when you're in Madrid. 46, 36. Picasso's masterpiece, Guernica. And when you look at this you really are. 46, 40. Looking at the reality of aerial bombardment and collateral damage. 46, 45. Which humanizes that understanding of war. 46, 48. Picasso finished his career in the south of France. 46, 51. I like to see his early work in Barcelona. 46, 56. Because that's where he grew up and his best early work is there, and then they. 46, 59. New Picasso Museum has just reopened in Paris, which would be his later art, and a. 47, 04. Wonderful museum filled with Picasso in Antibes, in the south of France. 47.08 In Antibes you've got this famous painting, The Joy of Life, Joie de Vivre. 47.13 And this reminds me of Picasso's famous quote, he said. 47.17 As a child I learned to paint as an adult, and finally as an adult I learned to paint. 47, 23 As a child And when you look at the playful love of life in Picasso's last. 47, 27 Work, then you really understand, I think, what Picasso's all about. 47, 31 Now, a big art movement in the same period is Surrealism. Salvador Dali is the famous. 47, 38 Surrealist, you'll see surreal art all over Europe, it's very trendy and popular. 47, 42 You see lots of galleries that like to make money selling tickets to there. 47, 44 Surrealistic art. The key about surrealism, and you'll see it in every. 47, 48. Art gallery modern art gallery in Europe, is, don't try to look for meaning. 47, 53. There's no, what did the artist mean by this? 47, 54. The artist is intentionally giving you a dreamscape, and whatever you make of it. 47, 58. Is the is the correct answer. This is ring bars for your mind, just lose. 48, 03. Yourself in the surreal image that they've given you, these are dreamscapes. 48, 07. And these are gorgeous, and these are beautiful. 48, 11. And fun to and enjoy in modern art galleries. 48, 14. Now when you think about abstract art, I have a real struggle. 48, 18. 
with abstract art from a conventional painting point of 48, 22 view, but I don't have any struggle with it. 48, 25 In other ways I love to look at a sunset. 48, 27 I love to look at formations of clouds blowing over the mountains. 48, 32 I love beautiful patterns in nature, but when I look at a canvas. 48, 37 I want to know, what am I supposed to see? 48, 40 We've gotta free ourselves from that if. 48, 42 We want to appreciate abstract art from the 20th century. 48, 45 We've got to assume the man who painted this was classically trained. 48, 49 He could do a dog sitting on top of a car, that would be easy. 48, 53 He's going beyond that now, this is this is. 48, 57 Thoughtful going beyond the hang-up of reality. 49, 01 let me give you an example of how we might be comfortable. 49, 04 Our ears with abstract, and we might be more. 49, 09 Comfortable with our eyes with abstract. 49, 13 Audi ally, some of us are fine with beautiful tones, and so on. 49, 18 other of us need to be grounded in a scale. 49, 21 I really like a scale. I'm tonal, just like I am needing of reality in a... 49, 27 Visual image Franz Liszt, a great piano player, really had a powerful need for... 49, 33 Tonality the sort of opposite of abstract when it comes to music. 49, 38 In fact, he was so needy of tonality that his wife knew how to wake up the great. 49, 43 Pianist and composer friends list by singing or playing on the piano. 49, 48 The first seven notes of the scale. 49, 51 In early in the morning she would sing, do, re, mi, fa, so, la, titanium. 50, 00 Franz Liszt couldn't handle it, he'd get out of bed, do. 50, 04 You see, that's tonality, I need that, I can't do it abstract. Other people can. 50, 10. Get beyond that. I think our need for visual reality is similar to 50, 16. Franz Liszt's need for tonality. If we can break beyond that. 50, 20. Then we can enjoy a painting like this, but that's our challenge. 50, 23. Can you listen to a song without having to go back to the root chord? Can you? 50, 28 Listen to a song without having to know, what's it supposed to mean? 50, 30 Can you enjoy a canvas with the same approach? A big part of your sightseeing. 50, 35 in Europe is 20th century architecture. And in the 20th century, architecture. 50, 41. Gets really radical, simply by going form follows function. It needs to be. 50, 45. Functional. And this was really oppressive to the status quo. As a matter. 50, 50. 
of fact this very avant-garde building, by a guy named Adolf Luz, faces the 50, 56 Habsburg Palace in Vienna And here we have the epitome of the modern world 51, 02 Modern, forward-looking, nothing ornate, certainly no 51, 06 Royalty, facing the palace of everything that symbolized the 51, 11 Old school And the Habsburgs were so angry with this building 51, 15 They decreed that it must put flower boxes 51, 18 Under the windows just so it would have 51, 20 A little bit of decor The bold new world didn't need flower boxes, it didn't need 51, 26 Colloquies Form follows function Fascism really left its mark in Europe in a lot 51, 32 of destructive ways, and in a few constructive ways. 51, 35 Mussolini had time to leave his mark on Rome before World War II started. 51, 40 And here we have Mussolini's futuristic plan suburb, Eur. 51, 45 It's really fun to go out to Eur and get a little look at fascism. Fascism 51, 50 Is violent, melodramatic, neo-pagan, extreme patriotism, everybody in lockstep 51, 57 There's no questions asked, this is all for 52, 00, zero. One and one for all, either you're with us or 52, zero, 02 Against us, that kind of stuff. And it's clenched fists. 52, 06. It's purity, it's the whole society in unison, wow. 52, 11. You see that in Hitler's drawings, you see that in Hitler's dreams. 52, 15. You see that in Mussolini's remnants of his vision in Rome. Go to your end. 52, 22. See a little bit of that fascist, scary, future. 52, 26. Also at the same time, you've got communism and Bolshevikism and they. 52, 31. Soviet Union. And we've got Karl Marx, we've got Engels, we've got Lenin. Weave. 52, 36. Got Stalin, as sort of that the gods of that movement. 52, 41. And the art of communism is called socialist realism. 52, 45. We all know what censorship is, socialist realism. 52, 49 takes censorship beyond our vision of censorship. 52, 53 I would think censorship is, you can't do. 52, 57 That if it challenges me, no. In communism. 53, 00, zero. You can't do it unless it supports me, you see. You can't make that art unless it. 53, 05. Actively supports the ideology. That's a huge difference. 53, 09. Then you just can't do innocuous stuff. The. 53, 13. Great Soviet composers, Stravinsky so on. 53, 16. They were hamstrung by not being able to make beautiful music. 53, 
19. Unless it stirred the right emotions so people. 53, 23. Would embrace the ideology of communism. 53, 25. That's socialist realism. When we look at the art of socialist realism, it's. 53, 31. Supporting the latest Stalin five-year plan. It's easy, it's got a slogan. 53, 36. It can be reprinted, it can hang in every factory wall. In Berlin you can see some. 53, 43. Murals that are left over from communism, and these are all singing the joys of. 53, 48. The communist society, all the workers are heroic, all the mothers are heroic. 53, 52. All the children are going to school and going to embrace the ideology. 53, 56. It's quite exciting art. As you travel around the former communist world. 54, 00. You can also go to museums that shows anti-system art that was coming about. 54, 06. During the fall of communism, when they were satirizing. 54, 09. All the problems in society, like the long lines. 54, 11. People waited in. And also when you go to Eastern Europe today. 54, 16. You can find collections of statues that used to keep the people down. Outside of. 54, 20. Budapest there's a statue park where they've gathered together all they. 54, 24. Socialist realist statues, and they're sort of in this bizarre little circle dance. 54, 28. Ranting and raving about either each other in a kind of. 54, 30. Surrealistic way, instead of on the main square's keeping. 54, 33. The people down. But the people didn't melt down the statues, they brought them. 54, 36. Together in this park, and today they look back on it with a little bit of nostalgia. 54, 40. Remember, much of Europe was destroyed in World War II, Germany laid in ruins, and 54, 44. The big question then was, how do you rebuild your cities? German cities got 54, 48. Together in the late 1940s and they had to decide, do we want the 54, 51. Manhattan plan or do we want the medieval plan? You could rebuild it in 54, 55. Your medieval style like Munich did, and here you see parts of Munich that were 54, 59. Bombed flat, old medieval walls and gates that are built up in what feels like on 55, 04. The cheap reconstructions from the years after the war, because that's what it was. 55, 08. Or you can go to Frankfurt, and find a city that was just as bombed out, but it. 55, 12. Was rebuilt on the Manhattan Plan. 55, 15. Frankfurt is all skyscrapers because they just wanted to move boldly into the. 55, 18. Future and take this chance to rebuild without the shackles of that cute. 55, 23. Medieval plan of its origins. 55, 25. You've got great churches that were completely blown out, and they've rebuilt. 
55, 29. Today in a way where they've gathered once beautiful medieval windows, and put. 55, 33. It into a modern collage, with a little shards of their medieval heritage there. 55, 37. In the windows of that modern post-World War II church. 55, 40. This is the great Frauen Kutschi in Dresden, and for years all of Western art lovers. 55, 46. Were commune lovers were contributing funds to rebuild it, and today the city. 55, 51. Of Dresden, which suffered the firestorm in World War II, is rebuilt and. 55, 56. Looking quite nice. Very interesting to see the rebuilt cities after the war. 56, 01. Remember this is the main square in Frankfurt. 56, 03. Here you can look at all those uniform windows. 56, 06. Anytime you see uniform windows in what looks like a medieval building. 56, 10. It's not a medieval building, because you couldn't buy a dozen uniform windows. 56, 13. Because back then, you would have a more higgly piggly ad libid design. 56, 17. But here, you've got that uniformity, indicating that it was rebuilt after. 56, 20. Bombs in the war. All over Europe they're protecting the 56, 23 Facade, so we have a nice homogeneous view from the street 56, 26 But behind those facades they're building modern buildings 56, 29 So you'll see the old facades, but don't think that means there's old buildings 56, 33. Behind them, they just saved the facades and rebuilt modern. Berlin has woven. 56, 38. Itself back together after terrible destruction in the war, and then it was. 56, 41. Divided with the Cold War and it had the Berlin Wall. A generation ago if you. 56, 46. Crossed the street, they'd shoot you, because that was the Berlin Wall. 56, 49. Today there's almost no indication of where the Berlin Wall once stood. 56, 51. And the city is woven back together. 56, 54. Beautiful. Modern governmental buildings in Berlin. 56, 58. This is the new Reichstag dome that you'll see when you go to Berlin. 57, 01. All over Europe, this generation, you're finding cutting edge. 57, 05. Architecture. This is the new BMW showroom and museum in Munich. 57, 09. Here we have the Arc of the Defense, rather than the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. 57, 14. It's a huge arch, as big as the Notre Dame could fit under it in Paris, and. 57, 19. This celebrates international trade on the edge of town. When you build a. 57, 24. Skyscraper in a place like France, a certain percent of your construction. 57, 28. Funds has to be dedicated to modern art, and that would be in the plaza where they. 57, 32. People are outside, and I'm impressed by the people. 57, 35. Friendliness of all of these new developments. 
57, 38. All over Europe you'll find that industrial wastelands that used to be. 57, 43. The harbors are now being renovated and turned into thriving new zone. Remember. 57, 48. In the industrial age they used to have big harbors right in the city, but now. 57, 52. The huge ships can't use those harbors, because they are not built on a scale. 57, 56. For the ships, so the ships have abandoned the ports, the ports have become. 57, 59. Desolate and dangerous and run down, and then in the last generation, great cities. 58, 03. Europe have recognized, hey, this is where we should be building. 58, 05. And they've invested in those areas with great building projects like this. 58, 10. Cinema Museum and Cinema Institute in Amsterdam, just across from the train. 58, 14. Station, like this Guggenheim Gallery of Modern Art in the industrial city of. 58, 18. Bilbao, in Basque Country, and like this Opera House in Oslo. All of these. 58, 26. Done in formerly people unfriendly industrial wastelands, today the harbor. 58, 31. Friends are being turned into parks for the people, and that's something too. 58, 34. Really enjoy. This is that new opera house in downtown Oslo. 58, 38. Barcelona is a good example. Barcelona had an industrial wasteland stretching. 58, 42. On the Mediterranean coast, today it's been turned into beautiful beaches, eh? 58, 46. Trendy promenade, and all sorts of great condominiums filled with life. 58, 51. Hamburg, the greatest sport in Germany, one third. 58, 54. Of the city was depressed and desolate. 58, 56. Now that's all been turned into a new zone with the centerpiece of this. 59, 00. zero. Philharmonic Hall, which is going to be a collection of great concert halls, and. 59, zero 05. Shopping malls, and so on. 5907. An example of cities investing in themselves. As the industrial age gets. 5911. More and more rusty, cities are looking at dinosaurs from all of that building. 5915. And renovating them, and making them fit for society today. For instance, you've 5919 Got industrial age market halls all over Europe, and these are being turned into 5924 Trendy food circuses 5926 They used to be a market hall, people are going to the supermarkets now. They've 59 30. Still got the merchants, and the farmers selling their vegetables and their fruit. 59, 34. But at the same time, they've invited in all sorts of trendy gourmet restaurants. 59, 38. For a new affluent society that wants to go to the historic market hall, but also. 59, 42. Wants to have a nice restaurant there. 59, 44. This is the Mercato Central, the central market in Florence, and now it's. 
59, 48. The best place to go for lunch in the city. 59, 51. All over Europe, I've noticed in the last year. 59, 53. You've got these old industrial age market halls, now fun food circuses. A big. 59, 57. Bull ringin' in Barcelona, where they don't have bull fights there anymore. 60, 01. What are you gonna do? 60, 02. Turn it into a shopping mall. Now you go to the bullring to do your shopping. 60, 05. When you're in Barcelona. 60, 07. What do you do with a big wall? Turn it into an open-air art gallery. 60, 11. In Berlin they've got their wall, it's still up, but this is where people go with a kin of. 60, 15. Spray paint, to do a little political artistic venting. 60, 19. Industrial age cities used to be the rest belt. We have the rust belt in the 60, 24 United States, in Europe there's all these second cities The Antwerps, the 60, 29 Hamburgs, the Liverpools, the Bilbaos, the Glasgows, and so on These cities 60, 35 Are now leaping into the four as you've got trendiness, as you've got cutting. 60, 40. Edge cultural going on. 60, 42. As you've got great outdoor art exhibits. This is Glasgow. When you go to Glasgow. 60, 46. There's also two beautiful open air art. I think it's important to remember to. 60, 49. Give those second cities the Marseille yes. 60, 53. The Portos, the Bilbaos, a hard look. 60, 55. Because there's a lot happening there. When you're in Edinburgh, it's just a. 60, 59. 45 minute train ride to Glasgow and in a lot. 61, 02. Of ways Glasgow is more happening now. 61, 04. Then Edinburgh, believe it or not. Europe is changing. 61, 07. Europe is fun, Europe is stimulating, and art is for the people today, and when we. 61, 12. Travel through Europe, it is just so fun to have an appetite for what went on to. 61, 18. Shape the societies we're going to be visiting. 61, 21. How can we better appreciate the art, and how can we get the most out of every. 61, 25. Mile, minute, and dollar in our travels. Every country in Europe has great local. 61, 29. Artists featured, like this Carl Millis Garden in Stockholm. 61, 33. Do your planning. Know what cities have what sites available, and remember, they. 61, 38. More you understand the art, whether it's medieval art, or renaissance art or 61, 42 Avant-garde art, more you understand it, the more you know who paid for it and 61, 47 Why, the more you know what was going on during that period 61, 50 I think the more rewarding that sightseeing will be 61, 53.
I hope this gives you a good sense of modern art, and I want to wish you. 61, 57 Happy travels, and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. 62, 05 Thank you. 62, 07 Thank you very much. TW